It's my dream to play hockey, and uh, even if I don't make the NHL, I want to play hockey until, as long as I can. This is an opportunity to, to get the dream back. My dream was to play in the NHL, and it still is. In cities and towns across the nation, there are Canadians who share a dream. The dream of playing in the NHL. Now they'll be given a chance to make it happen. Most guys only get one shot, if they get a shot at all. And uh, for some reason, I'm getting a second one, and I'm not letting it go. Over the course of four weeks this spring, more than 4,000 prospects competed in seven cities across Canada at the Bell Making the Cut tryout challenges. Only 68 of the country's best unsigned players will be chosen to attend a special training camp. Six will earn an NHL tryout with one of six Canadian teams. <laughs> and there's just uh, six quick drills. We'll evaluate you at the end of the 50 minutes. Who wants to be the first guinea pig? It's a killer when you haven't been on skates in a year. Get down, get down! Like you can't even skate for! No pressure, no diamonds. I think you're gonna have a heart attack. I got it, kid. Hey, man. You gotta keep going. We're looking for the top players in Canada, we're gonna find them. It's the stuff of Canadian dreams, because after all, it's fine to sing and dance, but in this country, the real idols wear skates. They'll come from small towns and major cities across Canada, but this is not a story about thousands of players. It's the story of one player told thousands of times over, one player at a time. The search for Canada's best unsigned hockey players starts in Toronto. The hockey player's shirt, clearly, because winter is the hockey season. I saved my strength with the ice. Wish me luck. So, is there a chance I'll lose my teeth at all? Or? This is kind of, I guess, you could say, last kick at the bucket, maybe. You got any uh, uh, future Martin St. Louis for us? Yeah, there's a couple coming. Good. Had a good day. day one in Toronto, general manager Mike Keenan joins director of hockey operations Jack Birch. Teamed with coaching legend Scotty Bowman, they'll soon make the decisions that will change the lives of 68 players from across the country. It's obvious that they're living their dream right now. They, they believe that they have a chance, and uh, I think that's a great thing for somebody that feels like they have the ability and, uh, and we're overlooked. I really hope some kid comes out of here and it's a dream come true for him. I know a lot of my buddies in the smaller towns, we all work at factories. and In the winter during the season, it's kind of hard to find a part-time job with hockey and practices and school. So you work all summer, save up the money, and then you have that to spend during the seasons. People think that we sometimes compete with each other, but it's never really that. It's more uh, rooting on for each other. Let's go now. All right, let's go, boy. Let's do it. I think Cruz maybe uh, a little more experience. Uh, got the advantage of the size. I think that helps, especially playing this game. And uh, Preston realized that. He works maybe a little bit harder. They've got a summertime job, and it's very important to them. But I think they can afford to take two weeks off, and I think they work for a pretty good boss that uh, they'll understand and give them a couple weeks off. At least they're banking on that anyways. <laughs> Next two weeks is probably, probably going to be kind of stressful. What if Drew makes it? And I don't, what if I make it and Drew doesn't? There's probably going to be a lot of talk about that and anticipation waiting for the phone call. I don't know, it'd be great if uh, my brother and I could go out to uh, making the cut. Uh, yeah. 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 Congratulations, guys. I'm Randy Favero and I'm making the cut. I'm Lee Walker and I'm making the cut. This is Thunder, this is Lightning. My name is Mike Starkman and I'm making the cut. People just love the game here, and it's uh, a good place to grow up. It's a good hockey town. I'm just looking forward to getting out there and getting some good shots away. <laughs> up to the top, you're back in for a shot on net. Can you all see that back there? Here are kids that maybe thought that their 
you know, their dream to be in the NHL had ended. Now they're getting a second chance, and you know, you can see the excitement on their faces as uh, as they're uh, coming in, suiting up, and getting out on the ice. I think my biggest strengths are I'm an offensive type player. Definitely skating is a huge part of my game. My best season as a 19-year-old in the Western League. And, you know, I put up a lot of numbers that year and played in the All-Star game. I've been to two NHL training camps and it was a real eye-opener. You could really just tell the skill level of these guys was all above most of the players you're used to playing with in junior. I was right when I got back to Regina from uh, Red Wings camp. Ended up getting a CAT scan at the hospital. A uh, tumor showed up on the CAT scan and uh, you know from there it was a lot of you know unknowns from the, the doctor's standpoint. They weren't really sure what exactly was going to happen or if I would ever be able to play again. Hockey laces Canada together. It's truly embedded in the social fabric of the country. Coast to coast, the passion for the game goes far beyond the players themselves. In fact, it's fair to say each player's family and friends share the dream of making the cut. Well, oh, we're proud of them. My dad plays hockey. We're here to see our daughter, Kimberly Kodaski. It's great to have them up there cheering me on. We made t-shirts for them to support their dad. We're behind him 100%. Go, Eddie, go! I came here with my wife and my uh, little daughter. I'm just glad I'm out here and they're watching me and supporting me. He's going to be a goalie too when he gets a little bigger, I'm sure. He did it to inspire me and my brother, I think so. And uh, pretty well did. Let's go, let's go, let's go! Family's definitely important. I mean, you ask any guy in the NHL, you wouldn't have got there without, without a little help, you know? I started playing hockey when I was about four. I think my dad put me on the skates. I played major junior hockey in the Western Hockey League and eventually winding back up in Winkler where I spent my last year at junior. When, when I first went to Winkler Flyers, I met a fella who was 16 and his name was Ed Belfort. And at the time, he was just a rookie coming in, uh, just an average hockey player, nothing special. And uh, with my training and expertise, he went on to make the NHL and that's my claim to fame. I don't know if you want to hear that. <laughs> I think the goaltender doesn't really mature until he's 25, 30. So I think that's one sport that, yeah, he can play into your 40s. Why I signed up is I saw it on TV and uh, Jordan and Haley kind of pushed me into saying, you know what, you should try. I said, no, he's always telling me to never give up. So I said, you got to do this for me. I think he'll do pretty well because he's a really good goalie, so he'll do good. I'm really looking forward to it. I can't get this smile off my face the whole day. I, I really got into it. I proved to myself that I can stop the puck. I made a couple of really nice saves out there today. It was fun to compete. I talked to a couple of the goalies, and uh, they said they were 20, 21. And when I told them how old I was, they couldn't believe it. They kind of had a smile on their face. So that kind of felt good, too. Uh. First of all, guys, thanks again for coming out to the Bell Can and making the cut competition. The guys that are getting through, make sure you register with the three on three quickly here. I'll give you the names right B1, Gordon Bennett. B2, Serge Jarche. I know my chances are long, um, but I really want to make that cut to move on to the next group. B11, Yves Leclerc. B13, Neil Gidney. And Y11, Y12, Bob Unger. Thanks again, guys. Guys, Gidney's on the wall. I made it. I made the cut. I love it. My name is James McGinnis. I'm from Ormuffton, New Brunswick, and I'm here to make the cut. We're the, we're the Parsons, Parsons boys from Newfoundland, and we're, we're going to make the cut. Well, I've been doing this gig for 18 years, and I've seen a lot of hockey games, shed a lot of tears. But you know, recently, I don't shed so many tears, because we don't seem to be losing here in Halifax all that often. You know, we'll go up and give it a try, give it a shot, and see what happens. Do you have any questions about today? Uh, not really, just nervous as hell. The bond between uh, hockey players is, is pretty strong. I think as a teammate it's even a little different than just a friend because you, you know you can rely on them in any situation. I mean, you don't want to be out on the ice with a guy that you don't think will have your back. Brad's a great, great guy. I mean, uh, he's my buddy, my roommate. What one doesn't think of, the other one will. And we just compliment each other in that way where we can, uh, you know, have fun. Motivation and stuff like that between teammates goes a long way. And some guys don't get the break, and you know we're hoping that this might be a break for us. 
I think I've always kind of been a bit of a late bloomer, so hopefully, hopefully it'll come around. Up until, I guess, these tryouts, we've never really had to compete against each other. Let's go. So if one of us makes it and the other one doesn't, we'll, uh, we'll deal with it. A lot of people in there were uh, pretty quiet and pretty, pretty tight-lipped. I think everybody was a little bit nervous. I just kind of looked over at him, gave him a smile, yeah. and he gave me one back, so we were, we were going to give her. Competition's been very tough, and uh, unfortunately, some people won't be moving on. Or Make the cut is V2, Mark Cody, Yellow 10, Jason Witzel. I think I got a lot of hockey left in me, and I want to have a lot of hockey left in me, and I want to, you know, fight it out as long as I can. 11, Black 10, Brad Woods. Black 14, Kyle McAllister. How about that? Yellow 12. I think the, you know, the competition's gonna just keep getting better. I mean, we know a lot of the guys that uh, are playing the 3-on-3 as well from our league and from the major junior leagues around here. And, you know, it's just gonna keep getting better. And John at 46.1. So right now it seems our points of contention are does Woods belong up in here, and does Cazares belong up in here? I think I would probably bump uh, Woods up into that fifth spot, just ahead of Campbell. I didn't think Woods skated nearly as well as Coach did. How do you like him compared to Kyle McAllister? They're both just, big kids. They both skate fairly evenly, I think. Probably the most pleasant surprise is uh, Amy Ferguson. As a goaltender, she, she did everything she could today. Uh, and then some like she it's got to be the toughest uh, step for her to take just to to be one of only a few women out here and uh, you know she she was she felt right at home by the looks of things let me ask a question here no answer yet you guys think about it we got uh, one game to play tomorrow Olympics winner take all tomorrow okay. which guy do you take on your team based on today He can feel more hard done by than a goaltender. There are a lot of them who feel if they'd just been in the right place at the right time or if they had a chance to play, they'd have been the ones to make it. Maybe that's why, more than any other position, goaltenders were drawn to making the cut. I am shocked now. We're up close to where around a thousand goalies are. Uh, the guys are really quick and are very, very accurate with their shots, so I kind of got to get used to that. Goalers are a pain in the as simple as that. I, I think goalies are uh, what I would refer to as temperamental. I don't think it's the goalies that are crazy, I think it's the players that are crazy. Excuse me. To, to go through that kind of skating, I have to go back and forth. I like my job. It's only a few pucks. Better stop a puck than a guy six foot three, two hundred and twenty pounds. This is a piece of cake. I think the challenge is that you got the last chance. You know, you want to be the Bruce Willis of hockey and saving the day. The bottom line is, is that there's um, only 30 number one goalies in the National Hockey League, and so that there, there are a lot of frustrated goalies out there. How do I feel about goalies? You can't live with them, and you can't live without them. I'm a goaltender. I just try and stop some pucks. I love fishing with my dad. For a woman to be on the lobster boats is pretty uncommon. There's very few hired hands as women. It's a man's job. Or I always thought it was a man's job. It's in your blood and you can't get rid of it. I'm excited. I've been looking forward to it and just to get on the ice. I was not in favor of it to begin with. It's a boy's game. Parents didn't want me playing hockey because it was a boy's sport. 
and I said, I'm going to play hockey. I'm not playing anything. But she wanted to play, and, and when she did want to play, she wanted to play goal, which I thought was even worse. When I was a kid, my dream was to play in the NHL. And this is a shot, I think, that you can push the boundaries a little bit. It's something I want, so I'm going to go all the way. I like to play a physical game. Yeah, get in people's way. Oh, I'm hoping to get to the 68, that's for sure. They could see something in me that I never saw, or my coaches never saw. Uh, my wife didn't have any of my CDs, so I had to try and get pumped with some Biff naked, and that wasn't working out. I think my chances are very good. I told my kids when I left that I was going to do it for them, so here I am. When I made the NHL, it was a dream come true. It was like, uh, it just seemed to happen. I thought, I finally have arrived. It's, I'm here and uh, it's time to leave an impression. When I met him, certainly when he was in university and, ha and was drafted in the second round by Calgary, he had dreams of this long, illustrious career in the NHL. And I would say that in reality, it, his career fell short of what he would have dreamt of. I gave up playing hockey because we were concerned about our son Nicholas at the time, who was the age of five. Because MPS1 is a, it's a rare progressive genetic disease, so every day that you're untreated, the disease slowly gets worse and worse. Hockey to me is, is just a game, and you'll give up a game to save your son's life. And that's what I decided to do, and I walked away. Nicholas is doing fantastic. His disease has stabilized. His birthday's coming up. He's going to be nine, and he said all he wants for his ninth birthday is for his dad to play in the National Hockey League again. So uh, if I can make that uh, birthday wish come true, it would be a, a, a great accomplishment. You're going to chase one-on-one -on -one all the way down, one-on-one -on -one hearts. Good drill. Well, uh, one-on-one -on -one race throws. A little tough. I didn't have all the legs, but I still got the shot off. No one's going to beat me for that puck, regardless if they're faster than me. I'm stronger and smarter. Short shift, short shift. Short and hard. Let's go, let's go. Skate, skate. Ten, ten, ten. get the f off. I like his size. But I can't get too far beyond that. There's one, uh, you know, that yeah. he's through. Excellent. First thing I want to say is thank you very much. Spectacular effort. The guys that, that I say the names of will go to three on three. Okay, uh, Scott Coxa, is that right? Scott, okay. Sean Douglas, Richard Gagne, Todd Harkins, and Billy McGilvery. Guys, uh, I want to really thank you for being part of making the cut. Thank there you me. go, boys. boys. It's a little heavy towards the end, but you know what? Just get on the ice and uh, chat it up with the boys, and uh, that's what it's all about. Playing the game, man. I love it. I love it. I just want to go down through these first top guys here. I want to talk about Todd Harkins. Okay. I think I think it's his last stance here. This yeah. opportunity for him. You know, he had a pretty good day today. You know, he competed. That brings me to that other guy yeah. too, that uh, Billy McGillery. You know, he's a, he's an older player, but you had mentioned it earlier on you that for a guy that's what is he, 33 years old or whatever, yes, sir. and he and he was one of the guys that lasted through the the three on threes. You know, might get a little tougher for him yeah. later on. But. One one last question on these guys is this Christian Jeffkins. But he's the guy that, that made a physical yeah, presence. Yeah, he did. Right? He, well, he, he stood out the most for me. He said he was real smart about it. Like he yeah, really, yeah, yeah, he really did it at the right times. So. What about uh, <coughs> Eric Clark? We were watching a couple years ago. It was just his nonchalant play it really caught up to him. That's one of the interesting things about this whole process is that if we're talking about Bell making the cut as the second chance, you know, maybe that's the thing. Maybe he's finally now played three years of junior. And he's got out, it into his head. He's got out in the real world chance. and said, this is my chance. <laughs> Welcome to Calgary. Yeah, I don't want to be watching it anymore. I want to be playing it. Best hockey town that you'll ever come to. 
we're picking sort of late in the draft in the, in the third round at about 105. And, you know, I've got a, a, probably a, a better chance of, of finding a prospect here. If you ask my mom, um, I think the only thing that ever came out of my mouth was that I want to play in the NHL. And that came up, I mean, all the way up until now. We played together in Adam and all the way up till Bantam. Our last year junior, when we were 20, we played in uh, Drayton Valley together. Jimmy said, hey, there's this cool thing, they're doing a reality show in hockey, and I was like, oh, it's right up our alley. So I signed up right away, and then next thing you know, two weeks later, we're driving down the road to Calgary. Keep skating, keep skating. That's it. Uh, we were really didn't know what to expect the whole time, but I don't know, I think we went out there with some confidence, and uh, we did really well. Stick out, yep. Both good, both strong skaters and the puck well. How many times could I have scored? How many times you gotta get set up with a goal before a guy gets an assist on it? It's because I gave it to you, that's why. I don't get the apples. Thanks. <laughs> Just hey, stick, back to the garage. Yeah. When you're on the ice, you know what you're battling out there. Uh, sometimes it feels like it's life or death and you learn you learn some lessons about yourself. Oh yeah! Look at the distance on that thing! You want to be a bull rider, you put eight marbles in your mouth and when you lose all your marbles, you're a bull rider. Well, it's the same idea as a goaltender. Oh, it's a D! D! You got him! You got him! Everybody's going to go, oh yeah, goalies are, are different. Well, they are different. Scotty, put me in the show. Iron Mike, I want to let my flow go. I've heard through the grapevine also that he yaps a lot. Showtime, showtime. You gotta stick him in the mind sometimes. Yeah, that's what you do. Not go in, hey? I love it. If the guy comes in and takes a shot and he misses it, you laugh at him. And that really makes a guy mad. <laughs> nice move. That was cheese. He's just having fun out there. And focus, keeping it light and focused. Unselfish. Atta boy! A friend let me know about the competition. I showed up. I didn't really know what to expect, but I was impressed with the level of talent. I thought it was going to be a, an unbelievable competition and it's turned out that way and I'm just kind of looking forward to see how things work out. Hockey for me has, has been everything. I really, I really went for it. I, I you know, I, I lived it, I breathed it. For me, it was really a thrill for, to, to have people watch me play. The Memorial Cup was in front of 10,000 people and that's, pretty exciting to, to you know just the atmosphere the adrenaline and your heart beats so fast and it, it's just uh, another level of hockey I'm a school teacher I teach uh, physical education and, and health one thing that I do a lot of I try and you know work with the kids as much as I can and, and get out in the communities and help them with with skills and, and stuff like that I'm really lucky because I found a partner who loves hockey as, as much as I do. In February, Kevin asked me to marry him and uh, this is the place where I said yes. He's inspiring to all those little kids that love hockey. It's his second chance and I feel he fully believe he should be playing in the NHL. I really do. Kevin, Galawaga, number 13, this is his wife. Or his mom! <laughs> I'm gonna be his wife! So that corner, that corner, warm our goalies up, let's have fun. Here we go, boys. The kids in Pincher Creek, a, a lot of them will, will be behind me. Um, the ones that are that know about it are definitely behind me, and, and uh, I'm thankful for that, and I'll, I'll play hard for them today. It's long. It's, uh, yeah, it's hard to do, t you know, a full lap, full out. It's tough no matter what. There's a lot of reasons different people don't make it. People would question my toughness and, and whether I was willing to, to fight my way there. And I welcome the opportunity to kind of prove myself again and, and compete. That's a, a, an excellent practice, great energy by you guys. That's an NHL feel right there. My name's Garth Malarczyk. Uh, I'm a scout with the Toronto Maple Police. Unfortunately, we have to make some decisions uh, as to who's going to move on to the three-on-three. Number 10, Brent Piowar, and uh, number 13, Kevin Yellowaga. 
those are the guys that are going to be moving on to the three-on-three -three session. And again, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out today, and good luck the rest of the way, guys. Thanks very much. <laughs> Probably only gets harder from here. Welcome to Ottawa. I just wanted to go out there and work as hard as I can. It's kind of a second chance. I just have to stay until the end of the day. Who knows? Uh, so I'm just here to try. The biggest challenge for me has always been my size. The thing is, with some teams, they told me that, you know, if I was a couple inches taller, I'd be a first round pick, you know, and those are things that bug you, you know, all your life, and you just want to prove people wrong. Oh, I played four years for the Ottawa 6 7. I was uh, fortunate to get drafted here in Ottawa, too, my hometown. You know, my favorite story I like to tell is the second year I owned the team, we had an outstanding season, but we lost Dan Tessi for 11 games, and in those 11 games, we lost nine of them. Going to an NHL camp like I have been, leading the rookies in scoring and still not getting a contract at the end of the camp was, I think that was the most frustrating thing I went through hockey. It makes me really upset for him and to see him try and try and try and never get a real good chance. Yeah, I see guys that I played with and I know that I've done better than them or, you know, just as good as them and I know I could be there. So it's one of those things where hopefully I'll get that opportunity and do it. My name's AJ Pace. Uh, my teammates call me Chopper. You're talking about making it to cut to the NHL training camp. I am the longest shot like from here to the moon you'll ever see. Uh, when I first signed up, I was excited. I was bouncing. I was dancing in the streets. And right now, um, I'm really nervous. Today, I'm probably going to do pretty good, at least for the first 10 minutes. <laughs> After that, it's a pinball shoot. <laughs> I'm looking at the competition here and. Uh, I think I'm going to have fun. Just going to have fun. I'm doing all the stretching like I'm an athlete. You know, when you step on that ice and you hear people cheering for you, do you know how good that feels? Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Hey guys, didn't do it. Didn't make it this year. No luck for Chopper, but former Ottawa 67 star Dan Tessier prepares for the three-on-three -three challenge. Hopefully I can prove myself and uh, not make the height an issue right now. And it's always been, so hopefully I can turn heads and say, well, let's take a guy like this, you know. He's not any smaller than Martin St. Louis. Well, the disadvantage with uh, being a smaller player, basically, is you just go out and work harder and show them that you can beat them on every every uh, opportunity. If it's uh, coming out of the corner first, beating them on a face-off, uh, doing that extra check to get to the net, just prove yourself. And that's a thing that I've had to do and overcome. Oh, I'm getting married on uh, June 19th. If he does make it, and uh, I will be ecstatic. Well, that'd be a great wedding pre present for Sir to get that call. You're going to see a lot of good hockey because it's going to be a lot of guys that want to be there, and uh, it'll be exciting. It was very nice meeting you. Yeah, good to meet you too, buddy. Well done, eh? Thanks. Good job. Everyone can experience the skill testing drills run by NHL alumni like Ryan Walter, but making the cut is only for a select few. My name is Brian Simpson and I'm making the cut without my muscles. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. I am getting a big rush out of uh, from the Dreamers and the funny thing is, these are guys that are nervous. Like they're in the dressing room shaking. I've been playing hockey since 1958. I've got pads I think older than some of these guys. I was born in 46, I'm 58. <laughs> and play defense. I haven't been on the ice for about three years. And I went out last night and I bought a pair of brand new skates, so I was breaking them out today. Good job, guys. Oh, 
Oh, I, well, I guess as soon as I stepped on the ice, I felt like I was a dead man, you know, because, oh man. I'm really happy that I didn't make the three on threes, and I'm really glad I get to go home. Like every Canadian kid, I've always wanted to play hockey. I suck. <laughs> <laughs> right out of my mind. I must be to be out here at 41. I'm trying not to throw up, actually. <laughs> my name wasn't called. Maybe they forgot to call my name. Hi, my name is Chalavia, and I'm here to make the cut. I'm Danielle Dubé, I'm making the cut. I'm Bruno Mayer, 5'5". Five five. Uh, Daniel Faye, 6'3". Uh, we're, we're making the, the cut. cut. And I was bad, eh? Bienvenue à Montréal. I drove seven hours to get here, just to play hockey. Hockey is probably the biggest part of my life. All these ones, see? You look. Every kid has a dream of uh, making the, uh, the NHL. I think it's very important for uh, every kid uh, to at least, you know, have, uh, have a chance. Everybody has a dream, and sometimes uh, being at the right place at the right time and what counts, and hopefully for some of the people it, it'd be this time. About a week or two before the major junior camps, I was 17 or 18 at the time, and uh, I was skating, and another player jumped over the back of me, and he sliced my, uh, my skate, my tendon, so when I went to camp, I couldn't skate, I couldn't do nothing. Around the end of the season, I was aware that I could uh, make my jump to uh, Germany and start a career over there. During those three years that I've been there, that's the time that I've improved the most uh, throughout my whole career. The way hockey is now, you got to be good young, but then again, there's those that are late bloomers. Now that I'm in my 20s, I've matured a lot as a hockey player, but more than anything off ice. And uh, when you mature off ice, you can bring that on the ice. When I was a kid growing up in Ukraine, I remember just playing hockey all the time. I went to my first NHL camp when I was uh, 20. They, you know, they start to cut the roster down to the certain amount of players. So, so I was sent to uh, to play in St. John's. Uh, we met in St. John's, Newfoundland. I was visiting friends that were going to college, and he was there with some of the guys on his team. And my girlfriend knew some of them, so we were introduced. We've been married for. Not even four years, but it seems like we've been together for forever, you know. If you get involved with someone that's in hockey, you have to know that you have to move all the time. Uh, Isabel in Brooklyn, they, you know, they're always with me. She's been unbelievable. She's, she's my backbone, you know. It's his career, but I mean, it's our life, it's our future. So I'm just as involved as he is, you know. I can be on the ice, but I try to make everything else as easy as this possible for him. If you make it to the NHL, well, well, your dream comes, you know, it comes true. Maybe this is my shot that, you know, that I have to make the best of it. And uh, I'll do my best and hopefully positive things come out of it. There's going to be some competition, so, you know, just want to make sure you're prepared for it. Seven tryouts in seven cities. More than 4,000 players competed for a shot at the Making the Cut training camp. I'm trying to figure out where they're actually going to fit in, or if or not they're going to fit in. To now Jack Birch and Mike Polino must analyze the scouting reports and make the tough decisions. 68 players will make the cut and earn an invitation to training camp. Now it's a matter of delivering the news. You know, I'd like nothing more than to see the both of us go on. I hope they talk to you first. I hope it's you. <laughs> yeah. Hope it's both of us, not one or the other. Yeah, that'd be nice, eh? Hello? Kyle? Yeah, this is Kyle. Good, it's Jack Birch calling. I have to inform you that you didn't make the cut. Okay. You were very close to it, and it's just a matter of uh, 
We had such great talent, right. and we just had to make some you know, decisions from the positional points of view. I wonder if you could put Brad sure. on for me. Yeah. Great. Hello? Brad. Yes. Well, I'd like to inform you that you have made the cut. We'd, uh, we're very excited about your possibilities of being part of our main camp. Awesome. We hope to see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you very much. Okay, Brad. Awesome. Have fun. You too. Bye now. Bye. You in, brother? Nope. You? Yeah. That a boy. Congratulations, man. Stuff. For real? Yeah. No, for legit. <laughs> No worries, man. They made their decision, so that's it's fine. Tough, I'm not, I'm not gonna sweat it. I'm not gonna let it bother me. You know, I'm happy for Woodsy to go, but you know, I'm not really worried about it. It is bittersweet, but I'm gonna give her the best I can, I guess. If it's good news, uh, of course I'll be excited. I I'll love it. I think it'll be great to experience. Um, and if I don't make it, you know what? I tried my hardest. I don't think that there's. Uh any guy who hasn't played hockey at a high level that has, hasn't had a dream of seeing what a, a real NHL camp would be like. <sighs> Do I have to? I'm shaking. Hello? Bob, this is Jack Birds calling. Hi, Jack. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Our scouts all appreciated the effort that you put forth. Okay. But unfortunately, Bob, uh, I have to inform you that you didn't make the cut. Oh. That's too bad. As you know, we had uh, thousands of goaltenders try out. Yeah. Well, th well thanks for calling. You know what? I, I appreciate uh, even just getting the opportunity to try out. Uh, I met a lot of good people, and uh, you know what? I really enjoyed it. Have a great Canada Day, Bob. Great. I will. Thanks for calling. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye now. Oh, well. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. Right? Yeah, you don't have to be nervous. For a 40-year-old, he's still pretty good. <laughs> After what we saw and the way I think we did, um, I really think we have a good chance. And uh, so it means a lot because it's a better chance than we have right now. I mean, let's look at it uh, realistically, you know. The week's been uh, going by so slow. Uh, <laughs> can't you kind of waiting for this call? Just takes forever. My stomach's just in knots, just waiting for it. Tense, eh, guys? <laughs> Hello? Hey, Eric. Hi. It's Mike Cannon calling. How's it going? Um, how, how's it going for you? <laughs> nervous, wow. Nervous? What are you nervous for? <laughs> uh, I don't know. A little phone call. Our scouts uh, had a lot of tough decisions to make. The talent base was really, really deep. It was a lot better than we expected. I was in, you're one of the fellows we've picked for the 68-man wow. roster, so we're looking forward to working with you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello? Hey, James. Hi. How you doing? Not bad. How are you doing? It's Mike Keenan. <laughs> nice to hear from you. Uh, six to eight players are going to be out in British Columbia, and guess what? What? You're one of them. Really? Yeah, we're, we're, we're really looking forward to working with you. Congratulations on making the cut. That sounds really great. Hey, you're going to get ready for this camp? Oh, yeah, I'm already ready. Are you? You betcha. You know, the answer is when somebody asks you if you're ready, the answer is born. Born ready. <laughs> we were born ready. <laughs> Congratulations to you and to Eric. All right. We'll see you there. Take care. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Bye. See ya. Did you make it? Yeah. All right. It's going to be hard. It's going to be 68 guys. Uh, everyone's competing for six spots. Here's my chance, you know. You grow up together and you, uh, you do everything together, and this is going to be uh, a memory that we won't forget. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Should have been her first. I came home uh, yesterday for my honeymoon and had a lot to think about with our honeymoon and stuff, you know, having a good time there and just coming back to reality. You know, there's no palm trees here in Ottawa, it's just uh, waiting for the phone call. Can't wait to see what happens. I can tell he's anxious and nervous. He's worked really, really hard his whole life to get to this point. I think he needs this in his career. He needs a little uh, push somewhere from someone. Hello? Hello. Dan? Yeah, how you doing? This is Scotty Bowman from Bell Making the Cut. How are you? I'm doing fine. Good. How are you doing? Good, really good. Pretty nervous? Uh, no, not really. Just uh, more nervous talking to you. <laughs> <laughs>
No, it's well, you don't have to be. Uh, I got good news for you. You made the cut. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> Congratulations again. Thanks again. Appreciate Bye, it. Bye -bye. When he said yes, what hit me was like, you know, I was happy, obviously. It's, uh, to get there was a lot of fun. Like, just to get that okay that you're going somewhere is, is always a good feeling. Where's this going now? Oh. They're maybe a little more antsy in the last couple of weeks. They're trying to be cool and, and uh, be natural, <laughs> but you can tell. Us going through this together, it sure is helping a lot. Oh. Hello? Preston. Yep. It's Jack Spurge calling. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great, thanks. We were very, very pleased with your level of effort, but at this time I have to inform you that you didn't make the cut. Okay. Um, I'm hoping that uh, you will get the opportunity to do that next year and, um, and go from there. Uh, is so. your brother there? Yeah, he's right beside me, right here. Okay, thanks, Preston. Yep. There you go. Hello. Hey, Drew. Hey, how are you doing? Good, thanks. First of all, I want to thank you for taking part in the tryout challenges. And I'm happy to inform you that you have made the cut. <laughs> That's great. How do you feel about that? That's <laughs> pretty, pretty excited here. Yeah. Great, thank you very much, Jack. Thanks, Drew. Talk to you yep. soon. Yeah, bye. Well, one of us made it. <laughs> Good for you. Awesome. Congratulations, Sorry. brother. Yeah. Cool. yeah. No go. No go. No go. All right. So maybe next year. All right. Well, at least you got it. Congratulations, buddy boy. Way to go. I've definitely been thinking a lot about how I'll feel either way when the phone call happens. Hello? Amy, it's Jack Birch calling. How are you? Pretty good yourself. Oh, could be better. <laughs> you showed very well at camp, uh, and our scouts were very, very impressed. You haven't made the cut. Uh, this time okay. around. We'd encourage you to do it again. Oh, definitely. Thank you. Okay. Bye now. Okay. Bye-bye. Nope. It was fun. A little disappointed, but there's a lot of goaltenders out there, and it's a spot there's only room for two on a team. We love you. Thanks. <laughs> Hello? Hey, Constantine. Yes? It's Jack Birch calling. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. At this point in time, I can't offer you a position in the final 68 in terms that you didn't make that cut. Okay. I hope you enjoyed your experience. Um, I can't thank you enough for coming out. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, thanks, Constantine. Yeah, bye. Bye. Those are the tough calls, you know? Hello? Hey, Todd? Yeah? It's Mike Keenan. How are you tonight? I'm pretty uh, pretty good. How are you? I'm doing well. How are those Vipers doing? Uh, they're doing really well. They uh, won their last game here, and uh, they're all pretty excited, and uh, so they're all here to support me on. In spite of the fact that uh, maybe you thought you were out of shape a little bit, uh, you impressed us enough and certainly impressed the scouts that uh, I want to congratulate on making the cut. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> Take care, coach. Okay, thanks. See ya. The dream's still alive. It's, uh, I thought it was dead there for a while, and uh, I'm pretty excited. I get to play the game that I love again, and that's something that uh, you can't put into words. The final lineup has been chosen. 68 players from 10 Canadian provinces will now converge on Vernon, BC to fight for a dream. Already, they've accomplished something special. They have separated themselves from a field of over 4,000 prospects, and now will have a chance to play under the tutelage of legendary coaches Mike Keenan and Scotty Bowman. Each of them dreams of taking the next step. They know that in the end, only six will earn a tryout with the Canadian NHL team.
Uh, I'm coming from uh, Surrey. Uh, from Winnipeg. I'm from Toronto. I'm to ask for White Rock? I'm Montreal. The 68 finalists are from 10 provinces and 53 different cities and towns, all with the same destination in mind, the NHL. As of right now, I'm going to give you a number. Adam, all right. Okay. There you go. Eric. Yeah. New York, sir. This will give us license. Good bunch of guys. Uh, we're all excited and uh, we're ready to roll. You know what? It didn't hit me really until this morning. It's an opportunity from any way you look at it, so it's going to be good. Welcome to Silver Star Resort, high above the town of Vernon, B.C. I'm Scott Oak. For the next two weeks, it'll be home to 68 hungry players. They've survived the first cut. Now it's time to take it a step further. Welcome to Silver Star and making the cut. Thank you. You'll head right up to our office up there and we'll get you a cut. Silver Star Resort, high above Vernon, B.C., will be home base for the 68 players during the camp. Before the action begins, there's a brief chance to settle in. Training camp always means roommates. Hockey camaraderie is built on and off the ice. Well, it just feels pretty cool to be here. I'd like to get something neat, get in the room and meet my roommate here, whoever he is. Life uh, offers you some different things along the way and you make choices. I wasn't a, a big kid and, and I thought maybe being a good skater and more of a finesse type player, college would be my route. And I'm on the road, I'm hanging with the guys and we're, we're just skating every day, working out, going for a few beers, having fun in college and then... Bill and I met at the gym that I was managing. I had a bad opinion of hockey players <laughs> and he actually changed my opinion because we started dating and... All of a sudden, uh, daddy, the choice I made then was either find a job, get something secure and don't move my wife and daughter around or continue to try to play hockey. Less than a year later I was shortlisted on the fire department in Surrey. To this day I don't regret it, but I look back with a little bit of what if. We have the greatest job in the world as firefighters. You do an exciting job, you get another family because the guys, you live with them for half your life basically. Unless you're a pro athlete, that's the next best job you could have. He's a joy to work with because he's always upbeat. <laughs> yeah. I just feel like he could have gone a lot further and I feel like he gave up a lot for us. I moved on, you know, maybe a little bitter first couple years out of college. Because sometimes I feel bad. <laughs> I'm 33. And to tell you the truth, every year since I've been 25, I've probably gotten in better shape. If I did make it to the NHL camp throughout this process and, and say, miraculously, was offered a spot and could play in the NHL, well, I'll tell you what, you know, that would be probably the best thing in my life, besides my daughter being born. Wish you good luck, be careful, yeah. It's nice being the first guy in here anyway, so you get uh, first dibs on the bed here. Jamie. Nice, nice to meet you. you. I'm Bill. Bill, Mc yeah. Billy McGilvery, yeah. From where? Uh, Surrey, the Surrey. Vancouver area. Oh, okay. You're from yeah. Manitoba, are you? Manitoba, yeah. I'm a Korean Indian. My grandpa told me, just be who you are, you know, just be proud of yourself wherever you go. Every place he's gone, you know, I can easily count at least a hundred calls I got from the community to where is he now, how is he doing. It's coming true what we, we envision him to, to, to be. Jamie's done a lot for the community and when you talk about Cross Lake it's right away, it's this is where Jamie's from. People are there all the time, they're always there to support me, you know, wherever I am. It makes me more, want to play more hockey, you know, and just play somewhere, you know, try and make it somewhere. Dresser. You know, we're, we're pre prepared for this. We had the family vote. Four of us voted for it. My wife voted against it, but now she's on board. This is for my wife, so there might be some nice things in there. Look at that. That's awesome. Ugh. It says, Dear Daddy, go for it. We are so proud that you have made the cut. No matter what, you are number one superstar, and we will always be your biggest fans. 
We love you, Nicholas Jansen Jonas. Oh, that's good. Oh, I miss him already. Well, uh, it was really tough for me to get prepared uh, this year. I got married on June 19th, so uh, we went on our honeymoon too for 10 days, so it took a long time. And she left uh, me a picture of our wedding together. Day one draws to a close. It's a final opportunity to relax before the games begin. <laughs> Wow. We've got a big meeting with Mr. Bowman and Mr. Keenan coming up. It's a meeting they really don't want to miss, so I'm just about to go into the bar and uh, remind the boys. All right, just want to remind you guys, uh, Mr. Bowman and Mr. Keenan are going to expect you in about 25 to 30 minutes. Please don't be late. This is uh, really important. Of course, it's exciting. Uh, you know, those guys are both legends, legends in the yeah. sport, right? It's great to talk with them. I want to welcome you here. I want to congratulate you for being here. And to top that off, I'm going to introduce the next two guys. Most of you are well aware of who they are. Winning this coach in the history of the game, Mr. Scott Bowman. And the next guy is no stranger to most of us. He's got a Stanley Cup of his own, Mr. Mike Keenan. I think everyone was kind of humbled a little bit. You know, just being in the presence of, uh, you know, legends. When I first started uh, in hockey uh, many, many years ago, um, I remember I was working for a gentleman who I respected quite a bit, and uh, he told me once, he said, you know, a lot of minor leaguers are major leaguers that never had an opportunity. I'd like to wish all of you the very best, and uh, the best you can do is to do your best every day and uh, let the chips fall where they may. Thank you. Seeing Scotty and Keenan just right in front of me puts it all right in place, you know? It just lets you know, okay, it's time to go to work. This is an opportunity that's been given to you a second chance, a second opportunity. And you're going to have an experience that many, many people will never have in their lifetime to, to be and play and compete against fellow Canadians from coast to coast. Enjoy the experience, and we'll see you on the ice. Inspirational words. Uh, they class acts, well spoken. You know, and they just command a lot of respect as soon as they walk into the room. It was pretty exciting, and uh, you know, those are two great icons, and uh, it was great to, to actually meet them. There's 67 other guys here uh, trying to complete the same goal I am, and it's my job to prove that I deserve it more than they do, and that's what I plan to do. My brother, he, he's a big asset to my life. He's had a lot of problems, basically since he turned just a little under one. Um, he ended up getting a rare disease called uh, hemophagocytic lymphoma histiocytosis, which is a rare blood disorder. He ended up having a seizure and uh, getting meningitis in the hospital. They still thought it was his disease and they were pumping in the drugs and they weren't sure what's going on, so they end up doing a spinal tap. And when you do a spinal tap, when you have meningitis, it causes the brain to swell. And that's what happens when we end up with brain damage. Whenever I start feeling weak, I just think about what he battled through and how hard he fights for everything he wants. He always takes a bit of kale with him. And I think, uh, you know, when at his weakest moments, that's where he finds his strength. A bit. A bit. When he's not playing hockey, he's helping mom out with, uh, with my little son. You can see in the mornings he gets up and he helps out when it's his turn feeding and, you know, just before he gets ready to go for his training. Go! Hard, 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 hard! So my dad and my grandfather started a hockey camp. Um, they wanted to start a program to get more ethnics involved in the sport, simply because they felt that it was hard growing up for themselves. Chance of your weight? Step over. Good job. Good job. Good work. He's been running the program basically by himself since he was maybe 17, 18. He was head instructor and uh, it's just something that grew on him and he really loves to teach. Well, I think that's his calling later on in life is, is, is teaching and he loves working with, uh, with the young ones. Amen, you cheated! <laughs> I have a lot of dues at home with my brother and whatnot, but 
I don't really look at it like that. It just feels like an everyday thing with my family. It's what made us grow to be who we are. I wouldn't change it for the world. The 68 players have been divided. Half will be managed by Mike Keenan, the other half by Scotty Bowman. In three days, the roster will be cut to 40 players. That doesn't leave much time to make an impression. I'm always trying to uh, really improve on my mental game as well as uh, playing with a bit more of an edge. I mean, it's, it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience and it's something that uh, you know millions of kids would probably uh, love to do. When I played junior, I was top scorer of my team three years in a row and still didn't get drafted. So uh, you look at those things sometimes and you see guys that get drafted and you wish them luck and stuff, but sometimes you wonder what, what hockey's all about. For me, I to do the best I can because I, I don't do things half-heartedly. I'll, I'll do it full out. And if that's not good enough and there, there genuinely is, you know, six, 12 guys better than me out here, hey, great, they must be really good hockey players. The evaluation starts right now, uh, plus this afternoon, tomorrow, and then we make our decisions after tomorrow. So, and there is, there is that possibility of getting back up. The thing you must consider is that you only have like today and tomorrow. Every shift is gonna be crucial for you. And we don't have time for slow starters. So good luck. Losers don't look good, boys. Let's win. Let's go. One, two, three, one. Let's just go out there and have some fun. Let's move that puck around. Let's support each other out here. We're a team. Let's go, boys. One, two, three. Come on, boys. The jam is beginning. Score one for the veterans. Number 27, Todd Harkins, the oldest player in camp, tallies the opening goal for Team Blue. We'll get him later. Our line's too fast for them all. Way too fast. I don't mind that little guy. Things are going pretty good. You got it next time, dude. Next time, yeah. That's going good. It's too slow. Too slow. <laughs> Blue team looks pretty good so far, but uh, they've already been out on the ice for an hour, so hopefully we'll, uh, we'll come around this period. In the second period, White ties the game. It's a deflection on the power play by number 47, Philippe Chouinier. County, spread it now. There he is, there he is. Excellent, great play, great play. A great pass from Jeff Brown springs Paul Denisette on the breakaway. The go-ahead goal for Team White. Good job, boys. Good job. That's it, White! That's it, White! Good finish, White! Good game, White. Way to kick, bud. Good job, boys. Good game. Good game. The first game of training camp ends in a 2-1 victory for Team White. Our guys, you know, battled hard, took a little pride in, in trying to get a win, even though it's it's a scrimmage, it's camp, but a win's a win and everybody feels good. Got all the jitters out after the first little uh, couple of minutes, and uh, despite the fact that we lost, uh, I think it was a good effort overall. Cuts now have to be made to Team Bowman. The scouts, coaches, and managers convene in the war room. What I'd like to do is to go through uh, these these players that, um, and let's just go yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And anybody that you want to fight for, we'll do that at the end. Todd Harkins. You know, obviously you see that he, he's a vet. Right? Oh, he's the one like thing that old, bugged yeah. me though is that the game's tied 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. He's down the left side. He has a chance to come across the front of the net and get the puck to the front of the net. And he goes, tries to go short side. A veteran player has to Make know something that. happen. You know, some of these guys are going to have a lot more talent. A lot better legs, and uh, but they're not going to have the uh, quality in the dress room that uh, somebody who's been around for a long time has had. Dan Tessier. Here, you know, this guy's played 20 games this year in the American League, captain of the Memorial Cup champions. I'm feeling good. It's, uh, you know, I know I'm not playing the best I can play, but, uh, you know, no one's really that in shape right now. Daryl Levy. I think he's got big-time speed. Like, big-time speed. I think he's... he gets knocked off the puck a little too much. <laughs> he works hard, but he's, he's not effective. Um, I just feel 
very stressed out and just hoping for the best. Uh, Bruno Lemire. I think he's pretty unsure of himself, and he needs a lot of feedback, a lot of framework around him. I'll give it everything I, I've got, and if I'm one of the first cuts, then so be it. Okay, let's talk about defenseman. Daniel Jacob, he's going through. I don't care what you say. I think he's got an upside to come yet that we'll have to wait and see. I want to make the cut real bad, but you know what? I also want to learn real bad. I want to improve as a hockey player as an, and as an individual too. Michael Couch. I thought he was horrible today. Wow. I thought yeah. he was the best player yesterday. Personally, it would be a great honor for them to say, you know what, Mike Couch should be one of the top six players because he's a stand-up guy, he's a great leader, he competes 110% no matter what he does. Robert Dubois. He's what this whole program's about for me. He works hard and really wants it. He is a hard, he's a hard working guy. We'll give you that. But, but he's also the guy that's pulled up injured here the first two days. You know, he's cramped here, cramped there, didn't finish the run. I wonder whether he's in shape. There's people watching, they're making the decisions. So they're going to have to see the potential that if I get in really good condition, maybe I can be a good player. Muskwagon so you know, was the top run. I work hard and, you know, just show them, you know, that you can, what a, what a player I am and just go from there. So we get five to make three. Five to make three. Well, cut two. Jeff Brown. Oh, geez, Jack, this guy here. Oh, boy. Flat out though, out of all the guys in here, he might be the most talented, hockey-wise, hockey But there's sense. no cure for what he's got. That's right. No heart. Yeah, what two, group two, is he in? Yeah. He's, a solid uh, he's a fat 235. Trust me. I go Brown and Perriard. Brown's out for sure. I agree with all you, except Brown's in. Except Brown's in, yeah. <laughs> well, I'd love to make that. I, I want to get in there and show that I, I'm still a good player and I have that ability to play at a high level. I, like, I think we have enough information here now to get the list together yeah, yeah. and we can go from there. Thank you. Au revoir. So do you Au revoir. It's judgment day for Team Bowman. Players who are cut today will become black aces, identified by their telltale black helmets. I kept trying to play it down with the guys. I'm like, guys, you know, this is part of the business, and I could feel the guys next to me shaking. For four days, these 34 players have competed on even terms. Now the verdict will be delivered. But for the players who are cut today, all is not lost. The Black Aces will stay in camp and continue to be evaluated by the coaches and scouts. They can still play their way back onto the elite squad. For Team Bowman, this is the moment of truth. The first cut and the deepest of training camp. It was quite emotional, I guess, to, to be there sitting down and, and waiting for your name to be called up by this guy, you know, who's a legend. Hi, guys. Um, first, I want to say on behalf of the staff, it's been great working with you. And uh, what I have to do here this morning is uh, I'm going to call your name, and I'd like you to stand up. And obviously, uh, you've made the cut. So I'm going to start with uh, the list I have here, number 11. Jeff Brown, number 40, Bruno Lemire, number 30, Brendan Cuthbert, number 39, Daryl Levy. When I heard that uh, I made it past the first cut, uh, I just a big smile came on my face, but undercover, didn't want to express it too much. At first I wasn't nervous, you know, I was going to put too much pressure on myself, but uh, as names were getting called, you know, I wanted to be with the, in that group too. I didn't have control of what would happen, so I was just waiting for my name to be called. Cream will rise to the top, and that's the way I look at it. Um, with guys getting cut, that's real. That's what uh, our professional hockey is all about. Number 34, Ryan Grobody. Number 43, Paul Denisette. Number 4, Michael Couch. Number 10, Brad Woods. It was, uh, it was definitely a relief to hear my number called. You know, the more you wait, uh, you're, you're hearing more and more names, and your name's not called yet. It gets a little more tense. Number 38, Ryan Lozon. Number 50, Troy Kaler. Number 45, Billy McGilvery. It's a, it's a nice first stop here, that's for sure. Number three, 
Kevin Lavallee. Number 27, Todd Harkins. What's oh, good? Good feeling. Number two, Daniel Jacob. I didn't cross my finger. I'm, all, I'm always wearing uh, my lucky charm, my, the, my grandpa's wedding ring that he gave me when he passed away. Number one, Joel Martin. Number 48, Dominic Levier. Number 47, Philippe Chouanier. Number nine, Eric Boucher. I was kind of surprised actually to, to make that cut, but um, I'm really glad I made it now. <laughs> Number 37, Dominic Noel. Number 46, Robert Dubois. And number five, Jonathan Robert. Congratulations, guys, on making the cut. Unfortunately, some of us, uh, you know, lost our roommates. Yeah, I was pretty surprised, you know. But all you can say is, that, you know, I tried my best, you know. I know he's pretty discouraged. Well, a bit surprised, for sure. Uh, you know, two days, you can't really show what you have. Uh, I think some of the guys that got cut, like Dan Tessier, they're really good hockey players. I'm not disappointed. I'm disappointed in myself because the way I played, I didn't play very well. But uh, life goes on, so we'll see what happens. Team Keenan arrives at the Vernon rink for the first time. Keenan's 34 players will be divided into two squads, Team Gray and Team Gold. You call that 6-6 six, six for me. Mike ten and a half. Oh, three quarters. <laughs> And just just being here, it's just it's exciting, and it's really starting to sink in. I'm going to be 26 in two weeks, and I know the age is creeping up there. Where you know you're soon going to be left out. And I got two weeks here, an opportunity of a lifetime to take it and go with it. Oh, I, love it. I can't wait, man! I'm so excited. I haven't been this excited in uh, a long time. I play tough hockey, and I play to win. Skate, skate. When you hit the ice and you're wearing a jersey, whatever team you're representing, you, you do the best for that. If that means blocking a shot, if that means uh, taking one for the team and going out and fighting someone, get a spark for your team, I'll do whatever I have to. Yeah, keep talking. I'll go you. Right after this, you want. I ain't lying, buddy. I, I do talk a lot when I'm on the ice, and I also talk a lot to my team, try to get them going. I'm very. Uh, vocal guy on the ice and off the ice and in the, in the dressing room. I love my teammates and I'm a team player. I'll do whatever it takes to win. Watch out for the yellow team. I have my routine where I like I have certain things that I like to do, special meals, you know. I have my alone time and then once I'm in the dressing room I don't say a word until the game starts. If I get scored on, I bounce right back right away. Nothing bothers me. I like to be better every time I'm on the ice. I like to be the best. This is a couple of things here, Paul, we want you to pay attention to. Sit down, please. Keep in mind, short shifts, quick transitions, quick pace. Go out there and have a good time doing it. Let's get the job done. Let's make the boys be That's a right. play the great team. PC Drouin scores on a breakaway. It's first blood for Team Gold. We're doubling up here. Watch four chase, 76. There we go. A quick move in front of the net, and Francois Fortier ties up the game for Team Gray. Fortier, he's always around the net. Fortier, yeah, a very good score. Got the quick wrist shot. Oh, just a nice rebound uh, in front of the goalie, and I just put it in. Gagné. Good speed. He's awfully little. Who, Gagné? Yeah. Oh, moly. Early in the first period, disaster for number 62, Sean Maman. Give me a hand, give me a hand. I had a defenseman that tried to really run me over. 
tricked him a bit and went under him and uh, just the, the weight uh, of his body coming down on my back, basically uh, I had to kind of absorb it. The whole skate just bent in. It's just frustrating that uh, worked so hard to get here. And something like that has to happen. Yeah. Oh. Between periods, Mike Keenan checks on his players. A couple things, fellas. You want to smell for a minute, please? I don't know how you're feeling. Could be the altitude. It could be a, a number of reasons. But we want more tempo and faster pace. So that means keep your shift short. 25 seconds and off. And you're at a, a point now where we have to make a lot of evaluations in a very short period of time. We want to get a good evaluation of each of you, but you, you can't be out there tired. And just to dispel any rumors or myths or any notions that the TV people here are, are picking teams, they're not picking teams. They're not picking teams. Mr. Bowman, myself, and the evaluators upstairs are picking the teams. I know you don't know each other very well, but be verbal out there. Any questions? Okay, enjoy. Give it all. That's a bad play. You pass back, it's a done deal. Open that. Yep. Ah. You might as well hit before you get hit. Oh, that's right. Now you What a hit. <laughs> Guys try to hit him and this just... looked like a ball, huh? Yes. And it's a fight here. Yeah. It's coming. Holy smokes. You're watching me. Yeah, that wasn't me. What do you think it was? No, it was your hand, right? Jeff, kids, shut up. Chill out. Oh, I'm going to skate solid. Skate square. Yeah, skate solid, eh? That is dirty. Defenseman Wilder Weir needs help getting off the ice after an open ice check from George Zajenkola. I knew he's killing right now, but I can play. A strong second effort gives Francois Fortier his second goal of the game. Pretty impressive, really, uh, really good around the net and got the quick wrist shot. That's it, boys! Keep your going, eh? Before the scouts can finish writing their notes, Forche scores again. It's a hat trick for the young center iceman from Montreal. Francois Forche has picked the perfect time for a career game. His fourth goal gives Gray a 4 1 lead. He's on fire! Nice job! Forche does it again. A snapshot from the deep slot racks up goal number five. I just get lucky today. <laughs> of course, some nice goal in this game, that's for sure. If you're not in good position, especially when you get a guy like that who could shoot the puck, he only needs a little bit of a hole. And obviously today it shows five goals. Game over. Five goals for Forche, and lots of bad blood between gold and gray. No, 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 I just want to spine up. George Zajenkola's hit on Wilder Weir has nice definitely start. stirred things up. Hey, fellas, we've had a couple of great days. Uh, we're really pleased with your effort, proud of your uh, competition levels being fabulous, and it's made it tough on us. We're going to make some difficult decisions this evening, and. Uh, give you some results tomorrow. So get some rest and uh, be proud of what you've accomplished here to this point and what you've uh, contributed to this camp. So have a good night. See you tomorrow, fellas. It's decision day for Team Keenan. 
The fate of the players will be decided in the war room by Jack Birch and his team of evaluators. What I'd like to do right now is we're going to go through what we've just seen the last couple of days. So Mike, can you start it off? Is there anyone that, that jumps out at uh, you here yet, either on Team Gold or Team Grey that uh, you'd single out as a young person that has some skill set in the leadership department? Christian Jeffkins uh, stepping up and going after Zajankla the other day when he uh, popped the knee out in the, you know, one of his, his teammates. Was that when the name went to Wilder? Yeah, uh, Le or Jeffkins was the one that went and confronted him Step at the up. end of the game. Uh, this kid on the bench is unbelievable. You get guys on the team that are quiet and you guys get guys on the team that are uh, outspoken and get people going and I'd have to say that's me. I like to get people going and try to motivate them. He's a piss me off player. That's what he is. He did it in the ice yesterday. He's done it again today. He's got great team skills and limited hockey skills. You know, he's the kind of guy, Jack, that it gives you a little excitement here. He's feisty. He's in your face. He's not afraid. We all know what his abilities is. Not very much. Francois Fortier. 220 pounds. He's averaging 2.5 goals. He was right on the media. And if he's carrying that kind of weight, somebody speak to him and train him a bit. Yeah. He could, he'd be quicker and he's got a hell of a release. I got good skill. I, I skate good. I'm My size is okay. I think I got everything almost. You know, I could be wrong. Maybe he's going to finish the camp with five goals. I'm not sure. But, you know, I'm concerned a little bit with his conditioning. He's got a skill you can't teach, though. He showed yeah, it yesterday. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The goalers, very quickly, Al. Uh, Scott Della Vadova allowed two goals in two games. Very, very solid. Uh, very quick laterally, his uh, uh, quick reactions. Anthony Marshall. Anthony Marshall, big guy, six foot five, uh, has a big upside. I'm uncomfortable with his overall lateral movement, his balance in the net. He hasn't played that many years. He's only played like uh, three years of hockey uh, in goal. It's not saying that he played bad. You know, he did play well, but I'm, I'm looking at okay, the next level and. Comparing him to the other guys, I think the other guys are just a little bit better than him right now. Alexander Dendeneau. Well, he's playing his ass off out there, but yeah. It takes a certain amount of talent and, and skill and uh, discipline also, which is very important to make it uh, to the NHL. Like you wonder some days, is this guy really interested in playing or is he just like the uniform? Okay, Lou Dickinson. Love him. Yeah, yeah. he's uh, probably the best player out there today on that team. I mean, the, the whole deal with Lou Dickinson has always been he's had talent, he's had skill, he can skate, whatever. It's whether or not he can put it together. Doing everything I can, putting the puck in the net, finishing my hits, playing tough. Just, uh, you know, Canadian-style hockey. That's what, that's what uh, you know, just a Canadian boy. I just, want to be a, I just want to be a factor every time I'm on the ice. Well, the impressive part today is he went to the net hard. He, he did some things that, you know, are outside of skill. They're, you know, yeah, they're a beautiful more, goal. Yeah. 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 Okay. That, that gives us enough to get our list ready for now anyway, okay? Great. Now the dreaded black helmets come out. After four days of camp, Team Keenan will get the verdict. White helmets to the players who stay with the elite squads, black for the rest. Every member of Team Keenan hopes to join the survivors from Team Bowman. Good morning, man. Well, you deserve a great deal of credit for getting this far. It's been a very difficult process for the evaluators, as you can imagine. Those of you who are cut today, go to the Black Aces, but I want you to continue to work and be prepared to fight to come back because of this short evaluation, things will change and they'll change drastically and quickly. If I call your name, I'd like you to stand up. Number 68, Blaine Paul. Number 55, Darcy McConvery. Number 67, Francis Fortier. Number 23, Francis Knoll. Number 18, Drew Cavill. Number 22, James Damone. Number 59, Ryan Power. Number 62, Sean Mamain. Number 54, Lou Dickinson. Number 26, Riley Moore. 
Number 32, Trevor Cunning. Number 31, Scott Bellavita. Number 61, Mark Wires. Number 52, Matt Hubber. Number 16, Jordan Little. Number 53, PC Duan. Number 58, Eric Sonnenberg. Number 14, Wilder Weir. Number 57, Christian Jeffkins. And 65, George Zajenkla. Congratulations, you've made the cut. Fellas, you'll join the Black Aces, but I want you to come back with the attitude that you'll continue to work hard the evaluations will continue. Thanks very much. And good luck. It's tough, tough thing to describe, you know. It's just so, it's so you wish everybody could make it, but you know, you, it's, it's part of hockey. It feels pretty cool, actually, you know. It's like a load off the shoulders. Yeah. Made another step. Welcome again to Making the Cut. I'm Scott Oak. Last we met here in Vernon, the knives were out. Massive cuts were made, seemingly all too soon. When the dust settled, 41 players had made the first cut, retaining a white helmet. The other 27, now black aces, still have an outside shot of coming back. But it's the 41 who have the best opportunity to become one of the final six who will earn a tryout with a Canadian NHL team. The black aces won't play today. Instead, they'll take the long ride back to camp. Making the Cut mentor, Tiger Williams, rides along to offer advice. Coaches, especially a guy like Keenan, he loves to see guys that are put in a, in a bad situation and, and rise to the top. You know, it's, it's, it's a tough thing for, for any, any player, whether it's hockey or any sport, uh, you know, to, give their, to bust their backside and give uh, their full heart into what they're doing and, and to have somebody tell them that, uh, you know, it's just not quite good enough. Uh, is something that really rips your hearts out. The Making the Cut management team has assigned renowned sports psychologist and author Saul Miller to work closely with the players who have been cut. It would be inappropriate to just say, oh, that's nothing. I expect guys to have some disappointment and get in touch with some of that disappointment. One way of dealing with disappointment is activating some anger. One of the things you want to work with is keeping that energy and intensity up. You know, finishing checks. If you're down, pick it up. If you're pissed, get it out. I think the most challenging thing so far in camp has been uh, keeping focused and, uh, you know, trying to stay on the straight and narrow and keeping mentally uh, tough. Uh, you know, it's like Saul Miller says, you got a choice. You can either let it use you or you can use it. Started with four teams, and now Jack Birch and his staff are faced with the task of creating two new ones. The two new teams must be roughly equal in skill, leadership, and experience. Creating equal teams will make it easier for coaches and evaluators to assess the players. Player positions, line combinations, talent, and chemistry are all important components in making up the rosters. Ryan was on. See, let's go to the forwards. Three. After the pregame skate, General Manager Mike Keenan addresses the two elite teams. Just want to have your attention here for a second, fellas. Be as competitive as you can be. Be respectful of the rules. And uh, at the same time, uh, remember that discipline is a big part of uh, being a pro hockey player. And I wish you the best of luck. But be competitive and be prepared to play hard this afternoon. I'll see you later. <laughs> Things happen in a hurry, as you can see. 
cuts uh, at training camps come quickly and sometimes often and you're uh, the master of your own destiny here in terms of what the outcome will be for you. So be prepared uh, to play hard, see yourself being successful. I wish you the best of luck. All right, man. For Team Gold and Team Blue, it's finally game time. Gold strikes first. Number 58, Eric Sonnenberg, tips in a point shot for number 10, Brad Woods. Troy. Where's Troy? Puck goes to the point there like that. I, mean, I don't mind you being you know, near the top of the circle. It gets out. You're going to go out to your point. You're going to have your feet in that shooting lane. It's a little shaky. Some hard work down low by the Levy Lemire Kaler line pays off. Number 40, Bruno Lemire ties the game for Team Blue. Nice throw. That's a goal. Nice throw. Throw it in. That's the hardest working line right All there. All three of them can skate. First, it was a fluke ball, the first one. Yeah. Just went in. But uh, we worked hard and got one. Good play, we need to get it back, so we got it back. Late in the period, number 52, Matt Hubauer finishes off a two-on-one after a great pass from Billy McGilvery. Is it our, our fireman? After one period, Team Gold holds a 2-1 lead. You know what's amazing? You take, you, you just pare the group down, and you pare it down once more, yeah, yeah. and then all of the caliber of play just goes like this. They're better players playing with better guys, and all of a sudden it's a different game. First pass, very important, D-man, first pass, but forwards, be ready also. Keep it going, you're jumping, keep working hard. Let's get it going, guys. Let's get two snipes, two snipes. Let's get her going, get her going. Nothing to be afraid of. Let them know we're there anyway. You know, they start running around there, hammer them down, sit them down, let them think twice going in the corner, you know. Hey, JD's a forward coming out of the box, guys. 57. Doesn't look very good here today. He looks like he should probably start a new career. Wilder Weir and George Zajenkala renew acquaintances. The only thing that prevents a scrap is the strict no fighting rule in Canada. Come on, yellow boys, 11 miles, 11 miles. Let's go, win that draw, win that draw. Come on, right back. Get that right back. Nice draw, nice draw. Get it in. Get it in. Near the end of the second period, Billy McGilvery is hammered into the boards by big number 22, James Damone. McGilvery is visibly shaken. The second period ends, but is it game over for Billy McGilvery? Uh, I got my bell rung a little bit here. Um, I don't really remember the play, but uh, my head got kind of smushed in the boards there a bit, so. Still see it? I can see it, yeah. Good, well that's yeah. good. That's good, so visually you're good. Yeah. But the three or four symptoms that you're having, plus the confusion, memory loss, that's enough for me, anyway. Yeah. You feel right now your balance is good. You yeah. don't have to spin. No, I just stepped on the ice for the last shift and I know my, I know I was playing right wing now, yeah. but I went to the left wing and I know my the left winger is looking at me like, what the f*** are you doing? What are you right? doing on this? Yeah. Exactly. So there's confusion. Yeah. Confusion. You're one of my yeah. guys. Yeah. Not a chance. Sorry, pal. Okay. You know, I don't want to miss too much time here, obviously, but if I need to rest my head for a day or something, well, I guess that's better than going out there and playing disoriented and not be able to do what you can do, right? So. Oh. 
Go, Dicky. Go on. More hard work by the Levy Lemire Kaler line results in Blue's second goal. This time it's Troy Kaler doing the honors. Yeah. Nice swish. Oh, goalie down. Oh, poor goalie. Goalies. Goalie down. Oh, goalie down. Goalie. The guy breed on him. He got hit hard. That's brutal, boys. Can't let that happen to your goalie there, boys. You got a piece of it or what? I don't know, bud. Come on, fellas, let's go. We gotta pick it up here, boys. Work hard, boys. That's it, boys. Four check, four check. No turnovers at the blue boys. A bad moment for blue goalie Joel Martin as team gold regains the lead and a long shot by Paul Denisette. Troy Kaler runs 225 pound defenseman Drew Kibble, but it's Kaler who gets the worst of it. Ryan Powers scores on the backhand to put gold up 4-2. That little team we got here, boys. That's it, man. We can cut that guy instead. The goalie. Yeah, yeah. The goalie. Put him on the bubble. Five foot five center Bruno Lemire is the smallest and one of the hardest working players on the ice. Oops. Might be uh, easier to jump over him and go around. <laughs> Settle it down here, boys. Give him an out. Give him an out. Here you go. Here lines up here. I got no nice pass. Ah. Nice try, nice try. Team Blue hits the post twice, but the third time's the charm for number 37, Dominic Noel. Gold's lead is reduced to one. Come on, boys. Forche, Power, Boucher. Come on, boys, come on, boys. Same energy, boys. Come on, Troy, you all right? We're going to go back. I'm pulling Joe here. Give it another uh, 20 seconds here. Joe! Joe! With the blue goalie out for the extra attacker, Eric Sonnenberg ices the victory for Team Gold. Come on. That was major for the win. Major PK for the win. Guys worked hard today. There's a few guys up in that ice that have got some scouts fired. In a camp tradition started by veteran Todd Harkins, players shake hands after the game. Meanwhile, Jack Birch and his evaluation team meet to decide which players are on the bubble and are potential cuts. That's the 38. Okay, that's on the blue. That's the blue, yeah. One, uh, two times. I'm thinking I hate to lose. I'm tired of it. I hate it. I don't want to throw up right now. I freaking hate to lose. It's just disgusting. Jack Birch and his team work late evaluating the players. Five skaters are on the bubble. We're going to do a very quick discussion. And as you can see, we've got a Bell making the cut ranking worksheet there. And you're going to rank them in your order. One, two, three, four, five in your order. Would you like? But let's not get there yet. First of all, Riley Moore. Joel? I found his one-on-one, uh, -on -one, he has a real tough time in his zone. And uh, he's got good size. But um, I just think in his, his, in his end, he has a, uh, a lot of problems. So I know, are you worried more about his positional play then? Well, I just thought tonight it was a more intense game, and there was a lot more play in the corners than in the other games, and he just uh, he couldn't compete in the corner. 
Okay. I, I've got heavy feet down for him. You know, heavy feet. Yeah. Okay, yeah. the one good thing I did like about him was he, he's a good, good shot. He shoots the puck okay, but that's okay. Let's go on to the next one. Lazon. Brian Lazon, let me start with you, Kevin. I think he deserves a little bit more of an opportunity. He's a kid that didn't show much in the first two, but then started to do some stuff. So but I think he's a guy that you maybe should talk to and say, hey, you know, you know, you're on the bubble. You're on the bubble for a reason, you know, so uh, get it going. Mike? Uh, pretty well the same, Jack. I thought he had a pretty good day the first day. Yesterday was just so-so. But today, for 40 minutes, you couldn't find him. And uh, the third period, he shows up and uh, looks like he's a hockey player again. So somewhere down the line, you got to kind of rattle his chain a little bit. You look at the stats, uh, the people involved, and, and goals that are premium. This this kid, no matter what what level you're playing at, he scored 20 goals and 20 assists in 65 games. You go down all these statistical uh, breakdowns, and there's not many guys scoring 20 goals. So. Yeah. Well, you, you know, be he careful. did show us some you of that. you got to be careful. He showed some of that in the third period, but, you know. Well, that's what I'm saying. May, is it motivation? Maybe somebody should go down and tell him you got to do that for 60 minutes. Yeah, and that's part of the reason why we're dealing with guys in the bubble. Let's take a look at Zajikala. Michelle, you want to start with him? Well, I mean, today was just trying to be physical at the time, and, uh, but I don't think we're going anywhere with this kid, personally. Like, like that's exactly it. He is what he is, what he is. He's level. I don't think the, the you know, it's, there's any more opportunity for him to elevate his game anymore. And yet, we're, you know, he's out there taking some opportunities with some of these kids that are going to get better. I agree with exactly what you guys are saying. We've been excited about this guy. You get, you can get really excited, and then you can lose interest in him real quick. And I just, just want to make sure that we understand the situation that we're in, in terms of moving players on. Let's just talk with Jeff Kins here first before we go any farther. Absolutely. Absolutely what, Michael? <laughs> well, you know, there's a case right here. You know, for a couple of days, the guy works hard, and you see some results. Today, no work, nothing happens because he sure can't play on his skill. I like the way he challenges. I mean, he's done it every single game, whether it's effective or not. He does bring something to the team. And uh, even today when he wasn't, you know, really that effective he was doing something he was overmatched physically you know guys that 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 are elevating their game are pushing by him you know out battling in front of the net you know i i think it's time he's a happy kid you can see he enjoyed the game he's on the ice and you can see you see what everybody's doing and you know make sure everybody's happy you know that's the way i look at him you look at him he's so happy to be there but Skill-wise, it's it's impossible. You know, his skill is is not there. And the bottom line is, is you got a five foot ten, tough guy, is what or five foot ten physical guy. He's two hundred and five pounds and he's willing, but you know, is he going to be able to do it up against the six foot four, six foot three, whatever it takes? I like his heart. heart I like his effort. I learned a lesson a long time ago: is that if you don't have enough skill, you can't play. And if you don't have skill, you better be big to be able to play, is the way I look at it. All right, then that's good information. Mike and I will have to make a decision later tonight. That was a good job, though, man. Those teams were competitive. The decisions are made. The five players will now face a sleepless night. Tomorrow, they'll find out if they're in or out. Whatever happens, happens, but uh, I know when I leave this camp, I gave it 100%. The, uh, the insecurity of being in the bubble kind of plays with your mind a little bit. As it's unpredictable, you know, you're just standing out there waiting for him to call your name, and it's ultimately up to him, kind of your fate, you know. Gentlemen, you've all been brought here for a reason. Over the first parts of this camp, there is some aspect of your game that needs improvement. Riley? I can tell you, Riley, that we were hoping that we'd get more out of you. You have the potential to be a good player. But you're cut.
the cards are kind of stacked against you right now being with a black helmet, but all my life it's always been a challenge and I, I enjoy the challenge and I like to prove people wrong, so I look forward to it. He said he expected more out of me, so I got to give him more, I guess. I just hope to make it back to the big squad as soon as possible. Ryan? Ryan, you started the day yesterday a little slow, but you finished strong. You have a pass. I feel great, uh, a little bit relieved, but uh, I'm not out of the woods yet. Uh, there's a lot of work left, a lot of games and practices to, uh, to perform in, and uh, definitely I, I got to keep going and, and work that much harder. George? George, you and I have a history. We go back a ways. You've come in here, you've played physical for me for the first three days, but you have to put the puck in the net. George, you're cut. I know I have a few injuries I'm trying to fight through, but instead of taking a day off, you have to keep going. They're not looking for excuses, they're just looking for production. PC. PC, we had the opportunity to talk at the tryout challenge. I asked you to come in here and be a veteran and a leader. And to date, you've done that. Now I need to see some intensity. You have a pass. Being the last guy there in one helmet there. Chris. Well, Chris, you've established yourself as the disturber of this camp. You've given us that. Now I need to see some offense out of you. You have a pass. If those guys on the other team don't like that uh, I got a free pass today, that's too bad. Um, I deserve to be here, and I'm not going to let anyone tell me otherwise. It's day six at the Making the Cut training camp. Another day of practices and games for both the Elite Squad and the Black Aces. The Elite are fighting to stay on top. The Black Aces fighting to get back there. Each of the 68 players hopes to take another step toward that final goal, one of six NHL tryouts. The process of elimination is well underway here. The first cut was the deepest. 23 players were sent to the Black Aces and there were more cuts to come. Almost all players are cut by management, but others are felled by injuries. For the players, this process is starting to take a physical and mental toll. My mind just won't shut down. I've been waking up at 2.30 in the morning and just lying awake in bed, kind of having you know, weird dreams and just, it's just odd. I've never, like I said, I've never experienced it before, but it's starting to affect my performance. Today I just got to concentrate on the game and once that's over, I'll kind of worry about the problems after that. But right now I'm just, you know, get ready for the game and do the best I can in the shape that I'm in. If I sat down and wrote down every problem I have with my body, people would be, what the hell's wrong with you? That's the nature of the game. When you love something so much and have so much passion or something, you don't feel anything. Right now, this is playoff hockey for any, any guy here, um, whether you're hurt or sick. Here you get up at 6 in the morning or 7 in the morning and you come in and you're not going home again until 7 at night. So you have usually a hard skate or a training session in the morning which uh, it takes it out again, and then to, to jump up and go again really plays, plays with your body. Because we don't have a lot of time to rest, I think injuries are going to want to see a lot more uh, guys with injuries. Uh, right now I have a quad contusion. Um, just suffered it yesterday in the, uh, the game. The trainer's just been doing a little bit of work on it, a little bit of ice, uh, some massage work, and uh, so we'll just see how it goes today. I'm definitely here to be the top six. Every time I step on the ice, just hearing that sound in the rink, it's 
pretty hard to explain, but I mean, it's just something I've just relished ever since I was a kid. Ryan is a hockey fanatic. He just he eats, sleeps, and breathes hockey. He loves it. It wasn't so long ago that that he had gone through such a hard time. You know, he's a cheerful person, really outgoing, but you know, he wasn't himself. He was down. He wasn't wasn't as happy, and you know, you could tell that there was something wrong. Ryan is not the type of person to really sit down and just open up and tell everyone what he's feeling. So I think he just kept everything just bottled up inside. I went to see um, my doctor here in Prince Edward Island uh, just to see why I was so tired and felt stressed out and frustrated about things. He, he had diagnosed me with a clinical depression. None of us saw it. He did a very good job at um, hiding it. Ever since this making a cut thing came out, it seems like uh, it's a new beginning for him almost. It's like he's rejuvenated. It makes him happy. When he's on the ice, he's happy. It's where he should be. Just getting into that competitive game um, just adds a little extra to, to your life. Um, something to cherish and I don't want to give up on that. You're always going to get your bumps and bruises, but no, it's just part of the game. So, I mean, if we're going to try to play at a competitive level, we have to accept it and kind of put it out of our mind. And if, if it happens, it happens, and just work through it and, and wait to get better. I still got a couple hours here. The killer instinct in me and the fighter in me says, well, let's see in uh, maybe two hours, but these guys will reassess me. They're professionals, and they'll say yes or no. They're, they're trying to make me healthy, and they know that uh, that when I play at 100% that I'm, I'm able to dominate out there, and if, uh, if I'm not only at 75, I'm like everyone else, so um, that's all. They just want to make me healthy. Troy Kaler had a narrow escape. While coming to the defense of his buddy, Daryl Levy, he almost suffered a serious injury. So I have a little bit of torn cartilage, internal lacerations, bruising. I feel bad that he got hurt. Should, maybe it should have been me. <laughs> so I'm always looking out for him. He's like my little brother. When the Black Aces development squad was formed, management insisted the banished players could still earn second chances. Surely even the coaches didn't realize those chances would come so soon. Now injuries lead to opportunities for four members of the Black Aces. Here's what, uh, here's what we're up against today. What we have here is an injury situation that we have to deal with today. I have two players from the yellow and two players from the blue teams that have come up hurt. Chris Jeffkins is a defenseman on the right side on the yellow team that I need a replacement for. Billy McGilvery is a left winger on the yellow team that I need a replacement for. Doctor's orders, take the day off basically and do a light ride, make sure you're symptom free, but if it was my call, I'd be out there. Troy Caller is a right winger on the blue team that I need a replacement for. It's not depressing, it's just frustrating because I want to be out there so bad. Todd Harkins on the blue team is a right winger. Is it seventh game Stanley Cup or is it is it training camp? Because if it's training camp, I need a couple days off. If it's seventh game Stanley Cup, I'm playing through it. Just like I did yesterday. I proved that already. Let me tell you flat out, they're only coming for the day. Uh, they could be here for the, you know, and continue to go, but you're going to say to them, you're there just for the, today, and then you have to make the impression again. Uh, probably the best kid uh, right now, I think it's probably Clark, Eric Clark. The big kid, 6'4", 227. The guy was hoping that he would show better the other day, maybe a little bit early. That's a good choice for me. Do you have any problems with that, Mike? No, not at all. Great. Next guy. I probably know White. Uh, kid from Manitoba. Seems like he's got a lot of skill, but maybe the first couple of days didn't show it. Next guy, right wing. I don't know where he's been, but uh, Dan Tessier's certainly uh, one of the guys that probably should be up there right now. He needs his <laughs> kicked here a bit. That's what it comes down to. It. But when you talk to him and say, look, it, the reason you were sent down here is that you should, with your experience and your abilities, have come out here and dominated, or at least showed up. Mike? I think one of the guys that <clears throat> probably was uh, as pissed off about getting cut as anybody and probably wants a, a good chance to, to show you guys up is Preston, is he? Again, there's the example. You know, a guy that's played pro, he's been to pro camps, he's the type of guy that should, the first two or three days should come out here and show up. There's lots of these guys never been to camp. Again, there's a guy we can kick his, kick his butt a bit. Okay? Got it. Make sure they're aware that their opportunity is there. If, if, if they come up here and make an impression, we'll send somebody else back to the Black Aces in place of them. Okay? Eric? Yeah. Come over here. 
They've got some injuries on that big club, so what they're trying to do is move some guys up today, and one of the guys is you. A couple of things you need to do, being a big guy, is you got to improve your skating a little bit, so work on that, but also play physical. Yeah. You didn't see that out yet. If you're playing this afternoon, only for the day, if you continue to play well, you'll be up there, so go get changed, you're done. They want to see some skill from you, though. They brought you in here because they thought you had the good skill. Didn't see much the first couple of days, so show them what you got. Okay. Practice is done. You're playing nice. this afternoon. Thanks, nice. They've uh, moved you up already. Already? Or yeah, so what, what they didn't see the first couple of days was the guy who played in the American Hockey League. Yeah, I guess that's what I know. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't play very well, so. Okay, so now show them what you got. Don't right. come back to me. No, I won't. I mean, <laughs> if you don't, you will be. Coaches haven't really seen enough of you to say, okay, he should be up there or he should be down here. You're getting a chance to be up there. Although you're wearing your black helmet, you should come back. Hopefully you stay up there right. and you're done here. Can I escape a little while? Oh, done. No? Go. All right. Okay. Do it up there. Don't okay. do it here. Okay, good job. Jack Birch and his staff are ready to evaluate the players when Team Blue and Team Gold uh, face off. 34. We expect to see improvement again today. We expect them to make the evaluations very difficult for us. Team Gold comes into the game with a strong first line, including Matt Hubber at center and black ace Noah White on left wing. Francois Forche, who had five goals in game one, centers the fourth line, and a rugged defense features Wilder Weir, Drew Kivel, and black ace Eric Clark. As for Team Blue, there is speed on the Daryl Levy, Bruno Lemire, and Dominic Noel line. Black aces Dan Tessier and Preston Mizzy are added at center. On defense, Blue will depend on the Twin Towers. Daniel Jacob and James Damone, both six foot six. A great start for Team Blue as number 34, Ryan Grobody, splits the defense and tucks it neatly under the crossbar. Number 16, Jordan Little, gets sandwiched along the boards. He felt that one. What's that? After taking a hard hit, Little shows some true grit on the next shift, scoring a pretty goal and a setup from number 47, Philippe Chouanier. Come on, boys, get it out of her! The period ends with Team Blue up 2-1. Win this draw. In front of the net, Daryl Levy gets nailed by number 18, Drew Kivel. Call them both. Kid hurt? Who's that? Levy. Levy. Keep that yelling up, Kibble. I'm gonna put you to sleep next time I come out. That's Levy. He works hard too, boy. He works hard, he's got great speed, but and he's not afraid. No, no. But there's nothing no, he, to him. He goes in there, but he's no, gotta get a lower center of gravity. He's gonna get it. Kibble's gonna get it when I get back out, so. You can watch that. Tape the game. Let's go at these guys now, eh, fellas? Let's go at them. Get that ice ahead of you, boys. Oh, yeah! Power, I'm beginning to wonder whether he can score. Watch far side! Oh, nice goal. Nice pass. Awesome pass. Power scored that. Nice pass, boys. <laughs> Just when I was wondering whether he was ever going to score. Get ready for him. Get ready for him. Hurry, hurry, come on. Here we go. Behind the back pass from number three, Kevin Lavallee sets up number 37, Dominic Noel in the slot. Team Blue moves ahead 3-2. Number 52, Matt Hubber scores for Team Gold. 
and the game is tied once more. I think Jesse's playing a little better today than he did yesterday. I mean, maybe he got a bit of a way back. back. The door's not completely shut. will now be settled with a shootout. Sudden death, fellas, one shooter from each side. One guy scores, the other guy doesn't, it's over. They score, then you guys keep going, keep going, but a sudden death, okay? The blue gold game ends in a 3-3 tie. A sudden death shootout will settle the contest. First up for Team Blue is number 61, Mark Wires. That's it. That's my move. Now the pressure is on number 67, Francois Forche, to keep Team Gold in it. Oh, come on. It's over. We all agree, though, that players shouldn't be removed or cut or put on the bubble or whatever if they're not completely healthy. Is that... No, it's yeah, absolutely not. <clears throat> well, you know, let's talk a little bit about the uh, guys we brought up today. They've come in with their black helmets. They could stay, or we could literally flip them back to the other side and drop some guys into the black helmets. For example, Tessier was brought back in today. I thought today was a lot better, and I think that uh, by throwing him a little carrot here, bringing him back in could be a big boost for him, and he'd be a guy that I think... Uh, uh, I, I would recommend you do that with. I put that Eric Clark back in there today only because we had the, the one player out as the defenseman that was sick. You know, if you can learn just to use his body just a little bit more, he could be a decent player. He's uh, 22 years old. Okay. Here are the names we put forth today for discussion. Uh, I want to start with uh, Dominic Levelier. Seriously, I feel super good because we said that it's one of those guys that I still not really sold on yet that uh, we should uh, move move him out. And I wrote down that he was pretty good in his own zone, but if he's an offensive guy, he should be a little bit better in the other zone. It's one thing to have good skills. It's another thing to be fat with good skills. Maybe if you give him more time, if he showed that he, you know, by his weight and, and all that, it's coming down, I think it's a, it's a good sign. Dana has now done all the assessments, so I've asked her to come in today to make sure that we've got at least some of that psych social background information on him. I think his confidence is variable and I do think that mental toughness, work ethic, self-discipline is lacking. Daryl Levy. What I've learned over the years through family, um, my coaches and stuff, I think I know what it I think I have what it takes. For him to be any pro type of player, he's got to get way stronger. Like every time he tries to hit someone, he's down. Yeah. He he's got major league speed though. I mean he really he does. Ryan Grovity. Well, for a guy that's 25, Jack, and uh, trying to get his way back into the game in some shape or form, I don't see a lot of aggressiveness there. I knew once I was out there, it was up to me to do it, and, uh, you know, I think I pulled through it. It's invisible sometimes. Yeah, except when he puts the puck under the crossbar. Yeah, nice you call. Know. The first he goal did, was He did nice do goal. some things that, you know, that some other people in this camp are supposed to do that haven't done. Dana, you got anything in there? Yeah, I don't think he's aggressive. In fact, I think he's got to watch his passivity. Passivity? Yeah. Is that like he's a fraidy cat? <laughs> not necessarily a fraidy cat, just not naturally an intense not a physical guy. It's not natural Is that a form. challenge for him? Yes. Francois Forte. What's sad to watch is just he's just waiting for the break offensively a little bit. His team is, you know, struggling defensively, and I think he's He's been cheating more and more every day. He needs a wake-up call here as far as I well, I think it would wake up the whole camp because everyone's looking at him. He's got five goals. He's the star, and they're all thinking the same thing. And if he gets a wake-up call today, I think the camp will be awake tomorrow. Wilder Weir, Joe. I still like him. I, I think he's uh, he, he deserves a chance. Yeah, I like his try. I like his enthusiasm. Kevin? I kind of felt sorry for him on a couple of occasions out there trying to make a play and ended up having to grab onto a guy. Blame Paul. I think there initially I thought, gee, you know, 
He's got some talent. It looks like he uh, can use it, move the puck around. I'll be giving 100% every time I'm on, on the ice or off the ice. It's tough to get someone who works that hard. What I liked about him before, he's not doing now. He controlled the puck, he made plays, he was able to walk out of the corner and do some things, and, and now I'm not seeing that. And, and maybe that enthusiasm, that work ethic's gone, and now it's... And it gets some, caught up, eh? There were some guys in black helmets today that I... Uh, that I agree with that. I, I think we have enough information here now to get the list together, and we can go from there. It's decision time for the six players on the bubble. It's been four games and I still haven't put a goal in, so I'm sure they've got something to say about that. I just I had a great game, you know, I had a great goal, played very physical. I hope, uh, you know, I can keep that white helmet, but I'm not going to give anyone an inch out there. Whether I'm, uh, you know, ranked uh, the 8th defenseman or the uh, 80th defenseman. Center ice is not where these players want to be. As they face Jack Birch, each player hopes for a reprieve, an escape from the dreaded black helmet. Well, gentlemen, you're all here for a reason. There's some part of your game that our scouting staff has not liked and it's time we discuss it. Ryan? Ryan, you scored a great goal today, but what we need to get out of you is a little bit more of the physical part of the game. You've demonstrated you can score. Now you have to demonstrate that you can play physical as well. For today, though, you have a pass. I played a pretty solid game today and I was pretty sure that uh, people watching thought the same. All I could do is hope for the best and uh, it worked out pretty good for me. I got a pass, so I'm happy about it. Lane? I can't affect anything from here on. I'm just going to keep playing my hardest and uh, I'm hoping I'm staying on the, on the gold squad, but uh, let the chips fall where they may. Lane, day one and day two, you looked like you wanted to play with the puck. You were trying to do some things. We didn't see that today. You're cut. I don't think the boys are going to treat me any differently just because I'm wearing a black helmet, but uh, it's more to remind us, I think, that we, we got to step it up a notch or two, and uh, that's what I'm prepared to do. Francois? Pretty uh, confident, like, uh, I think I, I give uh, 100%. Well, obviously you had a great start. What we've noticed today is you started cheating, and it does affect your overall play. You're going to be cut today, but I want you to know that you're going to get the opportunity to get back in if you can show that you can play both ends of the ring. Fair enough? Dominic, we had our discussion before you got to camp. You said that you would come in shape. I do need to get more offense out of you, but I'm going to check tomorrow's fitness levels to see whether or not you can continue. For today, you have a pass. Hello. Obviously, you showed us you want to be physical, and you have demonstrated that, but your inexperience at this level is showing. What I'd like you to do now is to go down to the Black Aces and do some development time, but you do have potential, and I want you to know that. But for today, you're cut. You know, obviously it was tough to hear my name get called, uh, but I mean, I've been cut before. Uh, you know, I battle back, that's my game. You know, I see this as a little speed bump and uh, I'm just gonna work through it. Daryl. Obviously, Daryl, you have great speed. 
you have talent. Our concern right now is that you are not playing physical enough to go with your speed. I think right now you need some time with the development club. Today you're a cut. Training camp's only two weeks and there's 68 players here. <laughs> Decisions have to be made. Some of them they may made right, some of them they may made wrong. But um, that's why there's two weeks here. So if they had a doubt about the decision they made towards me now, they may change their mind next week and say, you know what, it's kick and play. Six days into training camp and already the cuts have been brutal. 33 players have been given black helmets, leaving only 35 in the elite group. And more cuts are coming. The cuts are hard on everybody, even the players who survive. As quickly as friendships are formed, players are separated by the evaluator's decisions. I was pretty surprised one of them was Daryl. I didn't know what to say to him and what to think because, you know, I've hung out with him the whole time and we've been talking about dreams and ambitions and goals and you know, friends and relationships. And both grew up in like hard neighborhoods in Toronto area and we both kind of moved north to get away and, and we just had a lot of common and sports and hockey are our, our lives. As much as Troy and I talk a lot and we're good, uh, we're doing good together here, and the bottom line is we're still competing against each other. So um, he probably feels bad a little bit that I'm out already, but hey, it's better for him. There's guys that are here that are my friends. It's, at some points in the day and then, you know, we scored two goals against them, you know, and that night they won't even talk to me. There's no friendships when you get on the ice. There's more than one way to play your way off a team. It can happen off the ice too. State-of-the-art fitness testing is part of modern hockey. And that's not good news for everybody. Some of these players are about to get a wake-up call. Point four. <laughs> Since I'm a little heavier than I thought I'd be. The skin fold test measures percentage of body fat. Scapular. 8.0. Well, that's what you got to try to do. You almost want to make your body a machine. 17.6. Super iliac, 4.2. When we look at agility, balance, first step quickness, lateral movement, those are things that players draw upon on the ice to be successful in their one-on-one -on -one battles. So that's what we really, part of what we tried to measure here. 1.85. Nice stick. No score on that one. Come on. The stability test evaluates core strength. Great form. Great There we go. Arm straight. Arm straight. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Keep going. Keep going. Coming close to a minute. Keep going. Keep going. Arm straight out. Arm straight out. Arm straight out. Keep going. Keep going. Excellent. Excellent. Good work. All right. Good, good, good. There we go. Excellent. Good job. Woo. Scouts want to build a Stanley Cup team, and I'm sure they don't want anybody that's going to be slacking off or anything like that. They want everybody to be in good shape. My dad's from a little island near the Bahamas, and that's actually where he met my mom. And. Uh, when he came to Canada, he thought it was just the greatest thing watching these people skate around, and he couldn't believe it. He thought it was kind of like an art. I really like the speed of the game. I actually I thought those guys skating on those skates was working miracles. When I was younger, it was the first thing he wanted me to do, and I started out figure skating, and uh, he, you know, he, they, they wanted me to keep me figure skating. He said, "There's no way he's going to keep doing this." And I got drafted by the Mississauga Ice Dogs, second overall. And uh, it was actually, Don Cherry was the owner of the team. And it was tough, because my first year we only won four games. It was a thing where I never felt uh, comfortable in the, in the situation which I was in. And until I played with the Ottawa City Sevens, where I was actually living at home. And I think uh, Brian Curry just helped me uh, be the player that, that, I, that I know I can, that I can play like. Lou had a tendency sometimes to take the puck one and go in to end, trying to do too much. And I, what I tried to let him know was use everyone on the ice. And then he became dominant. For every game I went out, I just gave everything I had. It was, it was, at the end of the game, there'd be nothing left in me. 
being drafted by Edmonton was a great, a great honor. You know, it was probably one of the one of the greatest days of my life. I think where the thing where I thought, you know, hockey maybe owes me a chance to play, but you know, hockey goes on without any player. Sometimes that's a difference between a player making the breakthrough, having enough confidence in yourself to go on and do some of the things that people said you couldn't do before. I figure it's a second chance, and I don't, I don't want to let it slip away like I did with my other chance. Every player has to want to win. So uh, I think when a scouts look for a player, I think that's what they look for in a, in a player. Agility and quickness are determined by the foot speed test. It's more an indication of how hard you worked in the off season. You know, uh, some guys really go hard and some don't. And, you know, these tests hopefully will show that. The New York Rangers are very happy to announce the selection of defenseman Jeff Brown of Sarnia. I was rated 26 overall and ended up going 22nd overall to the New York Rangers. That was a thrill. I mean, I wouldn't trade that for anything in the world to get drafted to. Probably one of the most famous teams in the NHL, the Rangers. My first time I went to camp, I was in awe. You see a guy like Brian Leach or Wayne Gretzky sitting in the same room as you're getting dressed. It's just something that you have to experience to really get the full emotion of it. They're very deep in every position at that time, and um, to try and take positions away from guys who've played a lot of years in the NHL is is a very tough thing to do so uh, the team was deep there wasn't that opportunity to play all that much and I think that hurt my career slightly because you got to play to develop and I wanted to but sometimes that opportunity is just not there I went overseas and actually ended up over in the English Elite League all through England and Wales Scotland basically all of the UK I get to bring my family with me and we've had just wonderful experiences and uh, I've seen parts of the world that uh, I would never have the opportunity to go to if, if hockey hadn't brought me there so life experiences are great and the fact that playing hockey allowed me to go and do all these things is wonderful. Whole body power is tested by the medicine ball throw. I don't want you to have any pause whatsoever and throw the ball as far as you can. This gives them an idea of the explosiveness that this guy has. Is it something that we do have to work on to produce more power, basically to produce more speed on the ice? Good. Good. Good job. Thank you, what do you, what do you have, Bob? Uh, a good one, VO2. Nice. So I might hang out up here and hide for a little while. VO2 max test at your volume of oxygen that you can breathe into the body, send to the lungs, and distribute or deliver uh, throughout the body, and especially in the skating muscles. You're going to start down about 200 watts, and you're going to ride until you can't ride anymore. So this is just to measure expired gases from you. The higher your VO2 max, the better your recovery ability so that you can sprint full out again. Push, 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 push. That's it, come on, keep going, keep going, keep going. A little more, a little more, a little more. That's it, that's it, that's it. Okay, good job. Good, good RPM, good, strong. good. Keep going, keep, keep up, going. Keep it up, come on, right to the end here. Dig keep deep. Going. This is where Last it little bit. Good stuff here, Dom. Keep it up, keep going, keep going. Last little bit here. Keep going, come on, keep this going. Okay, okay, there we go. Good job, good job. Good job. Good job. Let's go play some golf. <laughs> I uh, left on Mac Island when I was 15 years old to pursue my dream. I was quite impressed because uh, old Dominic always been a little bit pampered. Uh, he never even cooked breakfast in his life. I've been attending Dalhousie University for the last two years and playing uh, on the varsity hockey team with, with the Tigers. He's not the same person and hockey player that he was when he was junior. There's a lot of change in his uh, work ethic and his uh, motivation towards his hockey and his university. He's more like an all-around player now that knows what it takes to get to the top, which I'm quite proud of. When I step on the ice, there's a, there's a sense in me that, you know, there's nowhere else I'd like to be. I, it's, uh, that's what I look forward to every day. I'm trying to loosen up because I don't know what's coming here. I hear them yelling and screaming in the other room, but they won't let us uh, 
have a peak. When I say the go, brutal Wingate test measures anaerobic threshold and lactic acid buildup. The test is over, you're going to sit down in that chair. Okay, there's no moving, no walking around. You're going to sit down right away. If you happen to feel nauseous, you're walking around that chair. Come on! Come on! Hard! Hard! You have to learn to enjoy the pain. If you dread the pain, you dread it when it comes. Then when it hits you, you're done. So you have to like tell yourself that you like it, and then when it comes, you just can like, oh okay, and then just go keep going. And go hard, 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 come on, all the way, all the way, all the way, let's go. Hard, hard, come on, dry, dry, hard, hard, 15 seconds, go, hard, come on, keep it going, keep it going, all the way in, all the way in. That's that's sick. Okay, you gotta just sit here for three minutes, and then after that, I'm gonna take a little thing. I'll sit here for ten if you let me. <laughs> well, legs might cramp up a bit. All right, Mike, we've got the testing results prepared for all of the players in the camp. Peter, the average age for the entire group is 22.8, so it's a young group. Uh, this group as a whole uh, average out above what you would see in your NHL rookie camp. Which so they should be because they're, yeah, they're a, a couple, bit, of, couple of years older. That's right. A bit older. That's right. Skin fold, we'll start with that. You, did you do several sites or how did we do yeah, it? Yeah, we did, we did six, calipers. Calipers mm -hmm. did six sites. We're trying to get the people that are, that are 30, 31. I just noticed Dickinson down here. Uh, at uh, 32.6, it's pretty good for. And there, uh, there's somebody off the charts here too. That we look down here. There's one fella here. It's 66.8. 66.8. That's so a lot of the heavy baggage you'd be carrying around. Yeah. So we got the aerobic capacity. We've got that as a VO2 max test. That was the yeah. bike test you're yeah. used to with the direct uh, measurement. Speed forwards might get up around 65. So some of these guys, there's you know areas of concern from an evaluation standpoint. The next two as we go along is anaerobic power. Okay. That's that first step, explosive power, their explosive speed Getting and acceleration. So we're trying to get you know 14.0 or above to show some real explosiveness. And it's a it's a challenging test. You know, I think there's some. Uh, yeah, it's a real it's a real. It's the longest 45 check. seconds of their life. Right and left lateral leg power. Well, we are getting an indication of uh, explosive leg power in that hockey-specific movement pattern, but also sort of movement efficiency. If it's a defenseman, can they cover a lot of ice with one or two strides? And there's, there's quite a number of guys that are making that uh, well, cutoff. The, if, if the NHL centers too, they're very close to this here. That's that's impressive. And these are guys are like the athletes. They need, they they need, need to be good at all of this. That's why the sport's the greatest. It's awesome. That's a super job, Peter. Appreciate that. When the fitness tests were analyzed, three players came out on top. Six foot six defenseman James Damone, RCMP officer Eric Boucher, and forward Philippe Chouanier. Jack Birch and his team meet in the war room. After seven days, it's a chance to discuss the overall picture. Are there guys that are, for want of a better word, pissing you off around this camp? Are there guys that are having trouble following drills? Are there guys that seem to be lost? That's the type of thing I need to know. Just one kid, Christian Jeffkins, is a kid that plays with a lot of bravado. He's mouthy on the bench. He's a guy that pisses off the opposition. And you know what? It's a lot of it's bravado. All of it's know? bravado. This is the kid that was put on the bubble before we had an opportunity to deal with him. All of a sudden, he came down with the flu. Then I hear the next day that. Well, he had the flu. He was also sitting around having a couple beers. So I brought him in to talk to him. I said, I hear you were out drinking. Well, I only had a couple of beers. But for a 21-year-old at a cane training camp like this, to admit that he's had a couple of beers is a little bit scary. All right. The guys have bottomed out on the fitness test. Fitness to us is another skill. It's not, it's like skating. It's like shooting. It's like passing. That if you don't have that part of the game, you can't play. 
And if you don't have fitness, you can't play. And it's, that's got to get across to these guys that they just, they're, they're no longer in the minors. They're no longer amateurs. Pro hockey, they have to have a fitness level. Bruno Lemire, he's the, the little guy, the five foot five, 184 pounds. Uh, he might be a little overweight, but a guy like that that spends a lot of energy needs to be in top-notch shape. And a guy with 5'5 has to show himself every, every shift, you know. I have to confirm, but I don't think there's a problem with his attitude. I think he's pretty willing. I think he's coachable. I think he respects authority. I think he's going to do his best for the team. Uh, I think his self-motivation, self-discipline are probably pretty darn good. His, his first game was really good. Yeah. His second game was terrible. Brandon Cuthbert. Al, the goaler. He's a um, positional style goalie. He's got the long legs, the, the big pad. The long skinny legs. The, the long skinny legs. But he, he blocks the puck, but he does have, he's not really quick laterally. I'm looking at his stats. He went from Medicine Hat, where he played 40 games in 2002, 2003, to a team that was the last in all the CHL, the Saskatoon Blades, where he only played four games. If he was any good, would he have not gotten more of four games? We should ask him that. Jeff Brown, um, I think he's worked, I think he must have worked hard uh, up to getting to this point. He's the guy, he's one of the guys that I did say, look at Jeff, if you come to this camp out of shape, I'm gonna whack you day one, and he knew it. So now I'm sitting there with Peter Twist and his staff saying, how did Jeff Brown do? And he kept, oh, he did, he, good here, good here. And I kept coming back to him, come on, tell me about Jeff Brown. And he kept saying, oh, he's okay, Jack. And he, so you know what, he's done it. Dominic Lavalier, I believe he's number 48. Um, just to give you a little background him, we, he was one of the guys we brought out in the bubble the other day that I uh, had indicated to him that we would be very interested in this conditioning. Uh, he's a guy that I more or less threatened at the trial challenge in Montreal. He's got big time talent, but I said, you need to come to this camp in shape as best you can. And he came in eight pounds heavier than when I talked to him that day and it obviously is showing up in his fitness test. That gives us enough to get our list ready for now anyway, okay? I want to say no, but uh, the truth is I'm nervous. If it comes down to two defensemen, okay, let's look at the results of the fitness test, and I did poorly and he did great, well, I know who they're going to take, and I know who I would take. I think I did okay. I mean, I think I was in the average of all the guys, but um, I guess they they uh, expected or wanted more out of me, and uh, I didn't prevail, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I can't change the contact. I'm stressed on that. Just a little bit. I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to go to the Scott, he's not going to get out Gentlemen, you have all demonstrated your ability to play the game to this point in terms of the skills that are required to play the game of ice hockey. My concern this morning is the results of the fitness test that we did yesterday. In order to play this game of ice hockey, we have to treat fitness as a skill set, not unlike our ability to shoot, skate, stop pucks. And we have a concern. Brandon? Brandon, you have the ability to stop the puck, but you're going to have to increase your fitness level and your strength in order to move on in this game. For today, though, you have a pass. When he called me up first, just by the sound in his voice, I thought I was gonna get cut. But I didn't, so I was pretty pleased with that. I haven't had like nerves like that for a while. Dominic? Dominic, we've had this discussion. You have shown some improvement, but it's not enough you are going to need some time to develop your fitness as well as your playing ability. You have the ability to play this game, now you have to get yourself into shape in order to do it. Dominic, you're cut. I 
spectacle, c'est pas fini, c'est pas fini. Tu sais, dans le hockey, c'est jamais fini. Puis, euh, j'ai encore une chance. C'est pas comme si j'étais vraiment coupé, coupé, tu sais, en voulant dire que mes chances de revenir, c'était fini. Bruno? Bruno, you're too good a player to be out here today in terms of your conditioning. I would like you to think about that. You're now going to have to outwork what you normally do for the rest of this week to see whether or not we can get your conditioning level up. But for today, you have a pass. I was nervous. I can hear the other guys, uh, really, their uh, respiration was quite uh, heavy and I was trying to stay calm. And now I have a second chance and I'll take it. And I threw on three today. Uh, the gold team uh, uh, put their two on because I'm coming. Jordan? To be quite honest, Jordan, I'm surprised that I'm talking to you. You have the potential to be a good player. We should find out what this fitness level thing is all about and see if we can address it. But for today, you have a pass. Quite a bit of relief is what uh, is my feeling right now. It's, it's nice to know that uh, they, they still have a little faith in me. This is all about second chances, and that's why we're here. But uh, second chances run out. So I think if I'm in that position again, I'll, uh, I'll be, be pretty nervous because I, I, I don't think the outcome will be so, uh, so forgiving for me. If you want to make the cut, you have to make an impression. If you want to make an impression, you have to get noticed. If you want to get noticed, you'd better show up. We got on a bus today. We thought we had the right head count. We're down here going about our business, setting the lineups for the scouts. Christian Jeffkins is missing. We're under the impression he was here. He's not here. Well, Christian Jeffkins, uh, for the last two days, has been sick. I mean, both days reported into the training staff as we ask all our players to when they're not feeling well, so we're aware of them. We've got him in the lineup today for the three on threes, and there's no sign of Christian. The trainers haven't heard from him, and we're more than a little teed off, to use the, the polite expression. Um, he is apparently up at camp, lounging. Uh, I hope he's getting better because uh, there's a couple of strikes against him now. He has uh, broken a cardinal rule. Woke up at about 6.15, um, hoping to go to the rink with my team, and uh, I didn't feel so well. And I set the alarm for 7 o'clock, so just wanted to get some more sleep. And the uh, alarm went off for three hours in my ear, and I just didn't wake up. I'm sure the guys are maybe even thinking, well, this Jeffkins now has got three days of rest, you know what I mean? But it's, it's not really rest. Um, especially when I got to go out there after three days of laying in the bed. I've slept every day for eight hours in the daytime, you know what I mean? And all this energy is about to burst and I'm in this bubble right now. And as soon as I get out of this room and out of this resort here and I get to the rink, well, it's, it's got to happen. And if it doesn't happen, well, I'm not going to make it. Today, players will have a chance to display their skills in a three-on-three -three game. The fast and freewheeling play can be unforgiving for those players who lack the ability to keep up. Right here, you can't hide. You either have skating ability or you don't. You either have skill or you don't. And uh, it really does give us that good feel. Jerkins is not there. Is no, I haven't seen him yet. Jeffkins out there? Jeffkins is officially missing in action. MIA? He's MIA. Jeffkins. Early on, number 61, Mark Wires, and number 9, Eric Boucher, get tangled up. Hey, there's a chop. Smack him. Who do you think you are? <laughs> Boucher takes a number and delivers a devastating check on wires. Oh! That's it! 
on three means lots of shots on net. And early on, the goalies are not up to the challenge. In the stands, goalie evaluator Al Jensen is also getting a rough ride. These goalies are coming up flat. Already Al Jensen is starting to sweat. In a surprise move, Todd Harkins puts himself in the lineup despite his sore back. Harkins still hurting Jack? Or? Yeah, he is. He's there as an injured player. Some players are perfect for three-on-three -three hockey. Speedy Eric Boucher oh. is one of them. Oh. Oh. Former NHL goalie Kelly Rudy has joined the camp as a mentor. When you're going down on a chance like that and uh, you get an opportunity, is it in your head that you want to go low or high or do you, do you really just wing it and at the moment that the shot's there that you take it? You want the truth? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a good scorer. So. <laughs> Finally, one goalie gets his game together. It's number 32, Trevor Cunning. Oh my Cunning! Along the boards, Lou Dickinson steals the puck from Todd Harkins. What happens next shocks everyone. Get him off the ice. Oh, looking like that. Right in the head. I'm sorry, I will chop him so hard. A punch. Right in the face. Oh, dirty. That's brutal. Stupid. It was stupid. Yeah. That wouldn't dummy him. What happened with uh, Dickinson? Uh, he hit me uh, up high. There's his hand in my face, so I gotta start getting some space out there. So. I just whacked him and said, don't do it again, so. Is it just him or is it to uh, anybody that uh, not showing you the, uh, no, the respect? No, there's lots of guys that show me the respect. It's just the egotistical little babies out there that don't like to show a little respect so much for some of the guys that played some years in the NHL, so. But, you know, I guess this is all brand new for these guys, so I gotta earn the respect, I guess. You and Harkins got to, into it. What was that all about? I just uh, thought I hit him with a pretty clean hit. He uh, reacted with a stick in the head, so I'm not very happy about it. I guess not. Is this an ongoing thing with uh, you and him? No, it's the first time I actually ran into him on the ice or anything like that, but uh, I'm sure it won't be the last time I run into him oh, after that. Hit. So that message being sent then is that you're at one point going to get him? I don't know. We'll, 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 every dog has a stay. Can I get somebody from the training room, hockey ops, anybody there? Go, Jack. I think we should pull Harkins right away. Okay. Even Kelly Rudy came down and said something about it. The lack of respect. I go, you're great. I wonder why the kid isn't signed. Not that I, not that I want any preferential treatment ever, but this is a point, right? I don't know. I didn't see the whole thing. We have a difficult task ahead of us tonight. Let's talk a little bit about Michael Couch, number four on the blue team. For me, I mean, this guy was my hero the first game, and he went downhill from there. Uh, just too casual up there. Yeah, I think the consistency in the game has been uh, the, the issue. You know, he, he was up, he was down, he was back up a little bit, but not as high as the first day. Maybe it's even falling a little farther now. Has he been tested at all? Or? Well, yeah, but he's given me, I think he's trying to fake me out, I think he's evaded it, and he might not know himself because he's young, but I think there's a lot of ego in there that we have to sort through. The next guy up that I'd like to talk about is Eric Boucher. 
You know, we've moved him up from defense, and I think that, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's performed admirably. I think he's starting to blend in now. Blending in isn't a good thing. I see a guy here that uh, uh, today, three on three, where you want to see some skating, shooting, passing, some stick handling. I don't see that at all. I agree with Kevin. He's just kind of blended in. And I think is, uh, if this group here went forward physically and caught up to him conditioning-wise, I think this guy would just fade away. What I noticed today is I thought he was better today than he's been all week for me. I mean, he's a guy that I saw in the three-on-threes in Toronto, and he stood out in Toronto. And I was hoping to see that here. And for me, what I saw today is he was back to what I saw in Toronto. I thought he stood out a little bit in places. Doesn't but it scares me that that's the only place I've noticed him. It seems since day one, though, his effort seems really consistent. He's not very successful sometimes offensively or what he's trying to do. But it's not a lack of effort. He's trying maybe a little bit too much. Uh, but at the end, I think you have to like the way he, he, he handled himself, you know, uh, work ethic-wise. Let's talk about uh, Brad Woods, number 10, the big defenseman. I think he has really good hands for a big guy, and I think he, he should go on. Um, I don't see why he couldn't. So I think he's just trying to be a little bit too fancy with the puck, you know, try to make that extra move. You know, I know he's a big guy and all that, but if he can go like straight line and shoot, take the puck to the net, I think it will be a lot more successful. Mike, does he look slow? His mobility isn't good. Quickness is not a forte of his, and three-on-three -three hockey, he should watch it, not play it. Yeah. So, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, um, part of the reason for doing a three-on-three -three is to expose some of these people. And that's what I was basically hoping to do with Brad Woods, because Brad Woods skating to me is the issue. Okay, let's talk Drew Kribble, because in lots of ways there's a pretty good comparison here. Well, I think Kribble has a lot more bite to him than Woods. He's more effective in his own zone. But both of those guys today, it's not their game. Well, I, I give Kibble the edge there, because he does to me it looks like he's got a little more bite to him and when he gets to the scene of the crime he can cause some damage you know he does and, do that. yeah and he moves a little quicker so I, I, if I'd stick with anybody I'd stick with this yeah, guy. I agree. He tees you a little bit you know physically and with the puck when he's got the puck he tees you and sometimes he's just I don't know if it's a lack of a focus or something you know he's just I don't know what's missing but he should offer a lot more than he is right now. You know he's a guy that yes he's been singled out but again I, I'm not ready to uh, cut him. Number 23, Francis No. For me, it's like a roller coaster, really. You know, he goes, plays well one shift, all of a sudden he's going to serve two nice passes, two nice giveaways, you know, on force, mistake, and, and that's what it gives you a little bit of a bad taste because he's got pretty much all the skill to do a lot more on the ice, but sometimes it looks like it's, I don't know, his mental is not there. Jack, uh, you know, here's another case here, three on three, where someone like him should shine a bit, and I don't see that. There's a lot of red lights that go on when he's on the ice. Unfortunately, yeah. more of them are in his own end, I think. Okay, the last guy that I want to talk about is Mark Wires. I don't have any problem with him. I, th I just, the only problem I have, I think he's a little bit of a hot dog out there, but I think he gets things done for me. Joe? I like him. I liked him from the uh, very first game. I thought he played uh, today. Maybe not what we all expected, but he's, uh, he's a good player, really good speed, works hard. Well, I think uh, for me, going through here, he's uh, kind of slid along. I thought today, three on three, he would be, be his type of uh, game, but, I, but I, I don't see it. Uh, he's kind of gone backwards here. Uh, I don't see a lot of upside here. God, you guys are good at this, aren't you? You really are. If they want to talk to me or tell me whatever they're uh, feeling about my playing, then I'm um, more, than, uh, more than glad to go up and hear what they have to say. I'm really uncertain on what's going to happen. I think that I played my best game today and I, I'm getting called so if it's negative. I, I'm going to ask myself some question, but it's always surprise after surprise here. Maybe I'm, they think I'm not working hard enough. I probably didn't get here in the best shape of my life. But I think I'm getting better and better every game. I'm feeling pretty, pretty optimistic still. I think being on the bubble now, it's gonna hopefully give me a kick in the butt and just keep me working harder.
you know, every night you go home, you look in the mirror, and you hope that you know you give your 100. percent I think that's the toughest battle with everybody right now. It's just trying to to bear down and really try to focus on the things that you know you know you can do well and you know you're doing right. Definitely, I'm a little bit worried. Uh, you never know. You could be uh, the newest member of the Black Aces, and uh, uh, you know, be be the next one cut. Gentlemen, uh, we used the three-on-three -three today to establish our strengths and to expose some weaknesses. We are prepared tomorrow to do a Black Aces game, and some of you will be joining them. Brad. Brad, you've certainly established your physical presence. Now I need you to keep it a little bit simpler in terms of your puck movement. For today, you're cut. I'm not going to give up. I mean, we're here for two weeks. There's no reason to be here for a week on the top squad and then get dropped down to the, the second squad after a week and just give up. Michael? Michael, you've established your talent. Now I need to see some intensity. Some of the things you're doing at this point in time is just too casual. We need to find out whether you can pick that part of the game up. But for today, you have a pass. Always good news when you get uh, a free pass and a second chance. So starting tomorrow, I really got to step it up. Drew? Drew, you have a great defensive presence in the game. You're very good physically. Now I need some offense out of you. For today, you're a cut. This is just a minor setback. It's just gonna make me work a little bit harder and show the scouts in the stands that I'm not gonna die. And I came here to make the top 12, and that's what I'm gonna continue to do. Eric. Eric, your play in the three-on-threes in Toronto was outstanding. The first two or three days here in this camp, you got lost in the five-on-fives for me. Today, the three-on-three -three you showed again. I need you to do that when we're playing five-on-five. -five. But for today, you're a pass. I'm not a goal scorer. I've never been, so it's a bonus if I score like today was a, bo a bonus, but... I mean, I have to show some some other aspect of my game. Francis? Francis, you have real good offensive talent. You showed that today by the two of the nicest goals I've seen. But I'm concerned about your defensive part of the game. Obviously, that's probably been presented to you in the past. Today, you're cut. A black helmet, a white helmet. Um, w once you step on the ice, you just you just want to have fun and play as hard as you can all the time because you know you love the game. So I'm I'm gonna go with it and uh, you know work at twice as hard. Mark. Mark, you obviously have good offensive talent. You've got great speed. I need to see some physical presence out of your play. But today, you're a pass. I was fortunate enough today to receive a pass and uh, be granted back to the blue team and keep playing uh, hard there, I guess, and try and keep myself from getting back out in the middle of the ice. I didn't really see nobody out there yet, so I just yelled it out. Good morning, Vernon! And uh, if you look, everybody's here for breakfast, so I guess it works pretty well. It's day nine at training camp. 
So far, 37 players have been cut and given black helmets. 31 players remain on the elite team, still with a chance to win one of the six NHL tryouts up for grabs. But the Black Aces are not finished yet. This afternoon, they'll play one final game against each other. The evaluators will choose the 20 best players from that game. The prize? A chance for a last chance. A game against the White Helmets tomorrow. And some of the Black Aces could potentially win back a White Helmet. The elite squad has other business to attend to. It's the skills competition. Skating, stick handling and shooting. For the past three days, Kristen Jeffkins has been sick in bed. Now he's back on the ice for the first time, warming up for the skills competition. Jeffkins, go ride the bike or something. Leave her ice alone. Watching from the stands where they will only observe the competition, the Black Aces are not impressed. Kind of surprised to see a couple guys out there, like uh, Jeffkins has been sick for a couple days and then all of a sudden he's out here for the skills competition, so it's kind of crazy. Just trying to get the legs going a little bit. I feel kind of tired, so I'm trying to just get the skating legs back going. You guys go home sick and then they come back and they're in the bar the next night, but yet they're still wearing a black or wearing a white helmet where there's a lot of guys sitting at this table here that have been working their ass off for eight days now and are getting screwed, to be honest. Sean Maman is back on the ice testing his injured ankle. As much as he'd love to play, even he must admit it isn't strong enough to let him join the skills competition. Just get hurt the first day and you automatically make it to the final <laughs> six. <laughs> if I see guys that are concerned about other players' injuries and they're not concerned about their own play, that is a problem for me because that indicates to me that there's probably a lack of mental toughness that they're distracted, that they're looking for excuses, barriers, buffers, and they're not necessarily going to be able to regulate their own emotions to play well when they get out there. First of all, the grumbling from the players, the rule of thumb around most National Hockey League teams is that when a player is on the injured reserve list, you cannot cut them or send them to the minors. For the elite team, it's time to get back on the ice. First up, the skating competition. A timed race to find the fastest skater in camp. My experience over the years is that when you actually test a player's skating ability by doing a timing frame on it, that we often find that players skate faster than we think. From a standing start, the top three speedsters in camp are number 46, Robert Dubois, number 38, Ryan Lazon, and number 54, Lou Dickinson. Forward number 52, Matt Hubbard, is the quickest in skating backwards, followed by two defensemen, number 22, James Damone, and number 11, Jeff Brown. The stick handling with speed, that tells us something too. It gives us an indication of not only what they're capable of doing with the puck, but can they do it with speed. Yeah, it's uh, harder for us, but we're gonna prove the little guys that we, we can move uh, fast enough to follow these guys. Almost blew a tire, almost blew a tire. It's not bad. Might as well just put a black helmet on now and call her a quits. In the stick handling competition, the top three around the pylons are number 52, Matt Hubbard. Oh. Number nine, Eric Boucher. And number three, Kevin Lavallee. Harder shot. I love this one. Woo! 
The hardest shot competition comes down to the top three. Number 54, Lou Dickinson, fires the opening yes, shot. Number 16, Jordan Little, steps it up. Number two, Daniel Jacobs' first attempt leaves him trailing. On his final attempt, Dickinson rises to the challenge. Someone's got to beat 94. Daniel Jacob has one last chance. And he wins, bragging rights for the hardest shot at camp, 96 miles per hour. Because I'm a late bloomer, uh, I started training when I was like 18 or 19 years old and uh, got serious with it when I was 20. Being a tall guy was uh, harder than, uh, than the smaller uh, kids. Yeah, he was always tall, that's the thing, you know. It just, you just need a little bit more time to get those uh, strides going. I was able to uh, do some good stuff on the ice, but I wasn't as quick as I am right now. And uh, yeah, uh, the quick feet were a big uh, concern with the coaches. I grew up with Dan when uh, he's just a guy struggling stuff and skating, but you know, and I, a lot of people believed in him. And now uh, we're like, look where, look, look where he's at. My grandfather uh, died a year ago. And yeah, he wasn't only a grandfather, but he was my best friend. And uh, yeah, uh, I found I found a birthday card that he gave me, uh, my last the last birthday party that we had. And uh, yeah, he wrote down that uh, live your dream, live your dream fully, and uh, nothing's impossible. And uh, this is why I showed up at the, the bell making the cup. I'm gonna try my best to uh, live my dream fully. The elite squad will have the rest of the day off. Now it's last chance time for the Black Aces. Have your attention for a minute, folks. As you know, this is uh, the day that we promised you, the day that you have the second chance. I believe in the uh, philosophy every man deserves a second opportunity. It's a day that would be described as game seven. It's do or die right now. You have to get it done today. The great thing about it is, if you impress us and you're one of the 20 selected to play against the white team, you get a chance to stay alive. Give us your best effort. See you after. As a team, boys, as a team. Go get him! Early on, the play is aggressive but scrambly. This is the first time the Black Aces have played together in teams, and it shows. So far, neither side has gelled. There's a lot of hacking going on. Stay down there! Time is slipping away for these players. Only two periods remain to impress the scouts. They're still so charged up, they're not reading. They're 100 miles an hour, not accomplishing much. Their defense are way handling the puck way too much. Strip them. Go get them. Don't expect them to, to pass it. Get on top of them and then take, put that puck in the net down there. So let's go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's taken the players a period to get over their nerves. Now the team settle down and start to execute. That's it, Pelt. Get a shot off. Get a shot off. Good shot. Here's one. Yeah, I got Levy. I got Levy. There you go. Yeah. With Team Gray caught looking the wrong way, number 25, Giovanni Flaminio, sneaks in and fires a wrist shot past Michael Mole. It's 1 0 White. Way to go, Flamer! That was a good play. Come on, Goose. Come on, Goose. Ah. Yeah! I 
have called it. I have no idea what that was. A weird bounce and a fluky goal for number 15, Jason Goulet. We'll take it. That was a bold goal. Come on, stay with him, stay with him. Good job, Good job. Step up on him, out of way. Good job, boys. Start one, start one. Come on, guys, we just need one to start it, eh? Let's go. Go for it. Number 39, Daryl Levy, is hammered into the dasher by number 63, Alexander Dandino. But instead of knocking Levy out, the hit seems to wake him up. That's it, boys. We're taking our lumps and we're coming right back. Okay, that's it. Left wing, take it. <laughs> Daryl, you okay? Head's a little bumpy, eh? I'm okay. I'm okay. Right. Yeah, you sure? Mm -hmm. You know where you are? Yeah. Where? Uh, hockey game. Which hockey game? Black Aces. Good. Where? What location? What city? Uh, Vernon. Okay, you know what the date is today? I never know what the date is. Never know what the date is. Okay. Two. Okay. Give me two minutes here. Confidence, baby. Hey, fellas, gotta get in that lane. Gray capitalizes. A Peter Hay slap shot from the point puts them on the board. <laughs> White answers back quickly as number 51, Jeremy Shane, scores from the top of the circle. Right off the draw, boys. Out of way. That hurts. That hurts. After a mix-up in the neutral zone, number 24, Dominic Perriard, is pulled down on a breakaway. And the ref points to center right. Let's go, Perriard, let's go, buddy. Let's go, Perriard, let's go, buddy. It's all you, Morgan, all you, buddy. No mistake for Perriard, and Gray is back in the game. That's big, that's big, Gray! To come back here, boys, here we go! With one minute left, number 35, Anthony Marshall, races for the bench as Team Gray adds the extra attacker. Good job, White. Out of way, boys. Out of way, boys. Big win. Good job, guys. White holds on for the final 20 seconds and comes away with a hard fought win. Good job, fellas. Out of work, boys. Good job, guys. Good job, fellas. Good job out there. Good job. Jack Birch and the evaluators go through the list of the 37 Black Aces. Who has played well enough to get another shot at the Elite Squad? Get it all together over the course of the night. I'm going to put together a Black Aces team of 20, drop the hammer, and that'll be the team that'll play against the white helmeted team tomorrow. Okay? So, Mike Penny, if you can give me your top five, I'd appreciate it. Kibble. Kibble. No laughing, by the way. Kibble. Woods. Forche. Uh, Strom. Strom. Mizzy. Michelle. Strom. Strom. Peria, 24. Yep. White, Woods, and Lequier. Oh, Lequier, yep. Kibble, Strom, and Mizzy. Uh, Levy, 
Levy. Dushinsky. Dushinsky. Give me your goalers today that uh, you would recommend that I take forward to the game tomorrow. Uh, for the game tomorrow, I'd take Michael Mole and Anthony Marshall. Any disagreements with that? Right here. The Marshall didn't uh, get me too excited, nor has he the whole way through here. But you know what, Mike? Uh, you know what my feeling is? Yeah. Is that's all. We got a six foot six goaler that's come out of tier two as his highest level he's ever played. Yeah. In terms of the long run, and in terms of prospect, he might be the best prospect of the group. And I agree that he's not the most polished goalie, absolutely. But with his performance throughout the week, I think deserves at least a shot. At the game tomorrow? Absolutely. Yeah. Move forward. There's something to be Mike said about lost. somebody playing well in a more pressured situation. And as this camp... You know what, though, Mike, I, I think in all cases, they've been under a lot of pressure this week. These kids, if you go down and talk to them, you can see it in their eyes that they're saying every single thing that's said to them or talked about. Well, they know, care. They sure care. they care. So, I, like, And some, some people handle it better yeah, than absolutely. others, obviously. Absolutely. Top player, five seconds or less. Joe. I picked uh, George. I keep saying his name, his, his name wrong, but I think he uh, looks like he wants to get back in the group. Worked hard today. Good. Yeah. He, just to speak to that, I went in the dress rooms after the game, and he was, he's distraught. He's, yeah. He, he knows the pressure's been put on him to score some points here, Mike. That's where he, you know, when he get put down, but that's okay. Michelle. 24, Perry out for me. I always like him, and I think he's a, he plays a solid game. He plays a simple game. He's physical. I just like him. Great. EJ. Let me support George. I'll jump on his bandwagon. He's sincere. I thought he was a big goon phony at the start, and he's won me over. So Great. Joe. Like you talked about Perry. Perry out. Which one? Just, he just impressed me today amongst that group. Okay. Uh, Michael Moore, good attitude. I like his quickness and his competitiveness. The only thing about Michael Moore today is that when the goal puck goes up, I, honest to God, I didn't see it. You said he did, and you yeah. told me that he should see that. Yes, he should see that. Yeah. What I didn't like at the end of it is the goal goes in, and he stands there shaking his head like, yeah, exactly. you know, I don't like that out of a goalie, but... Mike? Kibble. Kibble. Young. Uh, looks like he's got a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, has him throwing the towel in. Uh, showed up today. I thought he'd give a good effort. I mean, he lacks in certain areas, but with his age and looks to me like he's got some jam and a little jump to him. Dana, is there any of these guys that you would want to advance to make sure that he got into tomorrow's game? Well, obviously Weir. Yeah, so you like Weir. Mm -hmm. And because I, I think he understands what he has to do to get up there and to stay up there. Have any of them come to see you? Excuse me. Have any of them come to see you? On their own? Yes, they have. Okay. They're making appointments and they actually, it's interesting how keen they are to improve their skills on the ice and they know what their weaknesses are and they want to close the gap. And some of the guys have actually been hitting the wall. I've been surprised. A couple of guys have been quite emotional. Mm -hmm. A couple of guys have been crying. So they want this and some of them, you know, they fear failure so they don't quite know how to get by it. So they're coming to figure it out. It's good. Did anybody Want to carry a torch for Alexander Dandenault. The Black Aces enter the arena for the most important moment of their camp. If these players don't make it today, their dreams are all but over. Fellas, please uh, stand up when I call your name. Number eight, Peter Hay. Number 10, Brad Woods. Number 13, Eric Clark. Number 14, Wilder Weir. Number 15, Jason Goulet. Number 18, Drew Kevel. Number 20, Michael Moll. Number 23, Francis Nolte. Number 24, 
Dominic Perriar. Number 28, Dan Tessier. Number 35, Anthony Marshall. Number 36, Noel White. Number 39, Daryl Levy. Number 41, Anders Storm. Number 48, Dominic Levier. Number 51, Jeremy Shane. Number 64, Preston Mezzi. Number 65, George Zajinkala. Number 67, Francois Fortier. Number 68, Blaine Paul. Gentlemen, Black Aces will have an opportunity to play against the White Helmets this afternoon. This will be your last chance to earn a White Helmet. Good luck and have a good game. You know, you're thinking, oh man, he's, you know, he's passed my number. I'm not sure if any called. And, you know, and then you hear Wilder Weir and you're just, your heart just stops and you're like, thank God. Last we met here, we saw an important inter-squad game, the Black Aces against the Black Aces, to decide who would earn a chance to show their stuff against the White Helmet squad. Now the best of the Aces squad has been chosen, and they're preparing for the big showdown. Every day is, is important, but as the days go on, they get more and more important. So for the guys in the Black Aces this afternoon, it's virtually their last go. This is their last chance to prove to the scouts up above that they're worthy of that final look and potentially and i'm saying potentially for them to get promoted back to the white helmeted side we're finding that some of the guys that are emotionally tacked are showing it physically and by that we mean they're not as focused in their workouts you're going to see the difference between the players with passion and the players that maybe don't want it as much as the next time okay guys pick up the cadence a bit 15 seconds I want to prove to the world that I can play no matter what someone tells me or what someone says if I'm not ready yet. I think differently and I need to show it. Daryl, like I've never seen a kid as focused as he is. He wants it so bad he can taste it. Black Aces today, you could sense the ones that wanted it the most. They were focused, you know, they were thinking about the game this afternoon even while they were training in here today. It's a huge opportunity right now for all of us players here and I think I'm going to try to do what I can and make this, uh, make the best out of this opportunity. Before the players hit the ice, they get a much needed break, a chance to refuel, relax and recover. It's the games and it's the uh, practices and it's uh, the four kilometer runs uh, up early in the morning at 6.30 and spending 8, 9, 10, 12 hours at the rink. We've been working hard. It's been a long two weeks. I just got married. Went on my honeymoon, got back and left. So I haven't been really with my wife after that. So it's, it's kind of tough at this circumstance. If it was any other time, it would be fine. When I left, uh, I told my mom and my two sisters and obviously my cousins that were telling me to do this. I told them, you know what, I'm going to go there and have a good time. You know, I'm not going to put no pressure on myself. I'm just going to go out there and play the game of hockey. That was a picture from the backyard of my house on the deck there. Uh, my sisters and my mom and their husbands and boyfriends and my little nephew. Well, I've been away uh, since I'm 15 playing hockey and being away six to eight months of the year. It's not too bad. Just getting messages from, like, uh, my aunt is one. 
but just talking about my father and stuff. So long ago. We were playing in Thunder Bay, and then uh, and then I got a call in the morning, and uh, they were saying come home because my father was not feeling well. And then when we got there, uh, brief talking, and then uh, he passed away. My mom and my sisters, and we didn't know really what to do, and, and so it, I kind of just put a damper in my hockey and stay home and went to school, got my machinist papers. It's starting to go away there, it's better. Do this and they did that. And you get two minutes for elbowing. Four lines, boys. Well, hammer those guys. And they won't want to play with us. Take it to them, eh, guys? At least five, one, five, two. What's going to separate you guys today? elevate some guys and keep some guys where they are is your intensity and what you're willing to do on that ice. You guys in this room, take a look at the color of your helmets. If that doesn't light a fire under your ass with what you want to do to these guys tonight, nothing will. There is no second chance and you got something to prove against these guys. You guys got the opportunity to knock them off their little pedestal. Let's go do it, boys. Okay, who's up? Let's go. Let's get her going. Snow ice. Hey, short shifts. Hey, fellow short shifts here. Right, here we go. Right. Oh, right. Center. Oh, right. Chip, chip, chip. better than anybody could imagine. Billy's all fired up. He's coaching hard. Yeah. Dominic Perriard slashes number 22, James Damone, and then comes back for more. Get a draw here, get a draw. We're good, we're good. We're good, we're good. We're good buddy, we're good. Slash my player two-handed. We're good, hey, that's what we're here for. Huh? Right? You can do your job. You're like on the f***ing dub, how do you have a job? You're a real joke, Mike, you're a real joke. We got a penalty. Broke a stick. This is getting nasty. Yeah, they're getting a little dirty. Nasty. Call the hole to that. Yeah, good slash there, huh? That's a French move right there. It's right from Quebec, isn't it? Anytime. Anytime. Keep going here, change boys. Up, Keep going up, here. Come on, Shader. Get deep. Shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. Number eight, Peter Hay scores on a wraparound. The Black Aces are up 1-0. This is the best game so far, Jack. But well, they've improved. Capitalize here, boys. Need a goal now. 25 seconds. A very chippy first period ends with the Black Aces up 1-0. That's cruel hockey out there. Win this hockey game, guys. Don't worry about it. We're gonna get up and some goals on these guys, and we got some numbers to deal with. We're right. Okay. All right. You know what they're doing? You know they're just waiting for you, and they're hacking at you. Let's do it back. I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna start hacking. I might be in a box, but I'm gonna take some guys down. Let's get a quick one here. Let's get right back in the boys. Take these 20 boys. That's all we gotta worry about. Let's go, guys. Two things: defense. Quit dinking around with the puck. One pass, and then that thing comes out, or no passes and it comes out. That's where we get in trouble. Somebody's trying to beat somebody in our own end. These guys are, after they move the puck, it's like they're playing summer hockey. They got their heads down. They don't even think they're gonna get hit, okay? Start finishing your checks on them all over the ice, and these guys are gonna start coughing it up. Keep going same way, boys. We're up one zip. It's a good start. Good job, Wider A, boys. 40 minutes, though, boys, eh? Come on, Blue. Let's get up. Let's get 
fired. The second period opens with the elite squad down by a goal. That's down a goal. Let's focus here. Let's wheel. Come on, come on, Danny. Nice try. Kivel. I, I like that guy. This is not for the faint of heart today. Oh no, these guys are going right to the end, I think. These guys are pissed off. Get it out. That's it, that's it, come on. Knock him down, knock him down. Robert Dubois responds to a slash from Perriard. Let me go, Doobie! Oh, come on, who's that? I'll give you two to one. But you I'll know, uh, yeah, I mean, you get the feeling guys don't like that Dubois guy. At the midway point, it's time to switch goalies. For the Black Aces, Michael Mole has been perfect, while the elite squad's Joel Martin has allowed one goal. Anthony Marshall is the new Black Aces goalie. Brendan Cuthbert steps in for the White Helmets. Come on, come on, keep that speed moving. boy. Good face off, boy. Good play. Dan Tessier feeds number 39, Daryl Levy, and he beats new goalie Brendan Cuthbert. It's 2 0 for the Black Aces. Here we go, Blue. Here we go. Keep her going, Blue. Six foot six James Damone tries to intimidate five foot seven Dan Tessier, but Tessier won't back down. Hey, Americans were trying to get out of there. No, yeah, that wouldn't that wouldn't surprise me either. Yeah. He's 35 and he wanted to see his 36th birthday. One more guy, go to the front of the net. Go to the front of the net. Front of the net. Front of the net. Don't let him out. Get right up. Shoot it. Another emotional period comes to an end with the elite squad down 2-0. Boys, we're playing right in their hands here. We're playing right in their hands, we're playing desperate hockey, and we're worried about it. Let's go, Levy, let's go, let's go, let's go They don't have as much skill, they don't have as much foot speed back there. Keep going in here, eh? Hey, we're gonna work as a team out there, eh, Whiter? Let's get our wheels going and let's work them, okay? I hope they're frustrated, I hope they're pissed off. Because we're not gonna quit. Yeah, you know, we're playing hardcore, like, we're not gonna... We're not giving up anything. We're playing as a team, and when uh, when a blue guy's in there against one of our guys, we're gonna have three or four guys in there to help him out. What happens if some uh, best player here gets a cross check across the back? You know, and now he can't play anymore. Is that funny? It's not funny. It's not hockey either. That's my style of game. I like playing hard nosed hockey. And but that's all he's been doing all game. You know, like a good hockey player don't play like that. You know, that guy would have been like tossed out a long time ago. Good day. What's the point of going out there being soft? You know, hockey's a game and a rough sport, and you gotta play rough, oh, rough and tough. Just the uh, the harsh reality of pro sport and running a pro camp here is is that you have to make decisions based on daily competition amongst your group, and I just want to make sure you guys are fully aware that that is happening right now. We want to see people play playoff hockey with composure and passion and be able to keep your focus. But that's what uh, either distinguishes you as a pro or not, because that's what's at, at stake for you. That's a pro camp and that's the reality of it. It's the reality of it. Get ready for your next period. Fortier did a great job over here, stacked the guy up, got an opportunity for a puck. We went in on a two-on-one, I think, with Lev and uh, Danny. That's what this will do if we're patient. Do you want to win the game? The next guy that takes a penalty is going to sit on the bench and watch. I don't care what they do to you. We want to win this game. You may be playing on that team the next day. So you got to stay disciplined. I don't care if they hook you around the neck. I don't care if they slash you going to the net. Stay out of the penalty box. That's the only way we're going to win. The only way we're going to give them a chance to get back in this game if we shoot ourselves in the foot. Let's not do that, all right? Let's go get nervous. Go get nervous, The third period begins. The elite team has just 20 minutes to erase a 2 nothing deficit. Get the line, get the line, get it in. All right, all right. Go, Duke, go, Duke. 
got to hold him up here, boys. Nice play. Wheel, wheel, wheel. He's coming. He's coming, Derek. Come on, Evo. Dick, Dick, Dick. Get up, Danny. Get up, Danny. Number 37, Dominic Noel, has finally put the elite team on the board, but his celebration is interrupted by Dan Tessier. Both of them end up in the box. There's some dirty shots. Lou Dickinson is pulled down by Francis Nault. It's a penalty shot. Come on, kids. Come on, kids. Dickinson brings the elite team to within one. Lots of time, lots of time. One, one. Right on Over the side, baby. Philippe Chouanier scores for the elites, and now it's all even. Dan Tessier is perfectly positioned for a Fortier pass, and the Black Aces are once again in the lead. Tessier got a nice setup by Fortier. Too little, too late for the White Helmets. A potential tying goal fails to beat the buzzer. The Black Aces' upset victory will have an impact. Some Black Aces may earn another shot, but today it's the White Helmets whose fate will be decided. That was actually a pretty good game, eh? It was a good game. Yeah. It's very competitive and uh, good work ethic. I thought the, the Black Helmeted team played really well as a team today. They stuck together, and I think that that uh, won over maybe the talent today. There's some big guys out there that, with a little bit of time, you know, in just this time, have started to move better, started to think well, better. Well, they're playing better, as we mentioned yeah. today. They're, they're better hockey players today than they yeah. were a week ago. You right. know, like, these, these are some exciting players. Who disappointed us on the, the blue team white helmets? Well, I think like, it was more of a collective thing. I think that they, they thought that, you know, we're the chosen here right now, that we're making the cut so far. And uh, they kind of maybe played a little bit, uh, you know, easy. You know, they all stepped on the ice there with, uh, before the game started, and they were all on the same level playing field, but a few of them took themselves out of it today. Like, like who, Mike? Well, I think uh, uh, Jeff Kins took himself out of it today for me. Uh, McGilvery, uh, Harkins. And I think Cuthbert has dropped. He just seems like he was struggling. So, I mean, it's not something, you know, we had to do. They did it to themselves. Yeah, and we talked yeah, about that's that. That's a good point. We've, we've talked about this in coaching a lot. That, and the players look at you like uh, 
you are a little bit strange, but you say oftentimes, you know, you cut yourselves. The coaches don't cut you, you cut yourselves. I'm an NHL hockey player. Of course I should be in the top six. It's an embarrassment if I'm not. I, I knew it was coming, you know, unless I had a big, big game today. I haven't got to play enough this week with my injuries and stuff, and uh, there's guys that have been plugging away all week. You just got to deal with what you can control. It's out in the ice when you play. After that, it's politics and business. There's a couple things I didn't do well on, a couple mistakes I did. But in the same note, uh, they obviously, it's, they're NHL guys, they know what they're doing. With every series of cuts, the decisions become more difficult. So general manager Mike Keenan takes over delivering the news. Christian, I know you've worked through some tough sicknesses this week and uh, have given it a great effort. Uh, it's time to move however past your talent base. You're cut. Good luck to you. You get Mr. Keenan, you know what I mean, saying, oh, your talent levels, you know what I mean, it's as far as you go, and you know what I mean, you, you, you want to pick up that helmet and slap him across the face. It's nothing to get him, but you know what I mean, if someone puts you down, you obviously get offended. But at uh, the same time, you know what I mean? You take that and he says, okay, this guy doesn't think I'm talented enough to go. <laughs> I'm going to show him wrong. Brandon, I know that you've put a lot of work in this last week. However, the talent base at your position is just fierce. They're cut. I wish you all the best. There's not much to deal with. You got cut, you just gotta live with it. Um, and go out tomorrow and do as best as you can. Billy, we brought you here for veteran experience and leadership. You've demonstrated that, you've helped move the program along. But however, you're cut. Good luck to you. Thanks. There's a lot more tragic things that could happen in my life. I got a beautiful family and a, and a terrific job and, you know, I got a great life to go back to here. So I guess it called an honor to get cut by Mike Keenan. So now for once in my life when I get cut from a hockey team, it's by a, a real guy, you know. So, you know, look at it that way. I got a great uh, experience to look back on. Todd, I know you had some problems this week with your back, your health issues. You've given us a great effort. You're here for leadership. You've demonstrated that. However, we're going to move by you. You're cut. I don't know too many 35-year-olds that are here right now, so how can I not walk out of here with my head held high? I was just taking it all in, thinking about my kids and my wife. You know, that's the most important thing in my life. Nicholas would be very proud of me right now. Jansen and Jonas, too. They thought their dad was going to come back and play in the National Hockey League, but this is just something that happens in life with, with pro hockey, and it's, uh, it's the reality of it. I'm proud of myself, and I'm proud of what I've accomplished. Welcome back to Vernon. As night falls on Silver Star, the camp is still buzzing about the surprising upset in today's game. Today, the Black Helmets prove that uh, we can compete with uh, the White Helmets. There's a lot of tension and a lot of competition going on out there where guys were really fighting for each other's jobs and there was a lot of stick work and, uh, you know, hooking and slashing and banging and crashing. Well, there was a lot of intensity, that's for sure. The game was totally different, you know, both teams wanted to win, uh, especially the, the Black Aces, like, they, they wanted to prove a point. The game was so intense that even usually mild-mannered James Damone lost his cool. It was, uh, you know, really heat of the moment situation where, you know, two teams are fighting for spots and, uh, now I got a stick broken over my ankle, which didn't really feel that pleasant. And I got back to the bench, and I was so mad. That's a French move right there. I couldn't think of anything else to say, and I just said the wrong thing. I got to try to find him and apologize, because that's that's not me. I mean, I'm, I have a French last name. I speak French. Uh, my family lives in New Brunswick. Um, 
you know, I don't think my family would be very happy with me if they if they thought I was like that. And I'm not I'm not like that. I'm not that type of person. Those who made the best impression on the coaches and scouts will now trade in their black helmets for white ones. The question is, how many will be chosen? I just want to go around the table and ask you for potential call-ups. Guys that are on the Black Aces team today, I want to talk about the goalie. You would like to see Mike Mole move back into the other side? Definitely. Francois Forche. I'd put him back in, Jack. You'd put him back yeah. in? Dan Tessier. No. No? No. No. Kevin? To me, Forche would be ahead of Tessier. Andrew Strom. Yes for yes, me. Yes for me, too. There you go. All of us agreed on that. Number 41, Anders Strom, we would put back in as a white helmet. I, I like the way he worked uh, today. He's a big kid. Looks like he really wanted to get back on the white team. Preston Mizzy. Yes. 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 Yes, all three of you say yes. You know what strikes me about him, Jack? The more I watch him, he knows how to play the game. The only problem I have is I worry about his skating. Simple as that. Drew Kibble. Yes. yes. <laughs> Did you guys set this up? <laughs> He's playing well. He's play, he played better than uh, some of the defensemen on the blue team. My, my only concern is, is let's not put everybody back up with the big club and then turn around and have to put them back. If we can get a guy that you think has a legitimate chance of getting into the top 20, then it's worth it to put him back into a white helmet because he can legitimately compete for a spot in the finals. Day 11 dawns, and the question remains, how many black aces will be getting good news this morning? Morning, man. Morning. morning. How are you this morning? Good. good. You guys have done uh, some good work yesterday, beating the White Helmets, and uh, you're a big part of it. Drew, an excellent game. You should be proud of your development, your performance at this point. Uh, Michael, you're a big part of the game's success story yesterday. Evaluations were very quick to begin with, but I'd like you guys to enjoy the fact that you've earned the opportunity to put a White Helmet back on. So take your White Helmets and uh, good luck today. Well, I think getting those boy helmets was a, kind of a sigh of relief. Like, I think both Mike and I were pretty happy about it. It's been a little bit of pressure on us all week to try to work our way up to the white helmet squad. I was about six or seven, and I was terrified of the ring. It was dark, it was dingy. Uh, I was scared of the Zamboni, and I said, I turned around, I said, Mom, get me out of here. I guess it was a year or two later, I said, I want, I want to be in hockey. I think every kid grows up dreaming about playing professional hockey. I consider myself a rink rat. Growing up, I was a huge Toronto Maple Leafs fan. That was always my thing. I pretty much, uh, you know, was obsessed with any goal that played for the Leafs. You know, that was my goal, was to play in the NHL and to play for the Toronto Maple Leafs someday. You don't really realize how close or how realistic that goal is. This uh, special occasion right now is, is even one step closer to, you know, maybe trying to play professional hockey someday. Back at camp, the elite squad has a chance to relax. Childhood friends James Damone and Eric Sonnenberg have made it this far, both still with white helmets. Let's go that chairlift. It's, uh, oh, it's running now. It wasn't running before. Eric and I, uh, right from the beginning of high school, were just, you know, the best of buddies. And um, I left as a 16-year-old to go play junior, and he left as a 17-year-old. It's, uh, we kind of, growing up, like, playing hockey, like, we both wanted the same thing, and it's nice to see, like, both of us advancing. <laughs> Is it supposed to be swinging like that? You know, I got to go to the NHL training camp with Ottawa, and, uh, you know, I've done a lot of things like that, and Eric hasn't really had the opportunity. And uh, it's really nice to see that somebody who works so hard can get, uh, get a chance like this and we get to enjoy it together. It's really, it's really special. Throughout the camp, James and Eric's strong play has kept them on the elite squad. The experience alone is, is amazing and it's something that you'll never forget. We just had an unbelievable experience together. It's something we'll probably share for the rest of our lives. Good extension when you're coming right out. Good extension of the arms. Good. Come right back. Eric Boucher was the surprise discovery of the Toronto tryout. Co-workers signed him up and he impressed the scouts with his competitiveness and speed. 
Management moved him from defense up to left wing, and he didn't miss a beat, continuing his strong play. Like all the 68 players here, Eric has a hockey dream, but if things don't work out, at least he has a day job to fall back on. Every kid eh, dreamed of being in, in the NHL and being an all-star, but when I was a teenager, I started thinking of being a policeman. So when uh, the University of Ottawa called me and uh, saying that they needed a defenseman, and I learned about their criminology program, I decided that it was uh, a branch that was closer to police work. Okay, well, don't stop. Keep going and make it pull you over somewhere else. Now we see uh, it is a worse place right now. Yeah, no. I oh, was a member of the Immigration and Passport Program in the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and uh, uh, that in involves uh, several different things. Uh, uh, our particular part of it is uh, the Immigration Task Force which is uh, the apprehension of high-risk fugitives in the Toronto area and in southern Ontario. He's got a history of violence here in Canada. Most of it's uh, domestic violence where he usually... Right when you get there and you're starting to plan how you're gonna do your takedown with all, all your team, the adrenaline starts. But when you get on scene and you know that it's going to happen, it's really intense. You're under arrest. You have a non-standing warrant. Come over here. You're under arrest. You're under arrest. So you have to analyze and real quick, like you saw today, you followed us. It took. 30 seconds to the arrest. Eric is fully aware of what our community is all about, that we are serving the Canadian public, that public safety is the number one component of what the RCMP is about. I can't say enough positive about the kid. He's the future of the RCMP. Matt Hubber has always been a goal scorer. As a junior with the Regina Pats, this smooth skating center from Winnipeg was a WHL All-Star. But things haven't always gone smoothly for Matt. In fact, he almost lost his hockey dream. Professional hockey has always been uh, something I'd you know, love to do uh, for a living. Uh, when I stepped on the ice for the first time at Red Wings camp, it was a real honor to be just on the ice with, uh, with that caliber of player. I took a pretty good wall from behind and ended up getting some stitches and wasn't feeling myself. And uh, after I got back to Regina's camp, I ended up getting a CAT scan and uh, that's where they discovered uh, abnormal growth in my sinus cavities. From the, the doctor's standpoint, they weren't really sure what exactly was going to happen or if I would ever be able to play again. Good news, Matt Hubber from uh, Winnipeg, playing for Regina Pats. Come through his operation, had a uh, tumor on the brain, and they come through, and it, I understand in Regina last night, they won 4-2, he got a standing ovation when they said uh, he'd come through. I was pretty pumped uh, watching the Hockey Night in Canada from my uh, hospital room. Uh, I really got my spirits up. From the moment uh, Dr. Galane came into the, into the room and uh, told me everything went well and I was gonna be fine, it was just a huge relief. I think that was one of my, you know, motivational things was, you know, get through this and the hockey's going to be waiting for me as soon as I'm, you know, healed up. Uh, I guess after going through that much adversity, uh, you really learn what type of person you are and uh, you realize whatever doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. Game time. The first of the final three games is about to begin. The locker room tension is palpable. These players have only three games left to realize their dream. Fire up here, boys. Get it ready, boys. First shift. Yeah. Team Gold features Eric Sonnenberg and Paul Denisette. Rugged black ace Dominic Perriard has been added to the defense. Scott Delavadova and Trevor Cunning will share the goaltending duties. Team Blue has returning forward Troy Kaler and Ryan Power. On defense is Drew Kivel with a new white helmet. Joel Martin will play the first half in goal, and then Michael Mole, the former black ace, will take over. 
Go, boys, big first shift. Big big first shift. Come on, boys, come on, boys. This is the first of three big games. Let's go, guys, right here. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Only 11 seconds into the game, number 37, Dominic Noel scores for Team Blue. A screenshot by Black Ace, number 24, Dominic Perriard catches the corner, and the score is tied. Get there, get there! With his head down, number 59, Ryan Power, cut to the middle, where Dominic Perriard was waiting. Head was down, good see that coming. There we go, Nick! Power is clearly in trouble. Head down. And head down. The defenseman had it was a good clean head. No, probably locked the knock the window. Yeah. Oh, I saw that coming. You see it coming from my way? Let's go, Blue. Come on, boys. How are we doing? Talk to us here. Better. Okay. Settling down. Just keep on breathing. Just keep on breathing. Okay. When we get to the split here, I'm gonna. That's Jim. Jim's gonna take over. Okay. Try to stand up right if you can. Here we go, Jim. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Okay. How does it feel to hit a guy like that and in a clean hit at that? Well, that's the thing. You know, it wasn't dirty. It was a clean hit. I had my shoulder in. Uh, you know, he never seen me coming. He had his head down. I mean. You know, you never want to hurt somebody too bad, but I mean, it wasn't dirty and he had his head down, so that's not my fault. While power is tended to, the game continues. Come on, boys. boys. Yeah. Corner. After some hard work in the corner by Eric Sonnenberg, number 41, Anders Strom, sneaks in and taps the puck into the empty net. It's another goal for a black right, ace. As Team Gold celebrates, Ryan Power is examined in the training room. Yeah, you know, he had his head down. We tried to scream from the bench, but I guess he couldn't hear us. And uh, I don't know, he looked, he looked pretty injured at the time. 19 other guys here wearing blue jerseys. You got to step up, and maybe six, uh, six guys in the blue line can maybe return the favor to one of their guys and uh, maybe put one of them out. It looks like he got hit pretty good, and I'm concerned there is if uh, he's done any damage with ribs or anything, or maybe punctured a lung. So let's hope the young man's okay. Players must put the power injury out of their minds. It's time for the second period. Oh, come on! Back Number 53, PC Drouin, cuts in front to score a backhander, and Team Gold goes up 3-1. to one. That's all right. We got pressure coming, they miss, and then it's two steps, three steps closer to, to getting it and turning it over and getting it out. Okay. Instead of running all over the place, just hold your ice. Okay. Good job, boys. Good job, boys. Good job, boys. Good job, boys. Wake up in here. Good job, boys. Good job, bud. Let's go, let's go.
Blue gets back within one when a shot from the blue line by number four, Michael Couch, is tipped in by number 50, Troy Kaler. I'll deal with the injury after the game. Right now it's just about winning. We gotta win. Nice play. Portier, he, he's, he got five one game. Yeah, Going all the way to Florida. Keep working here, Gold. They're improving, eh? Yeah. Wow. Oh, my goodness. During the second intermission, mentor Scotty Bowman visits both dressing rooms. I felt this camp, you're, um, obviously the passion was here before you, you wouldn't have even tried to come here, but there's a lot of intensity, uh, the work ethic, I don't think you can ask for any more. Some of you guys have, have had a big disappointment, maybe for yourself, but you reacted the right way and come back up. So I appreciate, they appreciate that effort. Thank you. First period, you got the early goal, 13 seconds in, they took over the game in the first period. But it's, it's a three period game. And you know, you're only, down, you're only down a goal and you've been pressing, I'd say the last 10, 15 minutes of that period. Okay? Thanks. The final period begins with Team Gold up by one. goalie Mike Honey He's, this guy I like huh? I like him today Look at this pace oh, they got that set out there I know oh yeah this is watch wire they're fighting for jobs Dennis hey Dennis that makes you get ready here Lou well, you're going right here hey wires hey they're tired they're tired I can't believe that, that RCMP oh, guy played in a house league last yeah. year. Go, 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 go! Run around, stay on the defensive side. Always out, always out. There's one, there's one! Hey. Lou Dickinson gets a breakaway, but Cunning makes the save of the game. Let's go, heads on a swivel here, fellas, let's go! Come on, put it in, put it in. Number 40, Bruno Lemire scores into the empty net. That should be game over. Tony, let's go. Tony, let's go. Come on, boys, stand with it. 40 seconds, let's go. Stay in sharp, stay in sharp. 60 minute game, boys. But 16 seconds after the empty netter, number 51, Jeremy Shane, breaks free and scores. Yet another black ace marksman. Not over yet. It's not over yet. Time. Blue is back within one goal. Do they have enough time to tie the game? Only seconds remain. One last chance for Team Blue to even the score. Win that, hubby! Win that, hubby! You got that, hubby! Great game. Team Gold hangs on for the 5-4 victory. Sure, guys. Sure. Yeah. Give me your top two or three guys that you think really played well today. I like the uh, defense pair, uh, Jordan Little and Kevin Lavalier. Thought they played really well together. Um, both of them, I, th I think Little's gotten better and better as this uh, week has gone on, and Kevin's been, I think, the most consistent player. Mike? Well, I think we're running into some of the same names. I thought Little today was, I thought, the best defenseman. I still like uh, Damone, James Damone. Uh, he looks like a pretty good player, big, mobile guy. You know, a guy who had a good game today that uh, you know has kind of been on the bubble for me the whole camp has been uh, PC Druin. I uh, can't deny that he had a real good game today. I thought uh, Trevor Cunning 
uh, was the best goalie out there today. Very steady, very confident goaltender. Had 14 shots today, eight of them were quality. Uh, I think he seems to be getting better every day out here. Uh, I thought Michael Mole again, had a real good game, didn't allow a goal. Uh, faced 20 shots, only had four quality shots, but still, all in all, uh, I thought he played well. Mr. Bowen. The two defense pairings with Little and Lavallee and Jacob and Perriar, I thought, were uh, were a little bit stronger. They, they, I noticed them a lot. Perriar, uh, he stands out, and Damon stood out for me as well as Jacob. Wires, he's an agitator for 188 pounds. He, he plays hard. I think in this camp they're so close that the last game has an effect on you. The best players are the ones that you don't have to worry what to expect. We are at the point where we're getting down to the short strokes. Um, I've surveyed our scouts, our evaluators, and these are the, name, the names they've presented to me in terms of the uh, cuts for today's session. Number 46, Dubois. There's a guy that, that has been out of the game for a while, got back in, and now he needs to be pushed. I think he's a little bit heavy. He's a guy that could very well attract some interest as an older player somewhere. He's more uh, into having a good time than having people respect him. In terms of commitment and maturity and self-discipline, for a 28-year-old, I think you've got a bit of a problem. Number 55, McConvey. No, he hasn't done much to turn to get me excited. Uh, I don't see a lot of upside here. Number nine, Boucher. You know, he's, he's a great, great story from a hockey point of view. His unit at the RCMP, they're the ones that register him. He, he's led the pack in lots of skill categories, fitness, everything else we want about him. But what we felt as a group is that he's just not producing. Good he's a good story, but he's not a good enough player. Good enough. Michael Couch, number four, the defense. Huge disappointment. But I think he deserves to be where he's going to. Yeah. He makes something that's simple, he tries to make it more difficult, and then on top of that, he does it casually. He maybe hasn't had the competition. Like, he's got a, he's got buy-in his skill. He could chip it by and not really have to make that effort. Number 43, Dennis. Uh, I don't see a lot of upside with him, so I, I'm not certainly I'm not going to make a case for him. Okay, Joe? He just sort of slid along. I've never really noticed him, and he hasn't done anything where I've said he's got to go. Um, I don't think he's been spectacular, and if I don't think he'll make the top 12. Maybe he's a kid that you know, can get a little fire, can get a little, you know, say, hey, you know, look, this is how close you are, and now you're starting to fade out. He's always been under the radar for me, and I'm, I'm trying to find something that I like about him, and I, and I can't find anything that I dislike, but it's now time. It's time to step up. As time grows short, the decisions are tougher, and the cuts are harder. I didn't have my, my best game out there. I played, I played good hockey, but uh, I, I know my limits. I know how I play, and there's some good players out there, and I'm not surprised. Not a person to, to look at it and say, oh, I've made top 24 out of how many. I, you know, I, I want to keep going. I think I could still play. And I'm a little down, but you know, what, what can I do at this point? I kind of picked it up right away in the first period when uh, they weren't putting me on the ice anymore. There's only a couple days left, so they got to start eliminating players pretty fast. It seems like almost everyone is going to go through it, whether they give them a pass or a cut eventually. You got to compete every day and try to win your job, and if you don't do that, you know, you're not part of that select group. Michael, you coming forward. Michael, uh, I think you've given us a great effort. I think your skating has cut up to us. At this point, we're going to have to go by you. You're cut. Thanks very much. And good luck. It's just another bump in the road. I got to go right instead of going left to, to realize my goals and my dreams. And you know, it's a long process. Nobody, you know, you don't just wake up overnight and become, you know, the world's best hockey player. Darcy? Darcy, you've given us a great effort. 
but we're going to go by you because of your size. You're cut. Thanks very much. You know, tell me I didn't compete hard. Tell me I didn't whatever, but I didn't, I never, that never factored into my head, but I guess maybe it should have, you know, you don't see too many five, nine and a half guys in the NHL. Robert. Center position is really deep. I appreciate your efforts, but you're cut. Thanks. It's been a good experience. Thank you. Thanks. To be picked to go to the National Hockey League, you know, as a 28-year-old, I knew for sure it was like way out of my league. But I mean, I'm a late bloomer, and if I get that chance to play and play a whole season, you know, I might get in better shape and then maybe work my way up later. Who knows? Paul. Forward. You've given it a good effort. We want to see better competition out of you tomorrow. You're on the bubble, but I'm going to give you a pass. We'll see you tomorrow. When I got the pass, uh, I mean, my first impression was just a huge sigh of relief. Um, but after, you know, thinking about a couple minutes after, I know it's it's a huge wake-up call, and tomorrow I got to come ready and uh, prepare to play my best game. Okay, Eric. Eric, you've done an outstanding job at this camp. You've been an incredible leader and contributor. You make me proud to be a Canadian. I'd love to keep you. But I'm sorry, you're cut. Thank you very much. I enjoy Thank every you. part of it. Appreciate that was a great experience for me. Thank you, Thank so you very much, much Mr. Keenan. Good luck. Every hockey player dreams, but I've always been realistic. I'm not uh, desperate because I, I got cut today. I mean, a dream, it stays a dream. It's the evening of day 11. In the war room, the evaluators are working late. Tonight, discussions focus on some of the Black Aces who've been playing with the elite squad. First of all, is there anybody out there in the Black Aces that we think deserves a chance to get back up? Yeah, I think Tessier played uh, pretty good. I think he, if anyone, he would be a guy I'd recommend. You know what, I, I, I agree, Joel, he did play well. But the bottom line is, is he going to fit in the top six forwards? I don't think so. I agree with Joe in some respects. Tessier, like, in some ways, he's head of some of the uh, black helmet centermen that we have, but, you know, your comment is true. Is he going to be in the top six? Probably not. You got that one guy for me. I don't know for some reason and why I like him that much is uh, Brad Woods. I think for some reason for a big guy, you know, he's got good hands and he got some good rush to the net. And, you know, I, I don't know. I don't. I think I would like to see him maybe promote. But it's surprising what he can do with the puck. And I, I like that. I like the fact he's 4 6 four. Excuse me. If you're looking for motivation, then Tessier is the guy who's going to motivate, not yeah. Woods. I can't go without mentioning, uh, you know, the hit today. And it was a good hit. And, uh, you know, Perry Art uh, scored a nice goal today. And, um, you know, he's been one of those guys that, uh, um, you know, we uh, early on had to make some decisions on him, and uh, as the camp's gone on, we've talked about him several times. So, have to talk about him today again in my books because he did have a, a very solid, uh, noticeable game today. Yeah, you know what, Jack? He, uh, he's uh, last couple of games here, he's been good, and he's been feisty, and he looks to me like a guy that if uh, he was allowed to get a little physical, he could do it, and. Uh, but that hit today it caught your attention, and it wasn't by accident. I think for two reasons it would be a great thing for this camp. One, you reward an individual who's continually improved. And two, you deliver a message to the rest of the group that we recognize this happened. Yeah. Yeah. 
The players have arrived at the rink. For one black ace, camp is about to change dramatically. Dominic? Yep. You had a great game yesterday. You've earned this. Thank Enjoy you. your game today. I was part of the first cut, you know, the first big one, Black Aces, and uh, I had no real expectation of going back in the white helmet, because realistically, you know, they cut like half of us after like a couple of days, but yeah, I kept working hard and, you know, working my ass off every practices and, I mean, pay off. Six periods left, they will not practice again, so... Uh... Uh, they have to show their stuff. We're down to the last two games, so it's all on the line for these guys. Uh, it's in their hands. Uh, they're the ones that are going to be making, uh, making the decisions for us. Jordan Little almost didn't make it this far. He's been on the bubble once already. I like his decisions on the ice. I like his ability to jump into the play. He does a lot of good things for me, and I think he's someone with uh, just some coaching and some time spent that could really develop. Jordan, today you have a pass. The way I'm going to prepare for the game, I'm going to be praying a lot, praying that I, you know, just can dig down deep and find, uh, you know, those energy levels that I need to, to play, play to my capabilities and uh, just, you know, go out there and enjoy, enjoy the situation I'm in. One, two, three, woo! Come on, boys. Hi, boys. Up front, Team Blue has Troy Kaler in his second game back from injury and black ace Dan Tessier. On defense, Jeff Brown hopes to continue his strong play. Michael Mole and Joel Martin share the goaltending duties. Team Gold has speedsters Matt Hubber and Bruno Lemire. The defense features Dominic Perriard making his debut as a white helmet. Goalies Trevor Cunning and Scott Della Vadova will split the game. There you go, boys. There you go, boys. Top scouts have arrived from the NHL, East Coast, and Central Hockey Leagues. The Oilers, Senators, Red Wings, Sharks, Avalanche, and Rangers are all in attendance to take a first hand look at the on ice talent. Early on, Daniel Jacob sets the tone with a nasty hit on Dan Tessier. That's it. That's it. Jacob, <laughs> head head. Every time. Guy in the head. Every time, every time. When he comes, when, when he goes up, you stick up in his face, Tess. <laughs> They're trying to hit each other now. Troy Kaler makes a statement by standing up to Dominic Perrier. It's starting to get edgier now. Yeah, they're tired, shorter temper. Yeah. Run! Oh, nice! Oh, keep going, keep going. Out of play, Lindsay! So he's been teaching him something. Pretty good back up again. Get right back up right away. Right around, right around, right around, right around. Boys, right away. Get her down. Big stop. That's that kind. Perriard is caught using his elbow in a continuing battle with Troy Kaler. Just rough, too. Je vais pas pogner sur la tête. He gets the white helmet. He keeps his gut. I can't hold this. After taking a beating all game, Troy Kaler gets his revenge as Gold's penalty trouble catches up to them. He bangs in the rebound from a point slap shot by Jeff Brown. He's playing a decent game on Brown today. The first period ends with Blue up 1-0. Oh boy, Mosey! 
Michael Mole has now racked up five consecutive periods without allowing a goal. How you guys feeling? All right? Yeah. Not tired? No. Well, let's wrap it up then. All right. All right. Oh, Period two starts with Blue holding a one-goal lead and Gold trying to overcome its penalty problems. I got first guy here. Let's keep it short. Pop, pop, pop! Forward! Woodsy! Oh, wow, nice play. How'd it go, Woodsy? The defenseman made that play. How do I, Woods? This kid's gotten better, Jack. Wake up! Go, Lab! Go in the goal! Yeah! 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 Left alone at the side of the net, Dan Tessier jumps on a rebound and slaps it home. And it's 2 nothing blue. 28. Nice work, boys. At the midpoint of the game, it's time to change goalies. Scott Della Vadova will be going in to replace Trevor Cunning. I mean, Mose, good job, buddy, good job. I'm already finished it off, buddy. And Joel Martin comes in to protect the shutout started by Michael Mole. Come on, speed. No, 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 no way. No way, easy, easy. Hey, back out. I want the goal to score a goal here. Discipline, boys. Discipline, boys. Here comes our here first Here we go, fight. here we go, here we go. Drop the gloves. Hit him! Who is it? Scott Jordan. That guy should be out of here, man. Take a hit! Take a hit like a big boy! Take a hit like a big boy! Who is it? Wilder Weir. Take him out. Big jump from Biden. Watch the class. Real tough. Take a hit. Where is he? Take a hit. Get him out of here. Yo, where is he? We let him drop his gloves. Where are you? The first fight of camp is a short one. And because of camp rules, Wilder Weir is banished from the game. Yeah, so do we want to kick that guy out because he didn't fight? Do you want to just check with them? Jonathan got jumped. Hey? Yes. He stays in. Robert stays in? Yeah. Robert stays in. Okay. Yeah, we got a two minute power play. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just go in the box. You know, sometimes it just takes like a big hit or a fight or a big goal to uh, get the team going again. And uh, I'm interested to see how the boys uh, react to it. And, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully you can uh, come back and uh, win this game. Well, he got his sweater over his head, so I would like to see them stand back and throw a few haymakers there and see demonstrate their pugilistic abilities. Two black aces combine as Dan Tessier wins a draw, and number 41, Anders Strom, slaps a shot past Della Vadova. Blue jumps out to a 3 0 lead. Go oh, the other way. Fuck out. Good job, good job. Yeah! yeah. Woo! Oh, man. Get him. All right, you got to get some power plays here. Got to get something going. Some hard work by Lou Dickinson, and a shot through a crowd beats Della Vadova. It's 4 nothing blue. Come on, boys. I don't want to kick you. I don't want to He's the second leading scorer in the, in the two weeks, Dickinson. Relax, boys. Good job, boys. Good job, boys. I got to get coffee. Yeah, I'm going to come. You want a coffee, Mike? No. I'll go for I'm going to get a coffee. Get a coffee. We're going to have to change some helmets here. The two black helmets scored two goals here. Right. So right. I don't know if anyone's keeping track. Hopefully they're watching, not drinking coffee up there. So, uh, you know. 
Hey boys, another quick one, another hard one. 20 miles, eh? 20 miles. As the teams file back on for the final 20 minutes, Gold must find a way to get back in the game. Yeah, Tessie! Boys. Job. Good job, boys. Lou Dickinson puts another nail in Gold's coffin, firing a quick shot five hole on Della Vadova. Number 54 from Mississauga. Yeah. Lou, sweet Lou. Sweet Lou. Brad Woods continues his impressive game as frustrations on ice mount. Come on. Thank you. Crunch. Hey! Hey! Gentlemen! Relax, Marty, get out of here. Okay, good job. Just hold there, Marty. Swing it at me five wax, for sake. Stupid. Look at the score he's whacking. Wheel, wheel, wheel. Easy. Watch up here, watch up here. In the dying seconds, Jeff Brown pulls down Francois Fortier. It's a calculated move by a veteran to help save the shutout for his goalies. Watch up high here, watch up high. Hey, you two! The game ends, and the two blue goalies, Joel Martin and Michael Mole, share the first shutout of camp. Hey. Anyway, we'll put it up in our stalls. That was the part. Put it up in our stalls. Yeah. <laughs> well, we could share it. <laughs> but man, I felt good today. I had to be the best goalie today. <laughs> Not to steal the limelight from you. But I had to be good anyway. I had to be good. Or I was going to get cut today. A tired goal team files off after a poor showing and a humiliating defeat. They know the evaluators are not accepting excuses. Some of these players will have to pay the price. I'd like to quickly go through who's your best player today, bar none, one guy. Like I thought Jeff Brown had a good day today. Jeff Brown was his best game, best game all, all week of the entire all camp. For the entire camp, no question. He's the guy that I went down to in Ottawa. I said, Jeff, what are you doing here? His comment was, you know, I came out of junior. I was, I had a higher opinion of myself than I should have. I ended up in the American League and got whacked. Ended up in Europe. Now I want to come back and play in the North America. I, I blew my chance. I needed the second chance, and here he is. Well, what's different about him is that he can focus where a lot of guys can't. So he's quite coachable. He, he'll listen, and he's actually working on trying to get his intensity up so he can do it every day. What he showed today is that he could be in the top six. Yeah. But let's not get carried away. He might not be there yet, but he played. that's his best game. Now talk, talk to me about your goaltenders. On today's performances, I, I believe that uh, I was impressed actually with Joel Martin having to go into the second half of the game after Michael Mole shutting them out. It's tough for going in that way. I thought Michael Mole, I ranked him today as the second best goalie today. He hasn't Again, been scored on in three days. Three games in a row, yeah, has not been scored on. Uh, was a black ace after the first couple of days, has built himself back up into the running here and is, has tremendous confidence. Uh, Trevor Cunnings, he is steadily impressed throughout the camp. He's moving up in your radar scale. He's moving he's up, he's very solid, he's a very confident guy out there. He makes big saves and battled hard. Today, Scott Della Vadova did not have a good game again for two games in a row. At the beginning of the camp, he looked outstanding. He, he does work hard, has a great attitude, but he is showing signs of some weaknesses. Thank you. All right, here are the names we put forth today for discussion. Number 34 is up for debate here, Ryan Grovity. I mean, we gave him the benefit of the doubt yesterday coming off an injury. The bottom line is, he's not physical. He is smart. He's got decent hands. Number 40, Bruno Lemire. 
The little guy. I like the way he competes. You know, he works extremely hard. I like the way he goes in front of the net. He get pushed around and he stick there. I, I like. Oh, I, I like, like him today. He, I mean, he worked. You know, I mean, I like him as a player. He made a great play yesterday. I think he's a good competitor. He's a good player, but is he a top six for us? Well, you know, you know what, Jack? Uh, between the blue lines, to me, plays really good. Uh, in the offensive zone, he has a tough time getting to the net. Number 53, PC Drouin. No problem with him? No, none with me. PC's done a good job here for me, right up till yeah. today. He's a 30 year old, he did well. The other guy that I want to talk about is uh, Little. Jordan Little. For me, uh, Jack, I thought he struggled today. You know, I thought his puck decision was not very good, and, you know, I don't know, he was tentative up there. He was, I didn't like him. Yesterday, he was, he was one of the best defensemen on the ice. You faltered a little bit today, yes. but uh, yesterday was very good. If you want to be a professional hockey player, you got to be consistent. In terms of my potential, I know I got a lot more in me than I've shown these last two days. The rest of the games I've played, played out to my potential and played well, and I haven't been in here for that. So, you know, my play suffers, and here I am. I think, uh, I think my second chance is might have run out. I think I played okay, nothing great, but it was one of those games where, you know, nothing was really working. Uh, the effort was there. Our line was, was working hard, trying to create stuff, but uh, you know, the end result just didn't come. The last couple of days, uh, just kind of fighting the puck. You can't uh, miss one step in this camp, and, uh, and you know, in my second game, I made a little progress, but uh, I think that uh, it wasn't good enough. I've had a great ride so far. I mean, top 20 at five foot five, I can, you, have, you have to have, have to be happy with that. I feel as a whole team, we played pretty poorly in a 5 nothing loss. Somebody's got to take the heat for that. Personally, I think there could, could be one or two other better choices of guys sitting here than me. I am disappointed. Uh, you know, this is my second time through this process. Uh, you know, I was lucky to get away scot-free the first time. I don't know if they give uh, second, second chances, but uh, we'll see. You had a great start. I thought you were very competitive to begin with, but your play has dropped off. You're cut. Good luck. Hey. I'm not going to make any excuses because, uh, you know, when you step on the ice, it's different situations for, for different goalies. And, uh, you know, one guy might have played well because he had. 10 shots, the other guy's 50 shots, but still, you know, it's uh, it's your stats. I did the same thing every day, day, day in, day out, and, uh, you know, you just get the bounces sometimes. PC? You've shown tremendous leadership skills, but unfortunately the competition here is too fierce. You're cut. Good luck. Definitely don't think I was one of the worst players on the ice today. I uh, don't really understand why I was cut, but I you know it's their decision. Uh, I'll live with it. Ryan, I've enjoyed your effort, but I'm afraid we've gone by your talent. You're cut. Thanks for the Good luck. Thanks. You're very well. You know, I didn't play any games last year. You know, to make it this far, it was a goal in itself. You know, I have a lot to be proud of. Uh, you know, my family and friends are all pulling for me back home. And, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's not over. Bruno. You've been a great competitor. I've loved your effort. But I'm afraid you're cut. Good luck. First time I got cut from something like in hockey. Like I always made the team I was trying for. You know, you can't go through life without 
having any downfalls. I'll go down in the black helmets and uh, try to do her best to get something out of it. Jordan. You had a great game yesterday. Your game dropped off today. But I'm going to give you another opportunity. I'll see you next game. Hey, thank you so much. Five of us, five black helmets, and I thought that uh, one of them was going to have my name on it. I don't know if many people have made it through their second time, so that's, a, that's an honor in itself, I guess. Day 14, the sun rises on the final day of camp. It's a big thing today, it's the only thing that's going on today, no workout, no nothing else, just a game, so I think the, the excitement's starting to build and I think everyone's starting to feel it. The camping nerves the last day. You're playing nervous, you're playing scared, and I never play scared. If you're playing this game and you aspire to be a pro, you got to perform under pressure, and so that's what this is about. I think the big difference today is I don't think it's only the game itself, but it's more the, the opportunities that could arise out of it. People are going to be uh, gunning for a couple of us out there only because we're targets with white helmets. There's a lot of scouts in the building and stuff, so there's a little bit of added pressure and a little bit of added nerves. you got to make an impression. You have a limited window of opportunity. And uh, if you're a goal scorer, you got to be scoring goals. If you're a tough guy, you got to play tough. If you're a defensive guy, you got to be hitting and finishing your checks. There's a lot of players who do fall through the cracks. And, uh, you know, if, if we can get one guy coming to play in the NHL from this type of thing, what a success. It's great. The no fight rule remains in effect. One fight means you're out of the game. But today is the last game. There's been a lot of uh, animosities built up and they want somebody to, to pay back for maybe a cheap shot or hit they received earlier in the camp and, and uh, a lot of players are like elephants, they never forget. It's mental toughness right now, you know, where you, uh, you have to be able to, uh, you know, go through all the distractions and the, the physical fatigue and the mental fatigue and just tell yourself to lay it on the line and, uh, you know, give it uh, your very best effort. The players are focused. They know that today's game will determine their fate. There will be a couple of black helmets that could surprise us all. They've been given that carrot. They've been told that they could very well get a white helmet awarded at the end of the day. The three-game final series is tied at one apiece. Both teams know that during camp, more cuts have been made from the losing side. So today, individual success may depend on team victory. Hit some bodies. Let's play a good solid game to finish her off. It's go time, bud. No excuses. The Team Blue lineup features playmaker Dominic Noel and agitating winger Troy Kaler. Jeff Brown and Jordan Little bring grit to the defense. Joel Martin will start in goal with Michael Mole finishing up. On Team Gold, Black Aces Francois Fortier and Anders Strom have a final chance to prove the critics wrong. Former combatants Dominic Perriard and James Damone will pair together on defense. Sharing goaltending duties, Trevor Cunning and Scott Della Vadova. They got some jump back in here, Mike. Yeah, they're, they're fresh today. They're fresh. Yeah. Come on, dog. Come on, dog. Come on, bud. Come on, Blue. Hey! Down. Dicky! Two on one. Two on one. Keep skating. Keep skating. Clear it. Good play. Oh, good oh, save. Good. Be ready. good hockey game. No goal. Big stop. Both ends. Puck moving hard in the head, fellas, hard in the head. Yeah! Boys, right away. 
James Damone fires a slap shot on Joel Martin. Black ace Andrew Strom pounces on the rebound. It's 1-0 for goal. Good job, Yellow. Move that puck, move that puck quickly. Oh, well, let's go, boys. Time, time. Catch him, Posey. Nice set up play right there. Yep. Huh? <laughs> Very nice. Big draw. Big draw. Feet, Whitey, feet. Let me see it. Oh. Oh. Try, good try. Go, go. He's right on him. Good thing. Right there. Hubbard's going. He's the only guy so far. He's going right here for a rough. Blue. No. It's about time, Hobbs, you got this. Keep sticking, hubby. Keep it up with that stick, hubby. You're gonna get your teeth knocked out, you little That call, he needs a stick in the face. Collar. Do it. 15. Get the puck in the net. Blue tries to capitalize on the Hubber penalty, but can't convert. When the penalty ends, Gold mounts an attack. Right there! Go for it! Hey, some numbers, gentlemen, numbers. Number 67, Francois Forche, fires a bullet past Joel Martin. His ninth goal of the camp. Gold jumps into the lead, 2-0. I just came in the zone and I saw the, the other player going in that, so I just shoot hard as I can and try to do my best. Like, my dream is to play in each so. With the clock winding down in period one, players start to take liberties. It doesn't take much to set off an explosion between Troy Kaler and James Damone. Hey, hey, I know you like playing tough, but watch the fing cross the back. By the way, gentlemen, come on. They're on you. Nobody has a puck. Oh, run me, come, come, Brian, run me, run me. I'll run it. 50 for Blue. He's a tough kid. It's tough. A spirit at first period ends with gold ahead, 2 0. Yeah, the first period is very, very intense. There's lots of hitting out there, and uh, uh, you know, it's been interesting. Forche's goal, nice goal, top shelf. Um, you know, big blast down the wing. So he's, uh, you know, he's making a bid in my mind to, uh, to come back. Keep them back on their heels, guys. Keep dumping it in their zone and press their heat. They give you five bucks for that helmet, white helmet. <laughs> There's a lot of different guys that for different reasons are causing me to, to go back and, and maybe take a second look and just to make sure that uh, the decisions that we're making are the right ones. The teams return for the second period with Blue down two goals. Pressure, pressure, Bruce, pressure! Bounces off the ice. Try! One, one! Oh, it's a penalty! Oh, good call, good call. Troy Kaler takes a tripping penalty, and Gold gets another chance to increase its lead. Instruction trip. Here we go, boys. Here we go, Gold. Here we go, Gold. Get on! Oh, oh, that hurt. I hate that when that happens. Hurt him. Too much stick checking. Too much stick checking. Jump, Dandy. Good job, Dandy. Jordan Little and Alexander Dandino mix it up at the blue line, and both are sent to the box. Stop ducking. Take the hit. Second, man. Hey, Dandy, why do I keep reaching for the Hey, buddy, you're 
fucking bigger than I am. Take the fucking hit. Take the hit, man. It's a third fucking pine, you duck on. Hey, I don't say all. Gonna injure somebody on the ice. I'm gonna reach for a puck. Buddy, you keep taking a fucking knee. Stand up. I didn't even see you coming there, man. I wouldn't do that to you. Amir Fortune Strong. Oh, high stick! High stick! Hold up. Diving for the puck, Lou Dickinson clips Brad Woods, but Woods shakes it off. Oh boy, Woodsy! He may have not have the talent, but he's he could be a good guy to have on your team. He's bleeding. Tough kid. Pressured in his own end, Jeff Brown misses his defensive assignment, and Team Gold almost capitalizes. Heads up, heads up, heads up. Jeff Brown is a classic example of why scouts get fired. Goodbye, Goulet. Holding. Terrible. With number 15, Jason Goulet, in the box for holding, Team Gold has a chance to pad its lead. You're in, you're in, Danny, you're in, Danny! <laughs> With seconds ticking down, Alexander Dandino makes a neat move at the side of the net, but Michael Mole shuts the door. No, no, no! Good period. The second period ends with no scoring and Blues still down two goals. All over us. All, the all over us. Doesn't matter if you're a white helmet, black helmet. We need everyone on this team. I think we're down five nothing. We're we playing. Half of you guys get cut if we lose. We have to score three goals. So you guys are you going for the shadow today? Obviously. Oh, don't oh. say the freaking word. Oh. Really? Oh, you did not just say that. You can't say shut out during a game. It's ruined. It's just a jinx. It's uh, the biggest thing in hockey. It's one of those things that announcers say, and the next thing you know, it's a goal. And I guess scored on. It's your fault. You can tell Keenan that too. Come on. Last time we're all gonna play together, boys. Think about that. Let's go out with some pride. That. Yeah. Come on, boys. Let's go. Stick down, though. Yeah! Yeah! Well, there's a big one. Early in the period, the shutout jinx strikes. Dominic Noel scores from a faceoff, and Blue is back in the game. That's all right, that's all right, boys. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Stick so. I got far. Find him, find him. Watch out. I have lows on. Be aware, be aware. Yes, yes. George and Jekla. What can I say? We got a game now. We got a game. Gold fails to clear the zone, and a perfect pass from Ryan Lazan sets up George Zajenkola. He buries it to tie the game 2-2. Hello, boy, George Hill. Hello, Georgie. We got ourselves a hockey game here, ladies and gentlemen. No. The Kaler Demone hostilities continue in front of the net. Down in front. Down in front. Come on, go. Hey, we're done. That's a battle. Good job. Oh, game. On his way back to the bench, Kaler continues to stir the pot, taunting Darcy McConvey. Oh no, you're cut though, Darcy. Where are you at? Black helmet, buddy. Black helmet. Hit me when I'm looking, Darcy. I'll f***ing tune you. Wow, nice mouth. Battle, boys. We're pucks free. Back, top, back. Walk, walk, walk. 
Right up, right up, right up, right up! Watch it, watch it! Oh, oh. 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 Take left, left. Door two. Oh. 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 Let's go, let's go, let's go. No way, you nailed him right in. You nailed him right into him. Hey, gents. Hey, we battle tough. Tell the whistle, then we go. Keep moving, Kyle. Feels good. Like the refs are here. Oh, Jesus. Sharpen those sights on the guns, boys. Boys, boys, one or two shifts left, eh? Come on. Come on, Blue. Everything you've got, Blue. Let's finish. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Five on, seconds. <laughs> the pressure continues as the final game of training camp ends in a tie. Next up, five minutes of sudden death overtime. Your sole priority is to stay in that shooting line. Okay? Lou, you stay in front. You be strong there. But if they're going to gain control, don't spread out the diamond. Okay? Don't spread out the diamond. All right? Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Here we go, boys. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. This way. This way. Overtime starts and finishes with both teams pressing unsuccessfully for the winning goal. Let's go. Quincy, go left. Loose. Nine, 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 five. Shoot, shoot! Now the game and the camp will finish with one of hockey's most exciting moments, the shootout. The teams will each call on their top five snipers, and one by one, they'll shoot for victory. Players in the game, hot players, cold players, simple as that. Okay, wait till the whistle, wait till the whistle. First up, Dominic Noel, the second leading scorer in camp, facing Scott Della Vadova. Connor. Gold's first shooter, Eric Sonnenberg, facing Michael Mole. Oh, go steady! Mark, let's go with you guys. Next up for Blue is Mark Wires. Scott Delavadova outweights Wires to make the save. No score yet. Paul Denisset is next for Gold. Coach Elaine Vigneault chooses black ace Dan Tessier All as back. shooter number three. Tessier, he's done this before. He has to score here. Represent the black ace, the VA. Here we go, Tessier! High glove side. Bing. That's right! Time after time, Mole and Della Vadova stand tall. The shooters just can't put the puck past Mole and Della Vadova. Coach Greg Gilbert counters with another black ace, Peter Hayes. Still no scoring. Shooter number four for Blue, Lou Dickinson. This guy's good. I think this is going in. A nice fake takes Della Vadova down, but Dickinson can't convert. No, no, no. Ran out of real estate. Philippe Chouanier is next for gold. Chouanier. Chouanier goes short side, but Mole comes up big again. It's down to the last two shooters. For blue, black ace George Zajenkola. Porch. The pressure is squarely on Michael Mole as the final shooter lines up. It's another black ace, Francois Forche, the top scorer in camp. Forche has got a chance to win it all. Forche is going to win it. Forche, ball going. Hit Still no score. Now it's sudden death. Next unanswered goal wins. Here's the guy right there. He's just getting ready now. 52. Gold up first. Coach Gilbert goes with Matt Hubbard. Vigneault oh. chooses black ace Dominic Levier. Oh, 
Oh, shoot right now. I gotta open that. He's got it. He's scoring. He's scoring. A quick fake and a backhand, and the shootout is over. Team Blue wins the final game of camp. I have a lot of respect for you, yeah. towards You're an awesome player, buddy. Victory is sweet, but it's a common goal that has brought all these players together for the experience of a lifetime. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now comes the most difficult moment for Jack Birch and the evaluators. One last war room to choose 17 players for the final draft. Their decisions will affect futures and change lives forever. Pretty good game. Pretty good game. 2-2, two, two, six shooters before we determined it. Well, the kids had a great time after the game and they are celebrating. That's what it's all about. Okay, what? Just to set us straight here, we now have 13 players that we've agreed upon, and those names were guys that we were comfortable with going into this game that we thought would survive into the top 17. What I'd like to do now is to go with these guys that we're unsure of, and we're now looking for four players, regardless of position. Brown's out of there, isn't he? Not yet, not necessarily. Not yet. The only thing they have, we haven't done yet is close the casket. In your opinion, Yesterday he was outstanding. Today we noticed a couple times where he should have moved the puck sooner, but I wouldn't say he was brutal today. I would just say he wasn't as good as yesterday. I totally disagree. I think he was brutal today. He had one good day the whole time. He should have been, from his experience, a top player every day. Yeah. Well said, Mike. And I absolutely agree with it, but if we can sit here one day and say he was the best player on the ice, the best player of all He should have been the best player on the ice every day. On his biggest game in, that we have here today. He, I, I, you know what, I, I have, you know, just because Joe and Mike say no, that he no, played no. brutal, I don't think he played brutal. Like I saw some kids out there today that were like bleeding out there, that were laying, laying down, doing different things that they had to do. Like they legitimately looked like they wanted to make the cut. Maybe not as much as the skill set, as much as this kid has, but if I'm going to stick my neck out and send a guy, I want to make sure that he's going to put out every single night. He might not be the best guy skill-wise, but he's going to put out every single night. If we can speak to one thing, if you don't mind, Jack, yeah. is, is that you've got two 25-year-olds up there. But, but here's my point. Here's my point, and I, I That's why we're here, to make our points. Yeah, I absolutely agree with what you're saying. We all have this idea in our mind that 25, he should be doing this. At 23, he could be doing this. At 21, he could be doing that. We've got that around. I think it's been all voiced. But at the same time, we have, or we see, lots of players around the National Hockey League at age 35 that are making millions of dollars. Which is a change. That may uh, not be as good as these guys. And looking with what's left here, you know, you're looking at, and to get it to 17, you know, we look at the forwards here that are out there. Forche and uh, Keller, 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 Keller. Strom, Dennis said, I, I would probably lean towards Forche. You know, I, I'm, I'm really torn because, you know, I was a guy who was pretty down on Forche throughout the camp and he came back and... Uh, he was not consistent, but he can score goals. He got five in one game. I look at those four guys that we talk about here, he's my last pick. First of all, his skating is not very good. 
Luke Robitaille couldn't skate that well either, and he scored 500 plus goals in the NHL. Troy Caller, we didn't get as much viewing time with him as we would have liked this week, simply because he got the injury. He was good today. You know what? He's a guy who gets under people's skins. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I couldn't believe like nobody, nobody Turn tried to hit him. Oh, it was amazing. He's a really high energy guy, and I like him for that. Okay, so he's he's in the vote. Kevil. I like Kimmel. I uh, he uh, gain is not as much ability as you'd like, but by Jesus, I'll tell you what, he's hard to play against. He's in your face. Is that um, like by Tunder and Jesus? By Tunder and Jesus. <laughs> what? And you see a guy, he's 23 years old, never really maybe have some great, you know, good coaching. I'm talking about spending times with a kid every day on the ice. If you take this guy, I don't want to go back to Jeff Brown, but I take this guy ahead and maybe I got a shot to, have, to make a hockey player here. Is he going to be part of your top four? I doubt in my mind, but but let, we can leave him there. We can leave him there and vote him. Some guys might like him better than me. Under Strom. I like him. You miss him, and then in some games he really performs well. I thought today, for a big game, he did very well. I mean, you, you already see him, but he's always around. He's always around the net. He's always moving the puck. I think his hockey sense is great. The last three, four days, this kid was one of the best players on the ice for me. The guy you have to have on the wall. I'd say Maul. Maul. I like Keller. I say Cunning. Brad Woods. Me? Maul. I give my vote to Woods. Let's take Forte and Dennis set off. Can, can we, just to go back to the point, can we take off the fellow that led the two weeks in scoring? Okay, let's take the vote. Maybe it will resolve itself here if we get you guys to vote it. These are tough votes. These are going to impact their lives forever. So let's make sure we do a lot of thinking here. There are no more second chances. This will be the end of the dream for some, for others, another step toward the final six top spots. I want to be chosen to one of the top six. I want that chance to get my shot. That's the ultimate dream for any, guy, any person that plays hockey. That just the chance to stand in front of 20,000 screaming people and play the game you've done all your life. It's unreal. Everyone's goal is to be one of the final six. Unless I'm one of the final six, I don't think I would ever be completely satisfied. Well, I believe that I'm going to make it. I've never seen myself doing anything else than playing hockey, and I'm not going to give that up for anything. I realized, you know, how close, you know, things can be and what kind of potential I have. Now, for whatever reason, I'm not playing in the NHL right now. I'm, I'm getting my shot again. I'm taking it back. The moment of truth has arrived. The 40 players who participated in today's game have gathered to find out who has made the final cut of camp. These are the players who will contend for the ultimate prize, six NHL tryouts. Gentlemen, it's been a remarkable training camp. You have all impressed us. You all deserve to be congratulated. Only 17 were scheduled to make this cut, but after the talent and heart you showed us today, we changed our minds. 18 of you will be attending our final draft. And from that 18, Six will be drafted to attend NHL training camps. If we call your name, come forward. Congratulations, you have made the cut. Number 52, Matt Hubbard. Number 
number 16, Jordan Little. When I got called up, I just had a, had a huge smile on my face. <laughs> I was pretty proud of myself, and uh, I can't really hide my emotion that well. Number five, Jonathan Robert. Number 58, Eric Sonnenberg. And the player that wore a black helmet today, number 10, Brad Woods. I've been a black helmet for the last week. I didn't really think a whole lot was going to come out of it. And when I finally heard my name called, it was, uh, it was pretty exciting, and it was, it was good to get rid of that black helmet. Number 54, Lou Dickinson. Can't get a smile off my face. I'm just, uh, it's incredible, because, you know, I give everything I had. I'm going to keep working hard until I get a shot at the NHL. Number 37, Dominic Noel. Number 38, Ryan Lazon. Number 32, Trevor Cunning. It's the biggest thing that's probably ever, ever happened to me. Honest, uh, I'm speechless right now. I can't put a sentence together. Number 24, Dominic Harriard. Ten have been selected. Just eight spots are left. Number 18, Drew Kibble. It was pretty, pretty thrilling just to have my name called, my number called, and skate up there and stand with the rest of the boys and, and uh, be recognized for the hard work I, I put into this training camp. Number 22, James Damone. I just feel proud of what I've accomplished here because it was a lot of work and a lot of commitment and sacrifice for it. Number 47, Philip Schwiner. When my name was called, it was uh, kind of a mixed emotions. Obviously a little bit of happiness, joy, but also some relief. Wow, you know, I'm, I'm through for the next round. Number three, Kevin Lavallee. And also from the Black Aces today, number 41, Anders Strom. I knew as a black helmet it was going to be a little bit of a tougher road and uh, chances were a little less, but it worked out well and I'm really happy the way it turned out. Three spots remain. Number two, Daniel Jacob. Number 20, Michael Moll. It was a long two weeks and uh, kind of up and down roller coaster. I started off high and then I was kind of sent down to the Black Aces and I worked my way back up to the white. And uh, here I am two weeks later in the spot that I wanted to be in right from day one. One final name will be called. Number 61, Mark Weirs.
gentlemen, I look forward to seeing you at the draft. Congratulations on making the cut. Good job. Congratulations to you. Really. Congratulations. Super camp. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mississauga, Ontario, and the finale of Making the Cut, presented by Bell. Hi, gentlemen. I want to welcome you to the Hershey Center. You should be proud of yourselves. You've been through a lot to get here, and tonight, that effort's going to culminate in six of you being selected to each of the six Canadian teams. Tonight, we're going to take part in a skills competition. I want you to go out and have some fun. But at the same time, it will give you the opportunity to make your last impression. Congratulations on making the cut, guys. Enjoy yourselves tonight. Thank you. Yeah, boys. Please welcome our 18 finalists, the Bell Making the Cut All-Stars, Daniel Jacob, Kevin Lavely, Jonathan Robert, Brad Woods, Jordan Little, Drew Kibble, Michael Mole, James Damone, Dominic Perriard, Trevor Cunning, Dominic Noel, Ryan Lazon, Anders Strome, Philippe Chaunier, Matt Hubbard, Lou Dickinson, Eric Sonnenberg, Mark Wires. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Hershey Center in Mississauga, Ontario. A wonderful venue for the Making the Cut first ever draft. Scott Oak along with Kelly Rudy. Kelly, tonight the lives of six players will change when they're drafted by Canadian NHL teams. What do you make of the opportunity? Well, Scott, these are players that have fallen through the cracks in the systems. They're given a second chance in Vern. For the most part, they've taken advantage of it. In fact, Scott, 25 of the 68 players have signed pro contracts. They're playing North America and in Europe. As well, 30 players are playing university hockey. Well, the first order of business tonight is to establish the order in which the teams will draft the players, and we'll do that through a lottery. So who will have the number one pick? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to introduce you now to three gentlemen who have had a huge impact on the lives and careers of the men who are trying out for the final cut in Bell making the cut. Please show your appreciation for the winningest coach in NHL history, a member of the Hockey Hall of Fame, Mr. Scotty Bowman. This man has been behind an NHL bench for over 1,200 games. He won the Stanley Cup in 1994 with the New York Rangers, Mike Keenan. This man is not afraid to make a call or a cut, Jack Burtz. Jack? Also making decisions tonight are representatives of our six NHL teams from Canada. Representing the Edmonton Oilers, the Vice President of Hockey Operations, Kevin Prendergast. From the Montreal Canadiens, a member of Hockey's Hall of Fame, General Manager Bob Gainey. This man led the Calgary Flames to within a whisker of the Stanley Cup, Coach and General Manager Daryl Sutter. The Vice President, Assistant GM of the Vancouver Canucks, he also helped manage Canada to a gold medal victory in Salt Lake City, Steve Tambellini. The General Manager of the Ottawa Senators who coached the Edmonton Oilers to the Stanley Cup, John Muckler. And from the Toronto Maple Leafs, the General Manager, John Ferguson, along with Mike Penny. Gentlemen, here's how it works. Beside me on the table are six hockey pucks. Underneath each is a number, one to six. This is a lottery, and we will conduct it this way to determine your order in the draft. The team which had the fewest points in the last regular season of the National Hockey League will choose first. 
That means with 89 points, the Edmonton Oilers and Kevin Prendergast, go ahead, choose your puck. And then, Kevin, you got to show it to me. Number one, the Oilers will pick first. Bob Gainey and the Canadians will go fifth in the draft here at the Hershey Center. Daryl Sutter and the Flames will choose number four. Number two for the Canucks in the draft. Number three for the Sens. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it seems official, but let's make it official. John Ferguson, choose that last puck. Show us what it is. Number six for the Leafs in the draft tonight. In a moment, the players will start to warm up behind us. Right now, we'll take a moment for a closer look at some of the players who got through to the Elite 18. Meet our first group of Making the Cut All-Stars. Jordan Little, hi to Carmen Pentecostal and the Dredger family in BC. Jordan Little started camp strongly. I think this guy's a real diamond in the rough. But after a few days, a series of injuries made evaluators wonder about his conditioning. Fitness to us is another skill. Oh! We should find out what this fitness level thing is all about. Each time, Jordan took the warning to heart and stepped up his play. I want to keep working hard, see what that hard work can bring me. Kevin Lavallee, I just want to say hi to all my friends and family watching. Three seasons of pro hockey in Europe made Kevin Lavallee one of the most experienced players at camp. Living on my own in Germany uh, makes you a much more mature person. When you mature off ice, you can bring that on the ice. On the line, on the line. Kevin's been, I think, the most consistent player. I'd stick with yeah. you. Really grateful that they chose me. Mark Wires, I'd like to say hi to my family and all my buddies here in Toronto. Mark Wires was a late addition to the list, getting the call only two days before camp. Can you still come? And I was just kind of like, all right, here we go. His energy, both on and off the ice, won him a lot of respect. <sighs> As did his shot, which was one of the quickest and most accurate in camp. Oh, yeah. Mark Wires is the long shot story of camp, from walk-on to one of the elite 18. Lou Dickinson, just want to say hi to my buddies, Matt and David Tom. In 2000, Lou Dickinson was selected in the NHL draft. But Lou was never signed to a contract. He freely admits he wasn't ready then to take the step to the next level. I thought, you know, hockey maybe owes me a chance to play. You know, the hockey doesn't owe anybody anything. I feel that I missed the first opportunity, and I don't want to miss a second one. Dominic Noel, Lamech, New Brunswick. Just want to say hi to my friends back home. Dominic Noel showed up at the Making the Cut camp fit and ready to make a big impact. I'm here on business. Oh, 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 we got it anyway. With five goals and a camp leading six assists, Dominic's 11 points made him the second leading scorer at Making the Cut. When I step on the ice, there's uh, nowhere else I'd like to be. I, that's what I look forward to every day. Ryan Lozon, hello to Adam and Lindsay and Thompson. Ryan Lozon showed up at camp with a reputation as a goal scorer. However, he was slow out of the gate. Is it motivation? Somewhere down the line, you got to kind of rattle his chain a little bit. From that point on, evaluators began to see his great hockey sense. Looks like he's a hockey player. I've always had the dream of playing in the National Hockey League. It's the best game in the world. Here is Lou Dickinson, who began his junior career here in Mississauga. He was drafted by the Edmonton Oilers, not signed. Now he has another chance. Lou, what is the statement you want to make about your career tonight? I just want to show that uh, I've improved a lot since I was a, at a younger age, and uh, I just want to show what I've been doing all along for the last uh, few months. So I'm just going to come out here and get everything I got. Lou Dickinson will go seventh in this drill. It's uh, shooting accuracy. 18 seconds for this challenge. The player gets a total of eight pucks, four from each side of the net, passed in this case by Drew Kivel and Brad Woods. Dominic Noel is the first shooter in his third year with the Dalhousie Tigers. Once had 105 points with the Cape Breton Screaming Eagles. 67 goals that season, so we know he can pick his spots. Broke the first target on his first shot. Struggled with that puck, but still broke the target. He's got two so far. Dominic Noel goes two for eight. Pardon me, three for eight. Now here's Ryan Lazan from Halifax, won the Memorial Cup with Hull in 1997, scored 
20 goals in the East Coast League two years ago, currently playing for St. Mary's University in his hometown. Dominic Noel just went three for eight. We'll see now what Ryan Lazan can do. Well, he moved the lower target, but I'm not sure if it's going to count. Gets the top one. Bit of a struggle for Ryan Lazan. He broke one. They're giving him two, though, because he moved that lower target. So two for eight for Ryan Lazan. Jeremy Roenick uh, won this drill in the skills competition. Minneapolis St. Paul last February going four for four. Some great players, though, have uh, struggled a bit in this drill. Mark Messier, for example, went two for eight last year. This is Andrew Strom, one of two players to make the Elite 18 while wearing a black helmet. Oh, he's got three so far and four! Andrew Strom! last four games at camp in Vernon and with the Lovett Cotton Kings in the Central League he was CHL Rookie of the Year last year. This is Philippe Chonier wore a white helmet throughout the entire camp and he's off to a good start in the shooting accuracy drill. He has three already Scott going for the last one there it is. Philippe Chonier gets four targets all right, next up is Matt Hubbard, one of the most intriguing stories in camp, how he came back from delicate surgery to remove a sinus tumor. It's been well noted. It was very impressive throughout camp. Impressive enough that he's on a tryout contract with the St. John's Leafs of the NHL. He's broken two targets to this point. Hit the post on his final shot, so Matt Hubbard goes two for eight. Good try, Matt. Well, it's uh, interesting you bring up Ray Bork's name because this drill used to be his exclusive domain. He won it nine times in the NHL skills competition. We just saw those some NHL caliber accuracy from Anders Strom, who continues to lead, having gone four for four. Here's Lou Dickinson now, probably the flashiest player in Vernon, finished with 10 points there in nine games. He's got two targets. The last puck goes. Breaks three, but he'll get four because he moved that one in the upper corner. Eric Sonnenberg prepares. He's from Wetaskiwin with Texas of the East Coast League right now. Sprained his ankle in the third game of the season. This is the only drill he'll be competing in tonight because of that injury. And that has to affect him, Scott, in setting up, doing a great job. Strom, four for four. Philippe Chonier, four for seven. He's in second place right now. He's got two targets. That pass. Went awry, and so Sonnenberg will finish two for eight. This is Mark Wires, the surprise of the Vernon camp, given he was a last-minute addition. He's off to a good start. Two for two, three for three. Can he beat Strom, or at least tie him? Can't beat him, of course, because Strom went four for four. Mark Wires nicks that target. For Andrew Strom, who goes four for four to win this competition. In second place, Mark Wires, and in third place, Philippe Chonier. Now let's meet two more players who made the Elite 18 from the same town in Alberta. Eric Sonnenberg with Tascan, Alberta. I just want to say hi to the family watching back home. Lanky center iceman Eric Sonnenberg made the cut in Calgary, where he attended the tryout with best friend James Dumont. Keep going, keep going, puck possession. Eric made noise on the bench, but he was loudest on the ice with sharp passing and smart play. I think he's been effective every game. Uh, one of the biggest things in hockey that I've ever been involved in, so it's pretty exciting. James Dumont, I want to say hi to Bonnie, George, Judy, and everyone back home. Since his draft year in 2000, James Damone has matured, adding both size and skill. Uh, this whole thing means so much to me just because I'm getting a second chance. He is the biggest player in the Elite 18. 6'6", 235, 22 years old, those are a good combination for me. You know, for whatever reason, I'm getting my shot again. I'm taking it back. Brad Woods, Cambridge, Ontario. Just want to say hi to the boys in Freddie Beach. The road to the top 18 was not an easy one for Brad Woods. Brad Woods skating to me is the issue. After nine days on the elite squad, Brad was cut. I'm not going to give up. During the last few games, he caught the eye of the evaluators. Yeah, yeah. Just like the way he competes and take this guy ahead and maybe I got a shot to, have, to make a hockey player here. On the final day of camp, still wearing his black helmet, Brad was selected as one of the top 18. There's so many guys competing for so few spots and it uh, feels really good. Then Nick Bayal. Happy holidays to all my family. In the early days of camp, Dominic Perriard failed to stand out and was given a black helmet. He got like half of us after like a couple days, but yeah, I kept working hard. His hard work paid off with two standout games. Yeah! 
His devastating hit on Ryan Power did not go unnoticed. That hit today caught your attention and it wasn't by accident. Impressed by Dominic's continuous improvement, management handed back his white helmet. And Dominic received another award on the final day. He was selected one of the elite 18. Drew Kibble, just want to say hi to friends and family watching at home tonight. In Vernon, Drew Kibble used his 220 pound frame to advantage. He's hard to play against, he's in your face. I like Kibble. You know, I just play a hard game and if guys want to take me on, then that's their problem. On day nine, Drew received a black helmet. But even a black helmet did not deter him. I'm not going to roll over and die. And after a strong game against the elite squad, he was given back his white helmet. I'm proud of your development, your performance. I've never seen myself doing anything else than playing hockey. Daniel Jacob, I would like to say hi to my buddies watching in Montreal. It was during the final tryout in Montreal, the scouts discovered Daniel Jacob. I learned how to play the game when I was uh, 17, so it's quite old to, uh, to start. I think he's got an upside to come yet. He added to his credentials by winning the hardest shot competition with a blast of 96 miles per hour. I'll make it. I'll surprise everybody. <laughs> Keep in mind, most NHL players typically are in about the mid to high 90s when they shoot. I'm really expecting a lot of these guys as well to be in the 90s. Daniel Jacob up first and his first shot, 93.2 miles per hour. By the way, this is slightly different than the way the drill is conducted in the NHL. Uh, there are two rounds of shooting here. Each shooter goes once, and then in the second round, they'll go in reverse order from the strongest shot down to the weakest. Kevin Lavely now, and he is 91.2 miles per hour. Typically, the lower shots in the net register a little bit higher. We're a little bit unsure of why the higher shots don't seem to register as high, but it's always been the history. Jonathan Robert and his first shot does not break 90, 89.4. You can show your appreciation. Brad Woods, 92.4. So Woods at 92.4 in second place right now, behind Daniel Jacob, whose first shot was 93.2. Jordan Little, 94.8. There's the new leader. That's a big man with a lot of momentum behind that shot. Notice Drew Kibble taking probably the fewest strides before shooting a puck. We'll see how it affects a shot. Hit the post and uh, is 85.6 miles per hour. James Damone now steps into that one and breaks the 90 mile per hour mark, 90.9. James at six foot six, there's a lot of power behind that shot. Dominic Perriard's next, he played his way back to the White Helmet squad. In the Vernon camp and he makes 94.5 miles per hour. Now Drew Kibble then with the weakest shot in the first round goes first in the second. Standing rather close to the puck, let's see if he has a better effort. Looks cool. A lot of camera time. Almost at 90 miles per hour, 89.8 for Drew Kibble on his second shot. All right, here is Jonathan Robert, 89.4 in the first round. 88.4 in the second. James Damone of Atasca in Alberta got into that one and it's uh, almost 91, 90.8 miles per hour. Here's Kevin Lavely now, just confirming that he is next to go. And his first shot registered at 91.2. 94.6. Biggest threat yet to Jordan Little's shot. He's in second place right now. Little hangs on to the lead. 94.6 for Kevin Lavely. Brad Woods now. Woods was 92.4 in the first round, 91.1, so a bit slower in the second round. Daniel Jacob, 93.2. He was third after the first round. But won the competition in Vernon at 96 miles an hour. 95.7. Almost broke the 96 mile per hour shot that won it for him. Kelly, you're right training camp in Vernon and the new leader is Daniel Jacob. Dominic Perriard now. 96.4. Wow. Nice job by Dominic Perriard. Perriard leading at 96.4 as Daniel Jacob was 95.7.
So the new leader is Dominic Perriard. And Jordan Little nails that one, 96.8. Final shot, and that'll do it. Jordan Little wins it. When we come back to the Making the Cut draft, it's all about speed, the fastest skater competition. Andrew Stroman, I want to say hi to all my family and friends watching tonight. Andrew Strome came to camp with high expectations. But he didn't get off to a good start. On day four, he received a black helmet in the first mass cut. Despite the setback, Anders had confidence in his abilities. I'm going to be up there before this thing's over, and uh, that's my goal. His hard work grabbed the attention of evaluators. I'd stick with this guy. Anders' persistence paid off as he became one of only two black aces to be chosen in the top 18. The odds were a little against me being a black helmet, but uh, I felt in my heart that I deserved to be there. Philippe Chouanier, Danam Quebec. I hope everyone is enjoying the show. <laughs> Philippe Chouanier showed up at camp with a smile and an unbeatable workout. I have fun. I'm being energetic. That's that's who I am. I always keep in a, a positive attitude. That's me. His quickness and tenacity made him one of training camp's best four checkers. I like the grit he displays and his enthusiasm. And I wouldn't be who I am and where I am if I didn't have hockey in my life. I played simply because I love it. Matt Hubber, I'd just like to say hi to my friends and family back in Winnipeg and my girlfriend, Lindsay. Matt Hubauer came out of the Winnipeg tryouts as the top-rated player. As long as you believe in yourself and end up doing what you want to do. At camp, Matt used his exceptional skating ability and fitness to catch the eye of the evaluators. Awesome shot. 52 just got that. It's a great honor just to be a part of the last group and you want to be one of the final six. That's why everyone came. <laughs> So our next skills test is the fastest skater. It's a pretty simple event. One lap of the ice surface here at the Hershey Center, and it is a timed lap, of course. Jonathan Robert of Wabriand, Quebec. He'll go first. We just saw him in the Heart of Shot competition. Six foot four. He's got wheels, and we'll see now how fast he can get them going. Oh, a bit of a stumble there on the first turn. NHL time is around 14 seconds. If you're in that area, you've got a chance to win it at the NHL level. And Jonathan Robert, 14-5. That one little hiccup probably cost Jonathan just a little bit of time. James Damone is next. The only defenseman in the competition, Scott. Mentioned at the start of the program just how unique it is that uh, two of 18 finalists come from the same small Alberta town. Wataska and Eric Sonnenberg, Damone's best friend, the other. Well, Jonathan Robert just skated in 14-5. So that's the time that James Damone will target. Damone looking pretty good. Crosses the line in 14-5 himself. Here's Ryan Lazan. Fine junior career, invited to Team Canada's junior camp in uh, 1999, but a week before he blew his knee out, and that really set his career back. Looking good here, though, in the fastest skater competition. 14-5, the time to beat, and he's in in 14-3-2-5, so Ryan Lazan is the new leader. Pretty smooth performance by Ryan Lazan, and now Philippe Chonier, one of uh, the top three conditioned players at the Vernon camp, ready now to challenge Ryan Lazan's time. Scott, remember after about three strides, these guys are in top speed, full speed. Nice start by Chonier. 14-3-2-5 is the time to beat. And Chonier is across in 14-5-1-4. It's good for second place. Hubbard was the overall skills competition winner in Vernon. Already making the most of his second chance as he's on a tryout contract with the St. John's Leafs and you wonder if the Leafs would use their NHL pick on Hover tonight to ensure he doesn't go anywhere else. The time to beat you can see is 14-3-2-5. Oh, and a stumble by Hover and that certainly cost him. Lou Dickinson is next and he has just started. Here goes Dickinson. Fans here know that he can skate. And Dickinson, 14-1-2-2, he's the new leader. Skill and speed are the strong suits of Lou Dickinson's game, and we just saw the speed in full display. Mark Wires now, the book on him, as he makes it on effort, and we saw a lot of that from him in Vernon. Chasing Lou Dickinson's time of 14-1-2-2. Low to the ground. Wires across in 14-8-7-5, so Lou Dickinson is the winner of the fastest skater competition.
there's a nifty 10 points for Lou Dickinson. Ryan Lazon gets seven for finishing in second place. Philippe Chonier gets five for finishing in third. And we'll return to the Making the Cut Draft Skills Competition. Michael Mole, just like to say hi to my friends, family, and Lindsay watching back home. Michael Mole had both struggles and successes at the Making the Cut camp. Oh. Michael was given a black helmet during the first mass cut. That was a bull but he never gave up. After the pivotal Black Aces versus White Helmets game, Michael was rewarded with a white helmet. I think I've got a goal in mind, and I'm going to go on a mission. And uh, that mission is to make it to the top six. Jonathan Robert, I just want to wish happy holidays to everybody. Jonathan Robert was one of the most adaptable players at camp. He started out on defense, but the evaluators had other plans for him. They moved him up to right wing. I don't want to influence you, but I like this kid. No, I love the game, and that's, I think it's the most important for me. Trevor Cunning, I'd just like to say hi to my friends and family. With only eight goalies at camp, Trevor Cunning had to remain focused in the face of fierce competition. Once I'm in the dressing room, I don't say a word until the game starts. Trevor kept his white helmet throughout camp, in part because of his outstanding concentration. On a professional level, if I was going to pick somebody, I would pick him. The guys, I, I hope they do well, but I'm going to do better. All right, everybody, give it up for the goalies. They're about to get ambushed. Michael Mole and Trevor Cunning. Let's start with Michael. I know your parents are in the stands. Michael, you faced a lot of pucks here in Mississauga. A lot of them went in. But also your parents tell me you were frightened to go in the rink at first because you were scared of the Zamboni. You're not scared to face this drill, are you? Oh, not at all. I welcome the challenge and, uh, you know, it's an exciting drill for the goalies and uh, I think it's pretty entertaining to watch, so we're definitely looking forward to it. Well, good luck getting in front of the pucks tonight. Trevor, when someone told you you made it to the camp at making the cut, you said, gotta be a joke. What do you think about the whole thing now and how much does it come to mean to you? Oh, this is quite the experience, obviously. Uh, I think all of us are uh, taking it in and making the best of it as we go. And it's just a good time, and it's nice to see all these people out here tonight. Best of luck. Trevor Cunning, Michael Mole, everybody. Once again, last chance tonight for all the players to impress these gentlemen. So Daniel Jacob will be the first shooter in the ambush facing Michael Mole. Again, it's known as the ambush. Five pucks live all the time, 13 seconds to get them all away. And Michael Mole has great lateral movement and he'll battle every puck. Rebound's always a key in a drill like this. Only 13 seconds. Oh, he just sneaks that one by. Slid one in on Michael Mole, so Daniel Jacob scores one. Mole stops four. Kevin Lavallee made the flight to Canada for the draft tonight from Germany where he's playing with the Straubing Tigers in the second division. One of the top three in stick handling in Vernon, so we'll see if he can put that skill to some use in this ambush drill facing the first save. Trevor has an excellent glove hand, terrific reflexes, but I think it's his glove hand that really stands out just like that. That was a flashy glove save by Trevor Cunning. By the way, the three winners of the skills to this point, Anders Strom won the shooting accuracy, Jordan Little, Hardest shot, Lou Dickinson, fastest skater. And this now is Jordan Little, the two-time All-Star in the Manitoba Junior League. 2001-2002, starred for Eddie Belfour's alma mater, the Winkler Flyers. And they counted that little move, and uh, Jordan Little leads. It's the goalie's responsibility to clear the puck from the crease, and that's why it was still live. So three goals for Jordan Little. And now here is Drew Kivel, perhaps inspired tonight by the presence of his parents and his brother Preston, who didn't make it to the Vernon camp. He was passed over. Trevor Cunning has had the measure of Kivel so far. Kivel misses on that one high. All right, here's Dominic Perriar. Mentioned his uphill battle at the Vernon camp. But he got better every day there. And that's why the native of St. Eustache, Quebec, is here. Scored on his first shot. Oh, somehow cleared that one away. I think Michael learned his lesson that one time he cleared the puck out of his crease. So one goal for Dominic Perriard. Jordan Little has scored three, and now here's Dominic Noel, one of the top scorers in camp with ten points in eight games, facing Trevor Cunning. 
Scores on the second shot. And the third. Dominic Noel scores on two shots and now time's expired. So two goals for Noel. We'll have to watch out with Trevor. I've noticed a couple times that the five holes open, but he is terrific as we know with his glove hand. Loves to challenge there. Five hole needs to close a little bit sooner. Next up, the winner of the shooting accuracy competition, Andrew Strom of Winnipeg. Really started to find the net late in the Vernon camp and carried that part of his game into the Central Hockey League with Lubbock Cotton Kings where he has 10 goals in 14 games this season. None so far in this drill. Oh, scores on the last shot. Spun around and beat Michael Mole. So the final shooter then in the ambush drill is Brad Woods of Cambridge, Ontario. Facing Trevor Cunning. And with the fake, he beats him. Scores on his first shot then. And the second. Brad Woods now with three goals, moving quickly. Whistle goes, and if he'd scored on the last one, probably wouldn't have counted. But a nice display by Brad Woods. Scott, thank you very much. And here are the winners of our four skills drills. Andrew Strom, four for four to win the accuracy contest. Jordan Little, the hardest shot at 96.8 miles per hour, the fastest skater, Lou Dickinson, 14-1-2-2, and the ambush uh, was won by Jordan Little and Brad Woods, three goals each. Well, All right, we're moving closer to the selection of our six players in the first making the cut draft. Let's reestablish for you now the draft order. The Edmonton Oilers go first. They won the pick in the lottery, followed by Vancouver, Ottawa, Calgary, Montreal, Toronto. Before the teams make their picks, let's find out who you, the fans, selected as the Reader's Digest Reader's Choice Award winner. And here to make that presentation is a four-time Stanley Cup champion, a member of Hockey's Hall of Fame, the great Denny Potvin. Thank you very much, Scott. Merci beaucoup. Bonsoir and uh, good evening. In this December issue, Reader's Digest featured four of our 68 players, players who have not only shown tremendous hockey ability, but who also demonstrate every day what it means to overcome adversity, to be a good citizen, and to contribute to society. In short, they are wonderful ambassadors for the sport of hockey. Here are the four nominees. Daryl Levy, Cambridge, Ontario. When his young brother Cale was struck with a rare disorder that left him physically and mentally challenged, Daryl Levy learned the true meaning of strength. He's a fighter. He's taught me a lot, and he's never said anything to me. Despite all his responsibilities, Daryl still finds time to run a hockey camp for underprivileged children. It makes a good feeling inside, and that's the key to, to hockey, to life, is getting something and giving back. Daniel Jacob, Montreal, Quebec. When his grandfather died of cancer and his mother suffered a near-fatal brain aneurysm, Daniel Jacob drew strength from their courageous struggles and moved forward with his hockey and university careers. He wasn't only a grandfather, but he was my best friend. And uh, I found a birthday card that he gave me. He wrote down that, uh, live your dream, live your dream fully, and nothing's impossible. Daniel's dream is to dedicate himself to working with the elderly and children with handicaps. Billy McGilvery, Surrey, B.C. Billy McGilvery traded in his hockey hopes for his family and a career saving lives as a fireman in Surrey, B.C. Water! I love going to work. That's our job, and, and a lot of people's lives depend on what we do. Firefighting is uh, it's all about teamwork and communication, and, and just like hockey. Making the cut gave Billy another chance to pursue his hockey dream, but he knows the team he works with every day makes a difference in his community. Matt Hubauer, Winnipeg, Manitoba. In 2002, with his first NHL tryout, Matt Hubauer was at the high point of his hockey career. Then he was diagnosed with a tumor in his sinuses. They weren't really sure what exactly was going to happen or if I would ever be able to play again. After a successful operation, Matt has made a courageous comeback. You really learn what type of person you are, and you realize whatever doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. Here are your four nominees. To my far left, Matt Hubauer. 
To my far right, Danielle Jacob. To my near right, Daryl Levy. And to my near left, the fireman, Billy McGilvery. Reader's Digest will present a check for $5,000 to the winner's charity of choice. The Reader's Digest and the winner of the Reader's Choice Award is Danielle Jacob. <laughs> Danielle Jacob's charity is the Canadian Cancer Society. All right, the waiting is all but over. Now, half a dozen Canadian dreams will come to uh, Drew as the Canadian NHL clubs give birth to hockey dreams tonight at the Hershey Centre in Mississauga. To select the first Making the Cut draft, I'd like to call upon Mr. Kevin Prendergast of the Edmonton Oilers. This team loves them skilled and speedy and somebody's going to get a shot with the oil. Kevin? Thank you. Uh, the Evans and Oilers would first of all like to congratulate these young men for an outstanding job done here tonight. With Edmonton's first selection, Edmonton takes Jordan Little. Jordan Little has a shot at the show with the Edmonton Oilers. The second draft pick tonight belongs to the Vancouver Canucks. First, uh, on behalf of the Vancouver Canucks, let me say congratulations to not only the 18 players, but their families and friends that have supported them through such a, a great program like this. The Vancouver Canucks are proud to select from St. Albert, Alberta, James Damone. Now the faces of hockey's hope, four more spots at stake. The Ottawa Senators will be selecting our third draft pick tonight. General Manager John Muckler, please come forward. First of all, I'd like to congratulate all the players for showing your, your talents tonight and putting on a wonderful show. With the third overall pick, the Ottawa Senators select Michael Moll. And here to pick is a man who believes in second chances. Daryl Sutter has the pick for the Calgary Flames. It's a pretty good hockey team right there. It's tough picking one out of that group. Calgary Flames are proud to select from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Matt Hubbard. And the man to make the pick knows hockey talent. With the fifth pick, Hall of Famer, the general manager of the Montreal Canadiens, Bob Gainey. With our first pick ever from the Making the Cut pool of players, the Club de Hockey Canadien est content to choose Kevin Lavallee. One more spot, one last chance. All that sweat and toil just to make the final cut tonight. 
Our sixth and final pick tonight belongs to none other than the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out here tonight and uh, say hello to Maple Leafs fans across Canada and around the world. With the sixth and final selection here at Making the Cut, the Toronto Maple Leafs are proud to select Dominic Noel. All right, so six players have a shot. A shot is all that any hockey player has ever asked for. Glad you could be with us tonight to watch the great Canadian dream come true. We want to take a moment to thank the 4,000 Canadians who tried out for making the cut. And if you still have the Canadian dream, join us next spring and early summer as we conduct another search for the best unsigned players in the country.